right, good morning, everyone. We're back live with day two of John Schmidt's straight pool world record attempts. Of course, we're on the predator table again today. So we're not expecting too much brilliance, but he does hold the predator high run <laughs> as of right now. Yeah, because nobody's ever played on it. Because no one's ever tried it yet. Except you. Yeah. Yesterday you ran a 126, a 118, two 98s, I yeah, believe, a couple 98s, yeah. and an 85, if I have that correct. Well, you know, Ben, when we have tournaments in straight pull with four and a half inch pockets or, or, or four and a quarter inch pockets, I mean, the high run of the whole event will be a 120. So I, I think I was right about where I should be. Mm -hmm. um, I actually did better than I thought. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to pull off a century for everybody. So I was happy to, to do a couple. Um, it's funny looking at this table on camera. The pockets look big, but they're not. They're four and a quarter exactly. And for straight pull, that just is pretty tight. And so, uh, yeah, the, the, the runs are not going to be as high. But what we're trying to do today is, uh, you know, I'm mic'd up so you guys can hear me complain and cry. And I'm, I'm going to try not to swear any, any today. That's very <laughs> unbecoming. I'm sorry if I offended anybody yesterday. But this game will make you nuts. Um, hey. I also kind of overdid it yesterday a little bit. I, I played so much that I'm sore today. I'm on ibuprofen and the whole nine yards. So, um I'll try to pace myself a little bit better today and uh, would, again, love to run a century a couple times. And a 200, I would be ecstatic. I think you got it in you still. It's possible. You know, if I don't scratch at 126 yesterday, that might have been able to do something there. That's uh, right. But I'm in stroke, and uh, the table plays great. My cue is – it. it <laughs> I know I'm biased because it's the 626 cue they made for me, but there's something about the Ivorine joint and the Rosewood hit with the Victory soft tip I have on there, and it's a 12-4 Revo shaft. It's just really a great playing cue. And uh, the Predator balls are great. Um, really just fantastic conditions. Dry air, new cloth, polished balls lets me uh, do my thing and, 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 and shine, so I, it's fun. I'm having a blast. All right, well. Get to it. Let's I'm going to get over there and play. Today. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Good luck. I'll be talking a little bit more in the beginning because uh, you're by yourself today without Grant. So For you a few and I, minutes. you could heckle me, okay? All right. <laughs> <laughs> if my wife's listening, hello, honey. I haven't seen you in three weeks. I miss you and our little Chihuahua. And I'm looking forward to getting home, of course. But uh, I am having a lot of fun up here. So let's see if we can start off good today. All right. <clears throat> So make sure you guys are sharing that stream lots for us today. From what we saw yesterday, I think he's going to put up some huge numbers today. I know I said 200, but I feel like he's got some real big ones in him today. He put in six and a half hours straight like without taking any break at all yesterday. So let's see what he's got in him today. If he saved a little gas. So I'm just going to share the stream a bunch. If you guys can do that as well, it'd be much appreciated. Share it to uh, some pool groups you're a part of. Share it with your friends, family. Let everybody know John is, uh, is making some some big runs here so should be a real entertaining day yesterday we got to see every shot in the book especially once he started playing the one pocket ghost he was playing everything you can imagine and it was super fun to watch so you don't want to miss it Quickly going to work through this first rack. Two balls, great break ball. He's going to want to clear the balls on that side rail on top of our screen there. I want to deal with that soon, I would think. And it's possible the 12 is a pretty good break ball also, so he could use the 2 to get on those balls that are on the side rail. And what a treat to have John mic'd up as well. So we can hear some of his thoughts. He's not going to talk the entire time, but he will be chatting us through some of these end game patterns, which I really loved yesterday. Ah. 
and we'll get to hear some of the frustrations. Uh, does he have his B12 energy shot? I'm not sure. Oh, little thick there. Warming up. Mercy sakes. Just warming up. I hit that one fatter than my ex-wife, Ben. <laughs> 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 uh, that's got to be one of my favorite ones. Fatter than my ex-wife, he says. Boy, it's amazing the balls you can miss when you're not dialed in yet. Not yet. Not like yesterday when we saw he was. That's a byproduct of the smaller pocket, though, because really I'm aiming. When I aim those shots, I'm really trying to kind of aim here to make the pocket play bigger. But then if I'm off a little and I hit here, and it's not going to go. Yeah. You know, on a big pocket goal crown, you just aim up here, and it doubles the size of the pocket. But not with this thing. Mm -hmm. This is pretty snug. So if you're just tuning in with us this week, we have John making some attempts on the Predator table over here. <coughs> kind of just warming up. And tomorrow he'll be moving to the gold crown table. We have a gold crown with the proper conditions for the actual world record attempt. So make sure you guys tune in all week. John's going to be playing right up until Saturday, I believe. I believe he plans to, to keep those attempts going right wow. into Saturday. Look at that, that slide. Polish got me there. <laughs> Look at that slide on that one. And we are live on Facebook and YouTube as well, guys, if you want to tune in to either or. <clears throat> and we'll have Grant um, sitting in soon as well. Uh, this is trouble here. <laughs> and once John works his way through... one rack i'll give a quick shout out to everybody who made this possible including grant good shot there to get on this five now he can start to deal with these clusters i love how he does that i think a lot of times i would have been tempted to move more of the balls and he just kind of chipped the 10 beautifully I got a little thin on the 10. I got to shoot this. Little thin to hold the 10, he says. I got a good rub there. Good secondary rub on the 4. He lands straight on the 6. Stop shot on the 14. Gets him to the 2. Obviously, the 15 is a good break ball. That's what he's been looking at for the whole rack. Nice to be able to find that early. Let's make sure he leaves plenty of angle on this 10. Rail's going to slide a little bit. He'll probably go two rails here. He likes to use the side rail to get on these. All right. Kind of ensures he's getting angle. That nice. could be the high run Hello. of the day, Ben. <laughs> I highly doubt that. That rack was okay. I made a mistake there, but as I get more and more tuned in, I get, uh, you know, the position play will be better. Special thanks to everybody who made this possible. Now, this break shot here, I like to just hit this with a high ball and go off the side of the rack, two rails out to the middle, hopefully. Don't get a double kiss. Oh, wow. That ball, ball was like kind of in and backed its way out. Tight table. Tight. Damn. Very tight pockets. Man, that ball just like backed its way right out of there. Went like this. Shoot. Well, we'll just go from here. Mm -hmm. Still 15 balls up. Boy, where's my five inch pocket when I need it? <laughs> Some five inch pockets going up tomorrow. Well, that kind of makes me appreciate down. a 126, because I'll tell you what, you can miss anything on this box. Anything. I know they look huge on camera, but these pockets are pretty snug. The only reasonable break shot's this eight. 
Yeah, Kelly's found it already too, so now he'll try to pick the balls. The key to good it. straight pull is minimal cue ball movement and the ball's going in the pocket soft. If you can do that, you got a chance to run some balls. But if you're forcing them in at high speed because you're using not enough angle, it's going to torture you. So you really want to pick the balls, and you always have to know what you're going to shoot next. This is not a game of just hit and hope. Never want to hit and hope. You'll also do well if you if you do what I call removing, uh, you know, removing balls and opening lanes. I like that. Removing balls and opening okay. lanes. Okay, so let's get this well little set. problem area figured out right here. What's going on, David Wilson? And thank you, Ross Zorn. Uh, Charles, the thing with slowing down is you can't put up those real high numbers if you play slow. Straight pool is too mentally draining. Now I got to go into the 11 here. This can go wrong if I don't hit it just right. There we go. And you definitely can't argue with John's rhythm. He knows the rhythm it takes to run, you know, four or 500 balls. Now you want to make a nice transition from the 9 to the 11. So just fall below the 9 one inch like this so that I can slide right up this tangent line and land on this 11 without much speed. Let me reset this scoreboard. Just like that. He's on a run. I'll pop the off the rail, obviously. Right now. Or not. Oh, it came up well short. <sighs> yeah, I'm struggling, folks. I'm struggling. It's a super thin cut, this one. Now That's good, though, because it because if all you see is the highlight reels where I run 300 and 400, you, it makes the game look too easy. You're getting a real taste of how hard this game is because it's making me look like a donkey so far. Once again, special and a, on, on a pro event, if you're playing a, a great player like Torsten Holman or Shane Van Moning, if you can in a 150-point game run 50 a couple times, you can win a lot of matches. I mean, you, th those guys don't run 100 every shot, believe me. You can win the big tournaments by just consistently running 40, 50 balls. Now, well, this is so – in a tournament, I wouldn't even shoot this. I'd play safe here because this is too thin. Let's get a look. Let's we'll see if we can angle. cut the paint off one. The cue ball is going to chase the How eight out of the hole, is. I think. Yeah, the cue ball double-kissed oh, yeah, double it out. It, That's yeah. going to happen there. Can't do much about that. Let's just that. spot it up. So he's just going to spot Go that ball. Here. Shoot from there. <clears throat> now, the thing with straight pull, what you try to do – is not get discouraged when you start like this because th it's not a game of running 150 every shot. You're going to run one and then 50 and then maybe 150. So for every that's inning right. that I struggle, that means a good inning is coming. That's right. At least that's the way I look at it. But the way I'm playing optimism. right now, I would lose a match. At a pro event, if I play like this and I've given my opponent three open chances, I'd be getting beat. I can't play like this and win big matches. You can't give the great players just open shot after open shot, which I'm doing, obviously. Yeah. You'd like to say if it was a big pro match, he'd probably have more warm-up, you know, a couple of weeks straight of practice kind of thing, too. Shoot, I don't know. I could make that. And this is a very tough table. I'm honestly not sure if this damn 13 will go, but we're going to shoot it. <laughs> it goes. Uh, it went in there. Funny how your eye can tricky sometimes like that, though. Yeah, I told I I kind of agree, Charles, a little now, bit. Now, as too. you can see, this is this is a pattern here that comes up a lot playing straight pull. Now, I kind of want to shoot the 11, but check this out. At the end of the rack, you can go two, four, seven, real nice. Or you go 11 for 7 but because I'm on the 11, I'm going to shoot it, shoot the 10, deal with these other balls. And at the end of the rack, I should go 2, 4, 7. Unless I'm overlooking something, that looks pretty good to me. Completely agree. And he could use the 10 to get on 
the one or the nine. Now, I got to hit a little bit of a there. shot here. We're going to spin and go around the seven with a lot of inside English. This is difficult. But it, no, that's real difficult if you do that. Well, I'm sucking over here. Man, that's a bad shot. That by straight pull standards was just like missing ball in hand what I did there. <laughs> Man. Yeah, he hit that one a little funny. I still think he has the one. I think probably. I can make the one without scratching on the side. It's close. Mm -hmm. What happened on that yeah. end rail was it caught a bit of the slide. You know, slick cloth, a new rail, it'll slide when you nope. hit it with English. <sighs> Not quite. This Still match here, I'd be up. getting beat 150 to like 20 playing like this. Still I look like I got up. Tourette's out here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Johnny, I'm People not... in the chat will be like, can I play this guy for money, Ben? <laughs> Johnny Andrick, I'm not sure if we're going to have time to organize well, a straight pool tourney. One thing is when you have the balls really polished up, it helps them go in. But playing shape is a little tricky because the inside thing just doesn't take. Mm -hmm. So that's something I have to factor in. And I, and I just I took a chance there and it bit me. All right, third or fourth inning. Here we go. See if I can run more than 20. Yeah, you're welcome, My Chris. new nickname Thanks could be Mr. In. 20. <laughs> Mr. 20. Now, here's a pretty nice layout. Even though I'd rather have this nine here, I can go 12 9 at the end, possibly. I got to deal with the 210, though. The 210 is no good. I'm going to have to find a way to open those up. It's not going to be easy. Yeah, you'll notice how he found the problem right away. First thing he looked for is the break ball and how to get to the break ball. Second thing he looked for is where are the problems? This rack there happens to be only one. One small issue. Okay, now we're gonna have to shoot. To get on it. Well, there's so many ways to do this. None of them are good. All None of them are tricky. good. Yeah, I'm sure he would have rather fallen a Slight yeah, I'm in big trouble more here. angle on the five. I don't want to shoot this key ball off, but I might have to. Yeah, he really wants to be able to deal with that problem soon. See, I'm running out of options here. Boy, this rack has really gotten away from me here. My thoughts, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, Andrew in the YouTube. All right, I'm going to try to go into this 210 right here. That 300 plus. And hopefully, I have the 15 YouTube. to shoot at. That was great. Yeah, into that ball. Okay. And he's got the 15 to shoot at. And then it almost retied up on me. Yeah, and the combo's a duck. So, where does break ball? He still thinks maybe the nine. The stripe closest to us. Let's get on that nine because it's kind of laying over there. I call balls like that, they're unhelpful. They don't connect to anything. They don't really help you. Um, the eight's the break shot. Okay. Make eight. sure the six goes past it before I do anything stupid like I've been doing. Mm -hmm. I like that he mentioned that. I don't know about you guys, but I know that <clears throat> when I want to shoot a really delicate shot like I just shot there, I like to hold the cue super, super light. And it seems to help uh, make those little um, touch shots better. So the cue doesn't like go off in your hand. I mean, to each his own, but for me, that's how I do it. I like that he said that too. Absolutely correct. That soft now just get right about here and then pivot out off the four. Yeah, not settled in yet, Sonny. Give him a little there time. It was about hour three yesterday. And you want to be mid-table here. You don't want too much backwards cut because when the object ball is this close to the rack, the cue ball hits the rack about and chases the eight and out. And so you got to get your cue ball about here. Yeah, okay. I see what he's saying there. Makes yeah, sense. That's about an inch farther than I wanted to go, but that's okay. That's not bad at all. So if you're just tuning in, we got John mic'd up over there. Boy, playing on this table, Ben, is like 
playing the tips in golf. Going to the gold crown will be like, I get to go up to the white tees now. <laughs> it's going to be nice. <laughs> so we got him mic'd up. We can hear him. He can't hear me. I'm a little too far away, which is good. I don't want him to hear me. Not all the time, anyway. <laughs> yeah, those didn't fall in their little spots. So we can hear him. He can't hear me. All right, see what happens here. It's a rack run of one. But we're getting some great, great insight. Now, this break shot here. His brain works. If you hit it easy, you can play the 10 to come here and be straight in in the corner of the side. But I'm going to hit. The, I'm going to put some pace on this just to make sure they open. Wow, they didn't really open that good, did they? Yeah, this is still super new. Whew, who clock. racked those balls? John's played about maybe eight hours on that table, maybe nine. So it's still super slick. Man, this is tough. Yeah, these are the kind of racks that make me wonder why I play straight pull. And that is some of the feedback I've got from the Predator cloth is that it wears very slow. It's very long lasting. So you hit that, that one like Ben Francis right there. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I try to draw into these balls, what happens a lot of times is the cue ball goes like this. Hits the uh, the six and it goes here and the cue ball just lays funny on the nine. You get no shot, so I don't really want to do that. Yeah, I think you'd rather be. <sighs> but I don't have too many options later either. than doing that. Man, I'm in a bad spot here, guys. A tricky little spot. Well, we're gonna have to try to open this six nine. Yeah, that was risky. Yeah, you see, it almost worked out exactly how he said. You could get stuck over there, you know, with, like, no angle on the nine. Just have some kind of super weird shot where you're too close to the ball. You Boy, this rack it, you know? is just a complete disaster. Well, John have a racker when he goes for the rack. Well, I got two options here. I, don't think I can go rail first on this ball and try to get the cue ball to fall over here, but... If I power draw it upstream, I can miss this ball, miss Q, all kind of scratch. No good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're actually hoping somebody will come volunteer to rack for John. Okay. That might get it up there where I can do something. It will make a big difference in these high runs once he starts going, especially on the other table. Man, I'll tell you, this is one of the worst racks I've ever seen. I've been playing straight pull 27 years. This is the toughest I need to make this 13 and get right here on the 7, shoot the 7, and open them up. If I miss this position window, I'm done. I am totally done if I screw this up. I butchered it. Golly, I butchered it. Yeah, he decelerated a little, I feel like. Damn it. I missed. I got booked by a half an inch. He'll get going. He's only been playing for about 25 minutes. Yeah, the five doesn't go, of course. Is he swerving the seven? Not the five goes, I think. I do not know how that went in, honestly. <laughs> he was saying that before wow. he even hit it. <laughs> well, now what? He timed that wrong. Now I can make the two and go three rails and try to get here. But... I don't have a lot of confidence right now. This looks really tough to me because I'm jacked up a little bit. Ah, I underhit it too, steering it. He's got to get the juices I steered flowing. it. Hope. Got to get the juices flowing. Yeah, I'm playing it's pretty, pretty early. Rough here. All right, all you can do is hold still and try to nick this in. I mean, I would play safe on this in a match. But this is home run derby. You don't get to play safe. I like how he compares it to home run. Oh, derby. That was a good shot there. That's Give me a shot. Really good shot. All right. Well, wow, we got lucky. Fantastic. I even made a break shot. And he's that's got nice. a break ball. That's exactly what I was. It's thinking. a lot of work to run twenty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is twice as much work as the gold. In real life, here. I'm supposed to shoot the four and then the three upstream. This table's table's a little spooky to do that. I completely agree. <laughs> He's shooting the break ball, though. He likes the 15, I guess. Ah. 
He thought he could nudge the 14 to a better spot. Now he's going to shoot the, the 15 as the break ball. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Does 14 work for a break ball? I suppose it must. Ho, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, please got stop. All of that. Oh, boy. You can see how quick that new cloth grabs. Overran my mark. Hey, Never Brian so Harder. Grant will be in the house later on. Now what I can try to do is make the three and land in the triangle and then take ball in hand. That's one option. Or play the 14 and try to come here, shoot the three in the side. That's, of course, difficult. Yeah, I don't mind that choice, actually. If ah, I missed my marker here. just a little bit. He had to land pretty straight in on the three. Is he trying to play the ball in hand? Nope. Too tough. Too tough shooting the three. I, I would have to agree there. Oh, he's gonna come up short here, though. Come on, go. Well, I guess that's better than missing, right? He wasn't kidding. That's a tough 28. I ran 28 there. I think 26 of them were hard shots. What's going on here? Uh, yeah, just warming up. This is similar to what we saw yesterday. <sighs> it wasn't until about hour three that he. Well. Ran a 118. Got a couple things I could do here. Neither one are easy. See what Making does. the three in the side with high cue ball and going down one rail and hitting the stack is reasonable, but you could scratch off the stack. If I draw it and try to go like this and gauge the spin, that might work. I think I think I need to just hit it with center ball and hope I hit the stack. Well, I'm as shocked as you are. He's right. He didn't scratch. Don't hook shot. me on the six. Real good shot. And he's got all the six. And you could see it yesterday in his, like, flow of play. He, near the third hour, he just started to, here. started to pick up pace, and he was just motoring around. Wow. What do I do here? Anybody got any advice? If I shoot the 14, it's the cue ball, jam. I can hammer it and go into the stack, but I don't know that I'll get another shot. Yeah, I could miss it, jack it up, risky. and hammer it, but I'm going to try it and try to draw back for the seven. Wow. That's quite the little shot. Thank you. Yeah, I was happy to make that one. That's quite the little shot. There's two ways to play this. I could just chip the stack and go forward for the five, but... That can get away from me pretty easy. When I was 25 years old, I, or you know, younger at straight pole, I wanted to cut this in and hit here. And it works plenty, but it doesn't work plenty. So you don't want to do that. Okay. You want to pick them off and, and know what you're going to shoot next. Or have an idea, anyway. Yeah, I would kind of be Boy, tempted to just, shoot the 7 and go into the 2 this is just be on the 11. But, but it is a bit of a guess. He's right. These balls are not laying ideal. Let's see, shoot the one here. He's looking at shooting the five, then the combo. I might take a nibble at this one right here and then shoot the seven if I don't catch it just right. Take a nibble at the one. I like it. Nice shot. That's the worst shot I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I have to make the seven and get on this 11. And if I miss this position window, this, this inning's over. So this has to be hit pretty good here. Really slow with a lot of spin. Oh, this is a good shot right here. If I miss that, that position really window, this shot. run has no chance. At least I can disturb the balls here to maybe get another shot. Yeah, what's he on when he when he hits this though? He knows where the balls are going. He's nope, got to be of on something. Not. Oh, well. 
Night Ball's coming up Jeez, table. What is going on today? He's fighting an uphill battle. I know here. this game's tough, but it ain't this tough. Yeah, a little bit of Mike Siegel in there, James. Just a great Wow, line I got to shoot pool, a tough really. shot to nothing. Tough shot to nothing. He's like pretty much playing a combo after, you know? And this shot looks easy on camera. It's super tough on this table right now. Super tough. So well, that's easy the best to shot I've ever made ball. in my life right there. <laughs> I like how in the same game he can play the worst shot of his life right. and the best shot of his life. <laughs> now, obviously, the 13 is kind of a half-decent break ball. So if I cut the 12 in and go into the 1, that's a decent play, but I can miss the 12. I could also stop here, shoot one of these, open those up, and then this is my break ball here, but that's more difficult. Uh, I could cut the one and go twice across. That's fraught with danger. I think I got to make the 12 here. Just hope it goes in. Yeah, I think I'm going to channel right. my inner Ben Francis right. right here and just cut this right That's in. That's also right. <laughs> Catch it. I was correct. Okay. He just had to channel his inner Ben Francis. <laughs> How did he know I see the edge of the ball so well? <laughs> That one was pretty routine for Mr. Schmidt. Boy, I'm just like you guys. I hate elevating there, but I had to do it. This guy has won so many titles. He's cut that ball in a million times in big situations as well. 41 professional tournaments he's won in his life so far. <laughs> Still plenty of time to go. This game is so ageless. This was horrendous. Does he go all the way to the third rail here? I don't think so, because it's going to slide a lot off the second rail. Easy. Easy. Yeah, he overhit it a little, but that's OK. He's, he's shooting still. Pretty that might have been the tough toughest 42. rack I've ever ran. <laughs> That's a, the hardest 42 ball run I've ever seen. I mean, some tables, they just, it, it's so easy to do that, 42. run 42. That's a tough This thing one. is a nightmare. It's a great playing table, but it's a little too tough to play great straight pull. So um, when you guys at home are playing straight pull, sometimes I get like private messages and they'll go, you know, how do I run more balls? And the first thing I ask them, what kind of table are you practice on? Well, four inch pockets and old cloth, or, you know, <laughs> it's just not going to work. <laughs> That trick never works. Yeah. Wow. We somehow wiggled through that rack. I would have to feel this break shot is all about just potting the ball. I mean, cue ball is going into the stack anyway. Kind of got to hit the top of the ball. It's, you don't have to hammer it. You just play it to make the one, really. Yeah, just like that. Good now, that would have been mean. Good thing he didn't hit any harder. It would have been I very no mean. no shot here. Well, what I could cheat got? this pocket, but I could sure miss it doing that. I think it's the combo. Wow. The Are you ball kidding the side. me? Well, guys, I've got a half a pocket to slide this four past the 12. Let's see what happens. Well, might have enough to sneak this one in. Yep, I just played oh, it off play the it in off. That's all I could really do. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a bucket if you play it in off. It's a really good shot. He made it look way easier than it was. Hopefully you guys Man, I honestly think I'm not racking them correctly. I mean, I, I'm hitting the break, and, like, the balls aren't – I'm going to have to take a closer look at this magic template thing. It's it's acting very unmagical right now. <laughs> so the table isn't tapped. It actually has, like, the ring savers, the binder All savers. Right, that was a good little shot. A little now, donut stickers. On some tables, I might try to make this ball and bump this 15 up to here. But with this slidey cloth, it's a little hard to do that. I need to just get on the three best I can. Johnny Morelato, so I'm sure he would love that, pal. I'm sure he would absolutely love that. I think he said um, it's pretty much necessary, you know, especially once you start getting over 200 balls, which will 
certainly be happening on the gold crown. Now hopefully this 14 comes out for a break shot. Tomorrow. Yeah, it's he not a good said, break shot. It's better than nothing. He said possibly Now here's one today. more chance. I can make the five and draw into the 13, but it's it's got too much angle. But I'm going to try it. I'm going to try to just push this 13 out a little bit. God, I almost missed that ball. These pockets are tight on the side. Almost missed it, but he hit it perfect. Look at where he put the 13. It's absolutely perfect. All right, so let's work our way down to those last three. <laughs> yeah, Chris, yesterday it was anyone can pack a lunch. <laughs> Today it's what is going on? Yesterday it was anyone can pack a lunch after he'd played for three and a half hours straight. <laughs> so we'll give him a couple hours to get into that zone again. But he's starting to get a gear. This now I've got to get on the, the uh, correct tough. side of this 14 because I don't want to have to pivot around the table. This like that. There we go. Tough table. Stop, ball. Stop. So it takes a while to get used to it, kind of get in the flow. Oh, that's the wrong angle, guys. Wrong angle. Just needs to punch it, I think. Oh, he had That's about straight the best draw. I could do. That's pretty good. He hit that real good. Nothing wrong with that. As far as straight pull goes, honestly, his last four racks have been complete nightmares. I, I'm going to have to take my time racking and make sure I'm freezing them. That's a real tough 56 right there. The fact that he's finding a way out means a lot as far as today goes. We're still in the first hour of of a oh, probably six-hour right session. And it looked pretty tight. Now, this break shot here, you can hit several ways. You can hit it with well, bottom right English. Break ball the there. problem well, is when you hit it with bottom right English, I mean, these balls are round. They're not square exactly blocks. Where it was. If you I hit the bottom that. of the three with bottom right English, cue ball goes in the hole. If it hits the top of the 14, it goes up in the hole, up in the hole, right in the side. I'm not a fan of drawing this break shot, but it can work. I'm just going to follow this and hope for the best. And I'm happy to make it, too. I mean, that's a missable hmm. break ball, of course. I'm surprised to hear you would follow that. Kind of I'm been... a senior citizen. I need some easier shots to start with than this. I like to blast at that. I'm getting there. Six more years. <laughs> well, there's no trick to this shot, as you can imagine. You just got to make a good hit here. Uh, Brian, good question. I'm actually Man. not sure what they use to Ben, set this shot looks measure. like a basketball through a Cheerio right here, buddy. Basketball I through a Cheerio. The pocket so small down there. Oh, that's a pretty pretty tough shot. I'll try to hold my body still and not flinch on it. It's the best I can do. Mm, that's good advice. Man, I didn't hold real still. That was good enough. He hit it real well. Brian, yeah, I'm not sure what they used to, now, to as set you can or measure see, those reinforcement labels. I mean, this is no good. For the rack. And James, yeah, some of these. No, this is no good at all. Are a folks. lot of what I'm thinking when I'm when I'm at the table. The I've got to shoot the eight and go into the 14. I don't like this shot, but I think it's necessary. On that last shot, where he had a real, real tough pot into a tricky pocket, and he said, "All I can do is try to just, you know, stay real still, and stay down." That's exactly what you got to tell yourself on those shots. I try to anyway. <laughs> it doesn't always work out. Yeah, Tommy Farrell, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, I've got to I've got to open him. these up right here. Boy, this rack is really tricky here. This is this is priceless stuff. Being able to listen to his thoughts through these outs. Now, people at home, I guarantee, are saying, "Why does he just follow and go into these two balls here?" Well, it's a real good way to get hooked. Yeah, get stuck behind them. Now, here's a chance I can go into them. I can maybe slam into the end rail with right English and just hit him. And if I miss him, I should have some other shots. There we go. Well, that's a good shot. He's going to be a man. little thinner on this 10 than he wants. This is so. just turning into such a tricky run out. What does he have here? That's too thin, I think, looking at the table view. Does he have the six? Well, I don't think left. I have to tell you guys this is a hard shot. 
Or the 15. I guess the right. 15's a bigger pocket. I'm going to try to cut the 10 in and go in between the 6, 7 and up and down the table. He's got to use his go-go gadget legs for this. Oh, what a shot. Oh, he moved some stuff with his hand. I think I aged 13 years right there shooting that shot, Ben. That was a scary one. Let's see what happened. All right, now, got through oh, the no, problems. Oh, no, ball hit this. I think six. I pulled a rib there. Cue ball hit But I've got six. the 3-5 at the Coming end. Coming back. So as you can imagine, moved everything. <laughs> these two are concerned because they don't go here. Hand. They only go there. So I've got to figure out a way to get these balls off the table. My bad. And not uh, lose position on stuff. My bad. I watched the delay there on our Facebook feed. Uh, Span or Austin on the YouTube. EHR means event high run. So John's doing a 14 1 high run. Now, here's something. I, this for is. Six days. I hate doing this, but this is something you've got to see when you play straight pull. Instead of trying to fix all these problems, I shoot my break ball off now. Then I shoot the 14. I let the cue ball run into the one, and the one absorbs the energy of the cue ball, and then the six pushes out here. Now, if I mess this up, runs over, but I think it's the right play. Very good insight there. <laughs> Tyson, maybe I should change it. What do you guys think it should say? Okay, that worked out, but maybe it doesn't have to. Now, now, now this rack has come together nicely. I can go 15, 11, 6, or I can go 3, 11, 6. So I'm thinking, I think see, this ball's kind of, high run. it doesn't have much of a helper to connect to it. Yeah, Chris, definitely interesting to hear him go through the racks. And, and you guys can always go back and listen to the, the entirety of this later on. All our videos stay on our Facebook and our YouTube channels. Okay, even better. Now I can go I can go 3, 11, 15, and the 1. The 1 connects to the 6, so I believe that's the right way to play him. And not 6 days from now, Pat. He'll be moving to the gold crown tomorrow. So he'll be taking 4 days at the, the actual high run attempt. Well, I kind of underran it just a little bit. Yeah, it came up a little short there, I thought. Free instructional video. Yeah, that's right. I'm eating All right. this up. That's a nice 70 for sure. He's playing good to get out of A little these farther rocks. from this break shot than I would like, but. I haven't been easy. When the pockets are tight, you don't really get to pick them off the way you want. You pick them off the way the table uh, lays. Of course, also special you thanks. You can't goes force to the issue on a tight table. Barsham. You got to stay near your work, pocket speed, use insurance. Serge, making sure we got this table out here from Quebec. All you old guys out there, I'll tell you, I've been taking this stuff called Dr. Berg's cruciferous pills or something i have never felt energy like i feel it's almost i almost feel too amped up to like have a smooth backswing but energy wise it's it's amazing i feel great so i uh i have no excuse to say i'm tired or anything now yesterday i missed this break shot because i didn't aim for enough deflection on sliding new cloth you really got to aim right about here because the cue ball is going to push in so let's see if i can get it right this time this is a scratch break ball, though, I'll tell you. It's because he's putting so much left side. Yeah, forget it. it. I'm not going to use high. I'm going to use high ball, not left. I'm going to go two rails out off the and try to get a shot on the two ball. So we'll keep all two rails out to middle table. That's what he's trying to do. The two of course, I'm going to get a shot on nothing. He's got a shot on the eight. God. Well, shot I'll tell you what. He's got a shot on the 12. The balls are not cooperating. Certainly not cooperating, but he's on a on a. I'm hooked on the one run ever here. so slightly. God almighty! Well, Nick. I got a big pocket here. I got to kill this with low inside English, and hold for the one. 
Oh, I was happy to make that one. Oh, he hit it right in the heart of the pocket, too. Split the uprights. Nick Garrett, you're absolutely correct, sir. Nick on the Facebook says his commentating makes him seem a lot more personable and friendly, and he sure is. Can I get a shot once? Can I get Look a at shot? this. <laughs> Can you see what the four? What is going on over here? He's got to be able to see the four, right? Yeah, All right. He can see it. Now, break ball wise, the best break ball is one of these probably, and I've got problems here. I mean, I'll do well to get through this rack, obviously. Yeah, the break ball underneath is going to be the one, which is never favored, but certainly workable. Boy, the camera does not pick up how small these sides are, I swear to God. <laughs> that's a tougher shot than it looks on camera, that's for sure. Much tougher. Okay, so what you want to do here is resist the urge to run into something. Even though it looks like I got a lot of entanglements, you've really got to just pick them off without running into the balls. At least that's how I try to do it. So I think I am going to change that to just say high run. I feel like that. That works better for this. I'm really not in love with the 15, but it is what it is at this point. All right, now I have to start working on that nine. I got to get that nine out of there soon. Now, what I wanted to do there is I wanted to land here, shoot the 13 and push the seven, but I got too straight, so I, I can't do that now. So we're, I'm pretty much committed now to the 15 as a break shot. I'll tell you what, I got a little funny on this. No, I got real funny on this we one. We could use a little rail first. This is no, this is to. no good at all. Damn, John. Yeah, because the only boy, easy this ball rack to get is really getting away from me here. 15. I have to shoot off my break shot here. Yeah, so he's gonna have to develop a break ball. Because that has to be his next shot in order to clear a path for the 10 and the 7. Well, the 7's not so much of a problem. Can you nudge into half of the back of the 7 here and, and get that into a break position? Super soft draw. No, he's going forward. Well, that's a break ball here. I'd be interested to hear his thoughts on that. All right, I'm going to take a chance here. I'm going to try to run into this 14 ball and drive it down here for a break shot. This could, I could end up regretting this big time. But the nine captures the cue ball for me. Or it doesn't. Okay. Oh, Not the end of the that. world because what I could do now is use this as a break shot. Yeah, he can use that with the rail. We saw him do that. Believe it or not, I could almost push the seven out, but I wouldn't get another shot. Yeah, I, that was my first thought, push a seven and be on the nine, but pretty tough. I think it's too risky, and they'd have too much angle on the on the nine, then it'd bring the seven into play, trying to get around for the 14 next. Stop. <laughs> he needs to take the mic off and worry about playing. Rich, this is more about just Wouldn't it be uh, nice if you could just tell it to stop and it always did? Now, you want to get deal. real flat on this ball. You get up here, I mean, real steep. You get up here, the shot's easier to make, but you can't gauge the hit into the rack good. So, we want to get pretty thin on this one. Yeah, so I don't think he's expecting anything out of this world as far as high runs go. He's just out there. Oh, that's, that's he, pretty he thin. He likes doing the commentary, you know, giving us his thoughts while he's playing. Well, that's pretty thin. If I make totally it, I have enjoy. a chance. And he's on a run of 84. He's playing pretty good because these have been really tough outs, too. He's working through them nice. I'm just going to step away for a moment here, guys. You know, the old straight pull tournaments back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, they were held on like five-inch pockets, and the guys would run 100 balls. Everybody would flip out. Now people's expectations are just they want us to play on diamonds and run 200. It's, it's nuts. All right. 
See if I can get lucky and make a real thin hit here with some inside English. Wow, that was thin. Oh, that was a good shot. I hate to lick myself, but that was a good shot. Whew. Damn, that was a good shot. Now, what's going to happen here? There's two ways to play it. You could try to draw the cue ball around and get out to the middle. But if you hit this through the thin side of the hole, your cue ball races on you. Or I could go like this, but I can scratch off the nine. So either shot's a little sketchy. I think I'm going to go into the nine at light speed and hope for the best. All right, there we go. Well, that was a bad shot. Sorry about that, guys. At least we still got to listen to John there. And that was sloppy. I mean, that was a just sloppy shot. cue ball there. He made a heck of a break shot. I got lazy there, Ben. I didn't really play shape on anything. I was playing for the two, but I underhit it. All right, we're going to try to punch this four and get on the nine. Yeah, it could help him shoot better too, James. You're right. Who knows? I think this is absolutely fantastic. What a treat for the players. Even the players in the room, they're enjoying it. Like a basketball into a Cheerio, he says. <laughs> He's putting them right in the heart, though. I've got to graze this this uh, 11. Now, if I don't get a shot on 11, I drive it to the end rail, probably have the three up in the corner, but that's last resort type stuff. I'd like to come across the top of this 11 and have a shot on it. Top of the 11, shoot the 11 in the bottom right next as we're looking at it. Nope, nope, it got me just like I thought it would. So he is shooting three. God almighty. I don't think he's cutting all no, the 11s way yep, too Yep, it got me. Cutting, I think. He was in tough there, it wasn't easy. Boy, it's amazing how a big pocket. This shot's a hanger with a big pocket. This is a uh, exactly this is just terrifying basketball looking. into a Cheerio. <laughs> <sighs> this is a real tough shot. Well, there's nothing I can do but just try to Tight smooth pocket. this three in. Yeah, smooth it in. If he makes it, the run continues. Should open up lots of balls here too. So that's the the good thing about this being a tough shot nope. is it's developing stuff just too tight it's just no pocket to aim it a at little. Down there. yeah it's a pretty tough shot how many balls is that left uh six nine ten so five it was a nice run like i think 89. 90 something maybe which feels like 600 on this damn table it's an 89 it right there, ball like run pretty sporty start to the day in the first hour putting up an 89 on this real tight predator table i mean he, yeah i know but you hit it dead center they all go but you nobody shoots straight enough to hit dead center every time it's a much easier <laughs> shot after the fact too there's a reason the world record set on a five and an eighth inch pocket i don't know i think that was still a nice predator run a very guys. um there was a lot of difficult shots in that run more than uh you'd expect so some of that could be my fault, and some could be just the table's tough, right? Yeah, look how flush those pockets are. That's one of the things I love most about these Gosh, predator tables. It's super Not flush. A shot there. Real clean. None of that awkward bridging stuff. Boy, I am sweating like I'm in a freaking marathon. <laughs> this is this is fun, but it's hard work, kind of. Yeah, it's still work. Yeah. I haven't played this much pool in a long time. All right, we'll reset oh. this. I'm gonna keep track in my notes. Well, I today keep breaking again, like runs. no shot to start with. So you guys can hear how much I complain. That's what the mic's good for. I just put myself right in the same spot. Go. There we go. It's 
So I'm just going to keep track of his high runs here in my notes. 89 will be the high for today so far. 126 yesterday. I'll tell you one thing. From playing a couple of days, my speed control is good. He ran, That's the one thing I have going for me right now. Yesterday he ran an 85 and nine, two 98s, a 118 my and a 126. speed is on from playing so much. Now here you try to get on the 6, maybe get rid of the 11. I don't like leaving that 8 down there. Cause that's kind of an unhelpful straggler, but... So Grant will be in a little bit later on today. Now let's push the five out for a break shot and shoot the three in the side. Around quarter after two, so about 2.15 Mountain Standard Time. We're going to shut it down for around 45 minutes while John takes a little lunch break and whatnot. We'll reset the stream and all that fun stuff, and then we'll be back around three o'clock and john will play for i would imagine at least another three hours after that now this is an interesting deal here you really don't want to use the eight as a key ball yeah it's too far up table i'd like to if i was good enough which i'm not go 11 8 shoot the 8 1 14 and get here but that's a lot of uh, cue ball movement in a game that's really about not moving the cue ball. Let's try it, though, since we're not on a big run. Come on, get straight in now. What's he working on here? It looks like just kind of draw this ball back up towards the one ball next, like so. Perfect speed control will do. All right. Stop shot here is fine just to leave plenty of angle on the 14 next to go two rails to get on the five. He plays with a little follow. Now just hit this with a high ball and try to lay right kind of near the rail. All right. That was well executed there. That was well executed. That was a rack that looked like straight pull. Clean. At least, that mostly. was a clean out. I don't Not like so the racks scrambly. where I run out, but it's ugly. I can't stand those. The one uh, drawback to racking for myself is my hands get sweaty and clammy, and then I'm grabbing these balls, and they're not staying buffed up and slick. So that's why you'll see guys rack with the white gloves on, and uh, Ben was nice enough to grab some. So when we're on the gold crown and we get on a big number, I'll probably have a racker help me. That's right. It saves my energy and keeps the balls a little slicker too. Here's a break shot. Don't spin this break shot. I see people try to put spin on it. Hit it with 12 o'clock and follow through and just hope for the best. Okay, good advice. Because I'm usually trying to, you know, hit that with a touch of probably That's outside all you can really do on a well. shot like that. Just try to make the damn thing. He did well there. Ball's opened up fairly well. You'll notice he's not trying to get all 15 balls in the open off the break shot. It's more about... Get some, get something huh. to work with after the break shot, and then, and then go from there. Just kind of chip away after the initial break shot. He'll well. It would have been the better if that didn't go in. Two more times. Now what I got to do now is shoot the ten, chip these open, and I've got an insurance ball there. Easier said than done, but I think it's the right shot. Yeah, he's got the three for insurance. I like that. Three over the side will always leave. Yeah, a shot. we use the and, insurance, and all right. Using it, yeah. Call that a Geico shot. The Geico insurance. Well, this rack's getting away from me delicate. here. This one's getting away from me pretty good. This is a tough shot. The seven in the side is all. No, that's no good. That's too thick. Hmm. Has to be the six, I believe. Well, that's not a hanger from there. Golly. Oh, man. 
know. Well, well, this rack here is just a complete <laughs> mess. I mean, I don't understand. A ton easier. What in the world's going on with these balls here? We may have to take a look at those ring savers during the, uh, let's call it the mid-session interval. I got too much uh, on that. John, you're an idiot. He wanted to be shooting the six next, I'm sure. Thing just drew too easy. The ball does draw super easy over there on that new cloth. And yeah, now he's got to find a shot. God, I can't believe how easy that ball drew. Wow. Real tough pot coming right up. He stayed well, very still. Okay. Real good I'm as pot. shocked as you are that that went in. <laughs> not totally shocked, but that was not 100% that shot. And yeah, that's right, Bo and David. That's not how you'd start a you know one versus one game of straight pool. That's just how you start the the high run attempts. You get ball in hand on the cue ball and the object ball. Trying to nudge something for a break ball. I think he caught it. I think he <laughs> got it. Perfect. Ben, that might be the greatest shot I've ever shot. <laughs> I think he got it absolutely perfect. He landed dead straight on the Look 18. Look at that. Follow was that disgusting or what? <laughs> oh, man. If I was playing Earl Strickland right now and I did that, he would go dead off on me. <laughs> and we're buddies, him and I. <laughs> Earl is a very misunderstood guy. He's actually a sweetheart of a guy. If you need a favor, you need anything, Earl will usually help you. He's actually a, he's actually a pretty good-hearted dude. Buzz, this uh, this predator cloth is great. It plays well, very much like. Did I get a bonus just, rack for that one? <laughs> just very, very quick, and the slide lasts longer. So, from what I've heard from, like, Oscar, who owns a pool room in Sacramento, and, and he's had a few of them for a while, and he said at first, you know, it was too tough to play on. He said, wow. after a while, now it's the only wow. thing anybody it's always plays something. on. He said, it, it took a little while for that cloth to break in, so to the point where it wasn't sliding a ton. For someone like John, he wants this cloth to be slippery, and he wants it to be lightning quick. And this is like ideal conditions for these straight pool high run attempts. The only flaw being... Obviously, this is four and a quarter inch box. You know, it's funny while we're talking about other players, too. You know, a lot of people think, like, I hate Jason Shaw or something. Jason's actually a pretty good dude, and he's pretty nice to me whenever I see him. And he's a great player, but I think people have this, uh, this idea that, like, he's a terrible guy and I hate him and all this stuff. No, it's, it's – if anything, he's really challenged me, and the 714 has kind of re-inspired me at a later time in my career to have something to shoot for and try, and so – it's probably good in the overall sense. That being said, I wish he would have ran 625. <laughs> now here, obviously big problem. This is the only usable break ball. This one's too high, but it's usable. So, I mean, I got problems here. Now I'm gonna take a little chip at the stack here off this one with high inside English, pocket weight. You don't wanna hit it too hard. But sometimes you can fix a lot of problems with a little shot like that. Did he create a break ball? Is the five a good break ball now, possibly? There we go. Or is it a little too high? No, well, now it's now it's maybe the two. Now, in case you guys at home don't know it, Ben is a hell of a player, too. He's ran 106 on a diamond, which is world class. And he, I uh, was listening to his commentary yesterday. He has a very good understanding of what he's looking at. So whenever you guys get a chance to play him, take lessons from him, ask him questions, play him cheap sets, he's a great guy and he's a great player, and I think you'd serve yourself well playing Ben whenever you get a chance. All right, now let's just see if I can hold this ball, shoot the 12. 
As you can tell, John's an absolute class act. Such oh, nice no, I made guy. a big mistake right there. That 15, I thought, passed the 5, and it doesn't. So now I have to fix the problem later. That was a very, uh, that was a very bad move right there. Yeah, he could have been on the 15 right there is kind of what he's saying. If he had a look, he just draws back like an inch. See, now I have to shoot kind of a missable shot on the side. Yeah, you don't want to be leaving those kind of shots, believe me. And what he means by missable is, like, it's just not 100%. You know, he shot that ball so many times that he knows it's not going to go in every time. Yeah, two I thought was the break ball, but he's fooled me before. It looks like it's going to be the five. That or, or he picked out the three real early. I don't think so. I think it's the Okay, five. I need just a slight angle to punch that in and land there. So we'll see if I can hold still and make a good stroke here. Oh, this is such a treat to watch and listen to, really. Okay. And All right. Well done. Another that was well nice. worked out. And see what making that one mistake where I left this ball here, it changed the whole rack, and I had to do a, like five more hard shots, mm -hmm. all because I didn't check that that ball passed the five. So when you're playing, you know, try to be careful. Double check. Otherwise, uh, it'll get you. Check and double check. That's what I like to, to say. All right, so while he's got the towel out, going to give these balls a bit well, of a wipe down. We got to see the crowd they got in here. They got like a, the junior clinic going on, a ton of players. High school. This is a great pool room. This is the best pool room in Calgary by miles, and uh, they've treated me like gold here. Ben and all the guys took me out to the hockey game my first couple days when I was in town. That was fun. And, uh, yeah, they've treated me like family this whole three weeks. I've had a blast. All right, high ball. Just try to make it. There's no trick here. You just got to hold still and follow through. Ah, John and hopefully right get a there. shot. Right at home. Man, something is always tied up. What's going on here? Such a, such a likable guy, you know, fun guy. And we turned him into a hockey fan. They got him watching Game of Thrones. Easy. Now, I really don't like doing this, but I got to go <laughs> into these balls and hopefully get a shot here. Yeah, it's been such a treat to have him here. That I, was dangerous. I hope he comes back. I hope he now what you do back. is you shoot the seven, and you, well, you know what? A lot of times it'll stick, but I can cut the ten from right here, so I think this is an okay shot. What I'd rather do, though, no, that ain't going to work either. Now nah, I'm going to shoot it. Yeah. Just light seven. speed. Don't murder it. Doesn't need to crush it. That's right. Just chip them. Just chip them open. Love it. That's absolutely right, Christopher. I think we'll all get better watching and listening to. So now I've got all kind of this. break shots. I got the 9, the 4, the 13. So unless I do something totally stupid, which I'm capable of doing, as you guys know. <laughs> yeah, these are the kind of racks where you expect them to just pick these apart pretty easily. Okay, let's get rid of that 13. I got a nice one no, I can, now. Yeah, yeah. I got to shoot the 13. I was hoping I could shoot the 12. Always nice to leave options, but he's got two more anyway. I think he'll end up using well, the I'll tell four you, ball. You got to use such a delicate stroke on this cloth. Super quick, real slippery, this cloth. <laughs> Yeah. Now here, I got a chance to do something. Uh, I could draw into this 12 ball. Now, if I get stuck there, I'm too thin on the six. Can't do it. Got to leave it alone. Well, this has some drift going on. Yeah, that's uh, kind of funky right there. Could be the way it was installed as well. You never know. But definitely, there's been some issues with uh, some of the cloths that at the beginning and I think they've got it completely figured out now 
as well as the table. We can the right way to play is to shoot the 14, then the 4, then the 11. That's the, actually the correct way to play straight pull, but it's really not available on this table. We can cross that bridge while we're at it, too, about the, the table conditions in it's Vegas. It's just too that tight of a, a table to do that. That was a combination of many different things. If you guys saw, the tables were playing a little funny there. That was a combination of many different things going on behind the scenes. It, it had really nothing to do with the table or the cloth or anything like that. So This table in particular is playing absolutely perfect. And we got this installed just a few days ago. And it's playing as good as anything ever has. And John is, uh, is absolutely loving it. Of course, John is uh, is sponsored by Predator as well as Town, and uh, I think he just loves Jam Up Apparel. You know, good friends with with Damian Pong Panic, and, and of course now Grant Zemp as well. So I'm sure they take care of him for those styling shirts that you see him wearing. Yeah, little stop shot, kind of soft draw. Just wants to leave a little angle on this 13 so we can draw straight back, leave a little angle on the four. And that's four racks again All right. strung together. He's starting to pick up the steam a little, figure out the table as expected. On these conditions, uh, I'd be happy. You know, you play a money match of straight pull and you run 56 on a guy, believe me, they are going to be feeling the pressure. People are under this illusion that the great players just run 140 every shot. They don't. They don't, especially on a table like this. This would be a nice run in a tournament. Yeah, Adam, it was. I think of yesterday, a... Ben, I got uh, fortunate and ran like a. I thought it was like a, a 70 and 126 back to back. Well, that's a two inning game to 200 on this. I would be ecstatic to do that. See, this straight pull, there's nowhere to hide. When you're dogging it and you're playing bad, it, you can't duck. It's, and when you miss, you're going to leave shots. Like 10-ball tournaments, I can't tell you how many times I've seen a pro come up and I'm like, hey, how'd you do, Earl, or whatever, whatever pro. And they go, oh, I didn't miss a ball. Well, you go back and watch the match. They missed three balls, and they had to duck four times when they should have got out. But they yeah. don't remember that in the heat of battle. Yeah. This game here, you get up against Torsten or Jason Shaw and you start missing balls, you're going to get eight alive, you know? Yeah. And there's, and there's rarely somewhere to hide when you lose position. But, yeah, Adam, as I was saying, it was, yeah, some mechanical issues, combination of the way the tables were stored, uh, the, the number of tables that were supposed to be on site when they showed up, how many tables they were supposed to be recovering at once, uh, condition of the cloth, stuff like that. It, it, was, it was many different things that led to the conditions in Vegas. Let's try to go into the stack at light the standard, speed. I would say. And just chip them open, constantly chipping them open. So he's on four racks and 56 right now. And starting to catch a bit of a gear, I would say. Yeah, exactly, Bo, it, it was, it was, Oh, I really Mostly don't want to that. shoot that one. So it was the way the slates were stored, I think, that, that caused the problem. And the floating floor, yeah, of course. It was it was like that's where I that's where we say, you know, I've said and, and Grant said Grant was there, he got to see it firsthand, so a uh, combination of many things, Russ. Many, many things. Yeah, Raymond on the YouTube. I, I fully agree, and, and I've said this before to some players. You can get in stroke by watching pool. You certainly can. You sometimes don't even need to really pick up a cue. You know, you ever find you're watching you know, really big finals of a tournament, and these guys are both just playing perfect, and then you go to the table and you just start running out. And it's kind of like... Just from watching pool, you get in stroke. 
It's quite interesting how the brain works like that. Adam wants to know if I'm coming to Red Deer anytime soon. Adam, I don't have any plans to come to Red Deer until um, August, I believe. And I won't be there until uh, I, I think the night before the event starts, the night before the Canada Open. Which is August 16th to 20th, the Predator Canada Open. At Cambridge Hotel and Conference Center in Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. Make sure you guys check that out. 128 men's field, a 64 ladies field. Now there's two ways to go here. I could stop the cue ball, shoot the five six combo. Hopefully the five comes here, or I could come down to here, roll the five on the side, push the six out and have a shot on the seven. Either one are sketchy as could be. I'm gonna try the roll down and push the ball. Yeah, I like the roll. I like the roll and develop the six. Uh, that's totally what I was yeah, thinking. I don't know if I hit that hard it enough. came up a little short, but it's still okay. Nope, that's terrible. No, it's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay. Yeah, we'll see there, Adam, for sure. Of course you'll be there. It's right in your backyard. There. You guys are the super lucky ones. Now that was a good shot. Yeah, see, he got a break ball there. And it's never any fun trying to develop the break ball right at the end of the rack. Uh, David Wilson, need to be BCA sanctioned in order to play in the... There will be an amateur event run alongside the pro event in Red Deer. Uh, but it's a CSI BCA event. So you do need BCA weeks in order to qualify. Yeah, it's too far. We're not far enough. He's dead straight in. And well, as you can imagine, that sucks right there. If I, I try to cheat the pocket, I miss this ball. But I got a shot you guys might like here. We'll see. Well, is he going to... All right, run a 70. Not too shabby. Is he going to, like, jack up and try to spear that? Or is he going to... Yeah, just Maybe missed my mark by a first. fraction there. We'll see momentarily. I'll just put up this poster quick for you guys. As you can see there, 50K added to each pro event. Free to view in person. Make sure you guys check it out. Lots of hotels around the area if you want to book a hotel and make a weekend out of it. I made this shot once, twice in a run of 190. So let's see here. I'm going to go. Uh... Oh, wow. What's he doing here? Is he pounding into the side rail? Or is he just rolling this in and finding a shot? Yeah, I'm going to play the 10 cross side with high inside English. This shot goes more than you'd think. The 10. 10 ball cross, cross side. side. Oh, man, it almost went. I've made that a couple times in some big runs. <laughs> it caught the well, horn. I mean, I wouldn't be too proud of making that for a big run, but sometimes that's what you can do. He shot a ball similar to that now, yesterday where he played like a long rail. Like we explained, the band. numbers, I just can't produce two and three and 400 ball runs on this table. But this table is forcing me to play so careful that I think it will reinforce to you guys the correct way to play this game. Because... Um, when you watch straight pawn of giant pockets, you can really play sloppy patterns. You got to pick them off right here. That's right. That's one thing I love about what he's doing here is he's showing us how to play straight pool properly. But I will be glad to get to some not bigger just, pockets, I can promise you. Not just you. bashing balls in the open and one stroke and stuff in. It's more about being calculated and, and playing the the precise shots. Now, here's a, now here's a little shot that comes up once in a while. You, you, you spin it inside English and hit here and push the six up to here because I have insurance right here. You don't got to do it, but it's laying, it's laying half decent to try it. So if you guys are just tuning in, we're watching See that? John Made a perfect break shot. Take some attempts on the four and a quarter inch pockets. This is not an easy table to play this game on. John is one of the best in the absolute world at this game. And so he's putting on display how tough this table really is. 
It's playing absolutely perfect. If I land perfect on this eight in the side, I, I would shoot it on bigger pockets because the eight doesn't go. So at the end, I have to go 11, eight, and something else. Table's playing perfect, but very, very tough. Tight pockets, four and a quarter, and they want to spit balls out lots. So that affects some of the decision making. I'm going to get rid of it. Of course. I'm going to get rid of that sequence, the 11 8 sequence, because it's kind of tangling up the rack. So we'll stop shot here, kind of a drag. Yeah, and get rid of the 8, as he was saying. Yeah, I'm taking notes, Lawrence. <laughs> I am for sure. I'm totally enjoying this. Anybody who's not, they need to listen in a little more because <laughs> we're learning today. That was horrific. Absolutely horrific shot. Man. Yeah. Ghost, Absolutely Ghost horrific. Ghost League does qualify you for BCA tournaments. James, check out our Ghost League for sure. CSLIPL.com. All the info's on there. That was even worse. Ooh. Wow. Let that one fly. Well, let's see if I can hold still here, make a good stroke. Yeah, he's got to stay real still now. What a pot. <laughs> That's way Man, I way screwed up the easiest rack. I, this is probably the easiest rack I've had. I made a mess of it. And you'll notice he says that, right? He says he made a mess of it, but he got out. Usually, us mortal humans, we make a mess of it, and we don't get out. <laughs> Once again, guys, the... 2022 CSI Western Canadian Championships alongside the I'll tell you what, I like Predator how this Predator Canada cloth Open. plays. I like how this table plays too. August 16th. Is that one rack? One rack? All right. One rack. David Wilson, yeah, you absolutely can still join that. Registration is open, I believe, for quite a while still, so plenty of time to get in. Plenty of time. And what you want to do here is play shape on the 12 so that I can go into the balls and then I have the four as insurance. So when I chip these open and get stuck, I have the four. So you just lightly shoot this. That's the kind of stuff we love to hear, you know. Now we got to shoot the five without hitting the seven, so spin it in with a bunch of right-hand English. Now he's got one of the side shots. Now this rack has already gotten away from me a little bit. Touch. He's going to need to use the ten to get on the nine. Uh, Fourteen, I believe, is that other stripe, unless he's on it right now, which it looks like he is. Oh, and he's punching that ball by the side the pocket. Good. Now I need to right deal with this 10 ball hole. like real quick. Yeah, 10 ball will be the issue. You want to clear the balls around the break ball. As early if I as shoot it can. now, I'd end up knocking the ball too far away. You can't shoot it now. So one of these tired. balls in the long corner. Yeah, it might be a little tired from yesterday. He did play. I'm not kidding. No exaggeration. Six and a half hours without a single break. Now at the end, one, nine, break. seven would be nice. But that means I have to get on the two half decent. Now I can go, I can go nine, one, two actually. And today will be a little different. We're going to have a mid-session Yeah, this is a little thinner than I wanted. I got to really dig into this cue ball. A mid-session break will be... Right around 2.15, so in about 45 minutes time. 2.15 Mountain Standard Time. And we'll be back at about 45 minutes after that. So oh, shit, I almost missed block. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, I thought he missed it, to be honest, when he hit it. I thought All he right. missed it. 
That was good. Looked like a deceleration and uh, no good stroke, but. People tell me, they say, well, you know, when I play the straight pull, I mean, I, uh, I don't know which ball to start with. Well, what you want to do is you got to kind of work your way backwards. You find a break ball and a key ball and a ball that leads to a key ball in a perfect world, and then you shoot. Obviously, you don't shoot those. And since you just made a break ball and there's only 14 on the table, you leave three alone. Now you got like 10 to choose from instead of so many. Of course, special thanks to all those folks. Pool table doctor, Martin K. Ellie, winning stroke. Of course, Predator, Town. Oh, I had an easy shot until that ball Schmidt. got kissed. Leather pocket, Jeff Wineless and, and Len Spitney being such great hosts. Such fantastic hosts. And one and one name that's not on there is is Grant Zemp. Grant put in a lot of work getting this. All right, man let's get rid of that five ball. Town, it's kind of an unhelpful little together, straggler. As well as getting the table set. And just Overall, organizing everything, the man spent a lot of work getting this all together. So, big shout out to Grant. Also, Stephanie Toy. I got to shoot Grant the one with a bunch of left English so it puts the brakes on when it hits the rail. Grant and Steph are hosting John at their house. So, Steph. Boy, did I make a mistake there? You know, extra cooking, cleaning, making sure John's nice and comfortable. Wow, that was a bad shot. Which is awesome for us. Because you don't want to have to shoot missable shots. I mean, you can run 40 doing that. You can't run, you can't run 540. So you don't want to do what I just did there, where I kind of shot a missable shot. Look at this ball. Ooh. Oh my goodness. I don't know if that was <laughs> what that was. There. I don't know if that was. Now let's draw into the three. <laughs> I think so. That it was moves and opens the lane a little bit. Aim shot. See what he means by open a lane there? He, All right, he means so it opens the nine into that Now what pocket. we need to do, the 13's a better break shot, but I have got to get these balls open here. Yeah, he, he definitely needs the 13 as the break nah, shot. No, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go 13, 10, 2. I think that removes all my issues. The eight as the break shot. That's maybe, yeah, quite a bit easier, but then everything's on this side rail to end. Of course the pocket's blocked. Who didn't know that? <laughs> the two doesn't go to the side. Didn't double check. As he mentioned before, got to give it the double check. That was just a terrific shot. That was a little well lazy. Well short there. Well short. I wanted to go four nine three two, but now... I got to hit a super kill stroke here with the four, which makes it missable. That was a good. That was a good shot. Real good by kill Very stroke. Very missable shot. He's playing bottom, but it's not grabbing bottom. It's dragging. Sometimes referred to as a drag shot. Little angle on the three, so he's not shooting the two from off the rail next. For me, that three ball is a little bit missable. Not for him. Oh, I miscued. Wow, I miscued right through the ball. That's the first miscue we've had in two days. That is the first miscue. Huh. Better on a First miscue ball we've run. had, so that's good. You don't want too many of those. Better to do well, that. Well, that would have been a, a tidy little out there, run, too. On a 400 ball run. Jeff's doing a quick measurement. I'm just going to have a sip of water here, guys. So Golly, you missed you there. That's so brutal. What's nice with this town chalk is you don't get any skids, though. That's the big thing, the skids. Yeah, these are small. They look big on camera, I know, but they're four and a quarter, aren't they? Yeah. Well, let me tip pick my cue a little bit. Oh, 
Looks like Jeff just reconfirming the tightness of these pockets over there. They are real tight. We know that much. Wow. Some pictures for Predator as well, he says. Good stuff. So let's see if John can string a big one together for us. We're only an hour and a half in. He's still got plenty of time. As I mentioned earlier, it wasn't until hour three where he he shot a 118 now this yesterday. Is, about hour this is four, a pretty usable little rack here. Yeah, I think he makes short work of this rack. Ball's laid pretty nice. A couple of different break ball options, 6-5. guys are just tuning in make sure you click that share button for me we got about another 40 minutes in this session before we'll take a, a mid-session break for about 45 minutes today give John a little rest so he doesn't wear himself out yesterday he went totally crazy and I think he might have overdid it a little He's a little tired today he says 11 ball But he did mention that, you know, since he'd been here for two weeks, he's he kind of been just doing lessons and, uh, you know, going to hockey games, watching hockey games, having dinners, just kind of just kind of hanging out. He hasn't got to play a lot, so I think he was pretty excited to play yesterday. And he did mention that once during his session yesterday that he was having fun. He said, I kind of forgot I like this game. <laughs> Shooting the five, shaping the six for the break ball. The lay is perfect. That's how you want to shoot all the racks if you can. That rack is kind of a display of how easy John can make this game look. You know, one regret I kind of have in my career, Ben, is a lot of times, you know, I got a match at 11 o'clock and I just roll down and, you know, hit a rack and then play. But I see the difference. Like when I was starting today, I was helpless. And now I'm like lasered in, right? Imagine if you practice for an hour and a half before every big match, you know? I mean, the other guys don't do it either, but I'm just saying the difference in your play is unbelievable when you warm up a little bit. Yeah, I like that. I like that he mentions that. I mean, shots that I would have guaranteed missed the first 15 minutes feels like they're going in nicely now. I say that, I'll hit this <laughs> chunky. <laughs> Not today, Junior. I mean, the balls what's the point of using up. a template if we're going to break like that? What is going on here? <laughs> the balls aren't opening up nice for him today. I don't know. Maybe I just am not racking them right. What I really need to do is make the 4, then the 14, then the 9. But I've got too much angle on this. Raymond, I totally agree, pal. I think this is going to be... Awesome warm up for when he switches over to the five inch gold crown tomorrow. I really think this is going to do wonders for him. They're going to look like gigantic pockets after shooting into these tight pockets. Yeah, maybe got to hand rack the template, not the triangle over top. Impossible, you know. Let's see, we're getting a little feedback from his microphone there. Hopefully that won't uh, keep up. Although yesterday, you know, he's, he was pretty chatty at the start and he, he started to get a little quieter as the day progressed. I think, you know, as he got a little more dialed into his stroke and he started to put up some more big runs. Uh, Lawrence, they absolutely could be. That was my thought exactly, was that the reinforcements could be shifting slightly from all the breakouts. 
you would kind of expect as the cloth stretches a little too. Of course, I would think the cloth is going to move a touch from when it was put on. And it's just so slippery, you know, so it's possible they they moved a little. And yeah, he's going to play quicker, Brian, with five-inch pockets. That's, that's going to be hard to keep up with. He's going to be running racks so quick we're going to lose track. We'll be like, is he on 10 racks or is he on 15? Like, you won't even know the difference between five racks. <laughs> yeah, Raymond, you got a four and a quarter inch at home. You know what it's like. You know what it's like. It's tough playing straight pool on four and a quarter. Man, I played on these diamond tables forever playing this game and it took me years to run my first century. My high run was All 86 right. for a really long time. All right. Wiggled Three our years. way through there. Good out. <laughs> it is amazing how much more difficult straight pull is on tight pockets. I forgot because I don't play it on tight pockets. I use the big pockets. Sort of a sobering reminder of how much harder. I mean, outs that would normally be hangers. I got to be super careful. Like that eight ball, the starting shot up in the corner. <laughs> yeah, he made some really great pots in that out. Not easy. And you can All right. see this is a physical Hit this break shot, too. high ball, hard. I don't Hopefully I don't it. get a kiss off the side of the rack. Wow, that was a weird reaction. Take it, though. Take about a million of those. He caught a force follow there, and look at how good it opened up. Break ball, break ball. So really, you just want to kind of, now a rack like this, I'm going to try to run this whole rack without touching the ball. I mean, it's possible. I'm not say, saying that to brag. I just think that's the right way to play it. Yeah, I fully agree. He should be able to run these out without moving a ball. As long as he plays tight cue ball position, he should not be bumping into any other balls here. They all go, just a matter of selecting them in the right order. And he's starting to get dialed in a little here. He's he's speeding up. And you can see the rhythm definitely picking up. He's still yet to miss a left-handed shot since he's been here. I'm keeping track now. He's got to miss one eventually. <laughs> Law of average. So, so far, so good. Real clean. Hasn't nudged another ball yet. Just picking these off, shooting them in the right order. Now, see, we were talking about this the other day. I'd shoot the nine here. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you ain't going to do it on this Not table, on tight which pocket. is fine. So that's, that's similar But it does to make you shoot tougher patterns, you know. Yeah, you got to change the style of play a little bit according to the tightness of the pocket. Now, this is one of the most viable shots people at home can, can get good at. And I don't know what you guys call it in Canada. I call it like a stun run through like I want this cue ball to I want to make the two and then have the cue ball just turn over about a half a revolution or a whole revolution and I got to be dialed in to pull this off I could very easily mess this up but this is the foundation for good position play stun run through we tend to call it a stun follow the stun run through is the see how that cue ball just went run. over like an inch that's that's really a usable shot I love that he brought that up that is one of the most useful shots in any game of pool if you don't have it in your bag of tricks, you need it. And you need to be able to stun follow at all different distances. It just makes keeping the line of the cue ball way easier. It won't deviate as much when you can hit it with that kind of speed. That was horrible. Yeah, he didn't want that. That was horrible. I put right hand spin on that. I thought he wanted more angle on the six to play the I cue meant ball to be here. the side rail. Yeah, exactly. Now he's just drawn straight back, which is okay, too. No need to panic. He's just going to be reaching quite far for this one. Does he shoot this one lefty? That's the question. Is he brave enough to shoot it lefty? Okay. <laughs> just want to see him miss a ball. Nice little 42. Very uh, 
Very smooth. I mean, by by this table standards, it's as smooth as I could produce. Yeah, he's definitely playing real good. Starting to dial it in a bit. His rhythm is good. His pace is picking up. I think we're going to see a big one here before the, the mid-session break. Oh, what's he got here? I think possibly the one popped out enough. Or he's on the... 13. Well, I got a decision to make here. Do I shoot this into a half pocket? Yeah, I think, I, think he, I do. He shoots a 13. And a lefty break. <laughs> Lawrence says that's a hard no. I've shot the lefty break before. <laughs> I've also never ran 200 balls, so <laughs> that could be why. <laughs> Yeah, first time watching him, Brian, but you've heard him lots. Definitely, he is a great ambassador to the game, for sure. Pool needs more players like John. We might be getting paid more if Pool had more players like John. Boy, this has gotten yeah, tricky here. Real good professional. Now, here's a shot that's kind of that's kind of wild, but... You can cut this and hit here because this 11 keeps the cue ball from scratching most likely. If I was ever going to do a shot this uh, risky, it would be now. But I'd rather just work them off. Yeah, I'd like to shoot the 12 and go into them, and then, I, I, and then I have the yeah. three as insurance. Yeah, I thought he shoots the I don't know. This is putting a 10. big premium on Lead cue ball on control. The 12. Yeah, then kind of go into them. It's nah. not easy. No, nah, i got to shoot the six. I want to make sure I get them open here. So touch of inside, pretty firm. Yeah, you had to hit it pretty firm because yeah. it's the only way to Could get have been worse. to straighten out enough. That's not bad. He's he's working an uphill battle here, though. So the four is going to get him down near these balls at least. Well, that was a bad shot. He's a little more angle than I originally thought. He's kind of floating towards the 14-7 here with the high ball. Yeah, so he just goes into them. What's he got? Oh, he got the double kiss on the 7. So he's got all kinds of break balls on that end rail, I suppose. The 12 might be the break ball, possibly the 3. Not here. Well, I wanted to get straight on the 14, shoot the 3, and push the 5 out. But I got a little thin on this ball. I don't think I can hold it. Yeah, just because the 10 is covering some of the, the right side of the pocket that he would need to hold it. He was right there, so he had to roll it. And I think he overhit it. And he's nudged the two a little funny. Uh, still workable, but it's not getting any easier from here. But I did like the plan he was saying there. Try to get straight on that other ball and then, and then use the three. I'm going to try to make five into the position. 10 and push the five out at the same time. It's kind of asking a lot left-handed, but I'm going to try it. Nah, I think I catch the 12 anyway. Yeah, you can't do that. 12 yeah, I way. couldn't do it anyway. So now I'm all in with the uh, five ball. Maybe the 11. Let's see. Five says break ball. 11 looks a little too far off. You'd have to be really Nah, this is no good here. Is the five too high? It's kind of tricky to see from this angle. This is not ideal, though. Let's see what he does. See how he talks his way through this. Or if he does. I thought he might contemplate using the 12 just because of, yeah. Just because of how bad that five was. He's got to leave lots of angle on oh, that, 12, though. That rolled, that rolled off there. Oh, that's that, the first little, that that's drift. the first little roly poly I've seen. That did drift a and little. And at that yeah. speed, you're gonna get those. Damn it! They well, at that speed, any table's gonna trickle a little. What did I do there? What shot did I shoot? Oh yeah. They don't always go dead straight. Yeah, just a, I mean, this table rolls great. That I, that one just a fraction. That went pretty straight. God, that would have been perfect, too. That was, uh, 
That was a 54 <sighs> ball run there. Well, as slow as I shot it, there's a risk of, er you know, ball, no yeah. pool table can roll perfect at one mile an hour. I, there's no way. <laughs> so I'm blaming me, not the table there. Uh, I should have just, I should have hit it and right. went like this, but. 100% right. What's that? Uh, if I get on a good run, yeah, if I get to 100, let's switch them out. Because they're starting to get a little clammy on me. All right, so he's not going to switch out the balls yet. We're going to reset the scoreboard here. That was a run of 50. That might be the best break shot, Ben. I believe. Maybe that's the new. That's the new. That's the new break shot. That's the new new. He says. <laughs> All right, we got about another half an hour. Oh in, in my this goodness! First session of today. Let's see if you can give us a century to start off the day. I know he's got it in him. He came uh, came pretty close. He was on an 89 today. That is his high run. But his pace is picking up, so I feel like he's got he's got a century in him here. Look at these three balls stay together. We got this beautiful predator table he's playing on today. And tomorrow he's going to be moving on over to the gold crown. We do have this predator table set up now in leather pocket. It will be staying here with the arena light. Beautiful arena light. I'm really a huge fan of that arena light. I couldn't couldn't believe seeing it in person for the first time. It's, it's so nice. I didn't know it sat so high up, which is a dream come true for any pool room, especially for... Broadcasting wise, we can get a camera up there, no problem. Just uh, once we get the framework set up in the light to hold the camera, then away we go. And we can get a nice top down view for some of our big tournaments here at Leather Pocket. Super excited for that. All right, now here's, here's something kind of strange that comes up once in a while. I'm going to try to make the 10 stop, shoot the 7, and come here and push this 3 to about right here and make it a break ball. This is my insurance. If I don't get it right, it's okay. But if I get lucky and make it perfect, it can work. Now I missed my mark anyway. It doesn't even matter. Interesting. Interesting doesn't even matter. There. I would have never guessed that he would be nudging the 3 for a break ball. So his break ball is. I mean, it's got to be the ugliest pattern I've ever seen. Or is the break ball the nine? Yeah, confused here as much as he is. That table for the four on the side, so he must be using the three, obviously. Can't see the four being a break ball, that's for sure. What do I know about this game? <laughs> what the heck do I know about this game? He's trying to get ball in hand, and he got it. For those of you that don't play this game, if you leave the cue ball in the triangle, you can take ball in hand behind the line, which is obviously what I tried to do so I could shoot this on the side. I mean, this was a horrific pattern, but... You have to do stuff like that in straight pull to continue. Very interesting pattern. Very, very interesting. We got to see a little bit inside John's mind there. All right, there's a run of one rack. Tricky little. I'd be on a pretty good number if that there. ball wouldn't have just climbed upstairs on me. Now I want to hit the 111 right in the face if I can get lucky and do that. All right. No. No, he says. <laughs> Does the 12 go? Or is he on the 15? Okay, he's on the 15. It was a little worrisome there for a second. I think he's going to get rolling here. This is a good one. Let's just go into the five lightly here. Let's into the five lightly. Open some lanes. 
14 to the 7. I don't think he'll be disturbing anything here. He's punching through to the 2, I believe. Just like that. Yeah, he tickled I'll that. tell you one thing. This, right. this straight pull will, will get your tangent line control dialed in. That's the one thing that it's really good. I mean, the shot making, too, because you've got to shoot so many shots. But tangent line control, wow. It forces you to be really good on your how the cue ball leaves the object ball that you're hitting. Yeah, I really agree there. Really agree. Very important to know where the cue ball is going off that tangent line. So, Well, this rack here is a disaster. I need to, I need to maybe... And I hate to do it. I've got to come back and shoot this three ball combination here. I mean, I don't have to do that, but it is laying real good. Three ball combination must be referring to the 6-13-8. I feel like that's a weird pattern. Can't see him really doing that. So he leaves angle on the five to go into them. Go into the cluster here, I believe. Just gonna flick around and play the combo, but I, I don't think so. Oh, well, I missed them all there, didn't wicked I? Wicked thin. <sighs> he caught the eight wicked thin on the way through. That could be end of break. Yeah. Tough shot here up into the corner and moving balls. Never easy. Oh, I cannot believe so that went good. in. Another tough shot. But he did develop a break ball there, so he got rewarded for a real tough shot. See, on the that eight. was the harder shot because you guys expected me to make that one. <laughs> it's not getting any easier. This is a pretty tough shot, too. Uh, I like that he's looking at the 13 instead. 13 does go up in the corner, and that's a much easier shot than the 10, I feel. I feel. But he, he likes the 13-6 end game. That's, that's how he feels he's getting the best chances, so. Soft draw here. Needs to be close to straight. Doesn't want too much angle there. And he saved I'm getting dialed in, Benjamin. My thoughts exactly. I think. <laughs> I think I'm getting dialed in. He is getting dialed. I look pretty good when I have no opponent. <laughs> no opponent. It does make it look a little better. Or it can make it look real bad. <sighs> yeah, such a great escape there for sure, Lawrence. Totally agree. Used his get out of jail free card there. I can't believe he just took a sip of his water. He didn't do that for six hours yesterday. <laughs> pace himself a little better today that's good I think that's very necessary to uh, putting up big numbers over the course of six days like if you're just playing this for one day is a little different I'll tell you Ben after I leave town I want you to play some straight pull on this table and get back to me it's it's hard it's just subtly difficult little table I'm gonna play nothing but straight pool on that table for a long time <laughs> straight pool is my jam yeah, look at that. Just well, it doesn't help moving. that I don't know how to use a template rack. I mean, what it's is going on moving. here? That one he hit real good. There's no reason to only get a couple Can you balls believe that? in there. Came out super dead. All he's got is I don't know. I'm here. doing so. I, I just threw him up the there kind of lazy. Maybe he's, yeah, I just got to spend an extra second making sure they're tight. Just because they're sitting on a template doesn't 100% mean... They're always going to freeze. Oh, fabulous shot that was. <laughs> fabulous. He made it look so much easier than it was. That's a 1 in 10 for most human beings. That's a power draw into the stack here and try to get through it. <laughs> <laughs> Got a love straight pull. I think he's on the 5 if that's a shot. Uh, that's real tough. God, what I is going on I just don't see here? anything else. Tough as this shot. Tiny little pocket there. Four and a quarter inch sides are real tight. 
from any angle. That is the tightest pocket. Super hard shot, that one. I'm not racking them right, Ben. You see that? I'd have to Man. agree. So he's got about another I'm not racking them right. I'm not racking them tight here. or something. I don't know. Let's see if he can string one together. Obviously, if he gets on a big run here in the next 15, I'm going to have to leave the camera going. Uh, if not, then uh, this will probably be his last attempt. We're going to do a little midday break today, interval. So around, around 2.15, so in about 15 minutes, 2.15 Mountain Standard Time. We'll take a break till about 3 o'clock. So about a 45 minute break, uh, mid-session today. And then John should be uh, playing till about 6 o'clock or so tonight. Mountain Standard Time, of course, guys. Let's see what he can do for one more run here, and then I'll and then I'll stop him. He might put up a big one here, though. I, I feel like he's just the right amount of frustrated. <laughs> so if the balls start rolling his way, he might put up a big one here. And these lay pretty nice. He's got more balls up table than we've ever seen him have up table, but that's not unlikely of the opening shot in, in this high in these high run attempts. He tend to kind of smash the opening break more than any other one. Nothing to lose, right? <laughs> you should pick these off pretty easy. He's nudged the one into a break ball position. Did that a couple a couple of shots ago. He's going to get the eight off the side rail. That's one of the few troubled balls that he had in this rack. I think he would shoot the 13 here to open the lane for the 11. Now he can play the 15, 11, 6. Uh, 6 is a good out ball. Leads him nice and close to the 1. You tend to want balls that are going to leave you close to the break ball because you don't want to be shooting super long break shots. He came up well short there, didn't he? I think that's going to frustrate him a little bit too. Can he pinch this one back or does he have to force it around? Looks like he's playing the force around. Played it well. Played it real well. It's a good shot. Well, I know one thing. I'm moving to, I'm going back to the U.S. and I'm going to open a poutine cart or a Tim Hortons. <laughs> awesome. How about both? <laughs> Love the Tim Hortons. He was a great hockey player, right? That's right. Look at this guy. He's becoming a Canadian. <laughs> I'm so proud of him. <laughs> See that 14? It's aiming. It's aiming a little bit high. So when the nine hits the six, it should. I wouldn't want to shoot this at 300, but I'm going to shoot it right now. I'm just going to play this little four ball combination. 14. Because he thinks it's going to cut the 14 to the heart, and it did. And look at that one little shot. Something wired in the stack. And now the entire rack is wide open. Minus the 211, of course, but I don't see that being a big problem for John. He's got he's got the 8 and the 6 down there to deal with it. He could deal with it from the 7 here as well. Obviously, you got to get rid of but this it, problem here, and we got to do it with some insurance. You can't just shoot at it. I mean, you got to have a plan when you go into those. That's what I'm thinking is it should nudge the 11 kind of near the hole, so it's... You don't have to put all your eggs in one basket, but I feel like that eh, wasn't the greatest. It's of pretty shots high there. percentage as long as he gets the the correct angle to to run into the two and leave the eleven near the hole. Wanted to be on the twelve there, and he's not. 
15 is his break ball. So he's not going to be doing anything with that. So now he's going to move the 211. Soft into half of the two. A rail first into half of the two works as well. Well, we got just enough separation. I think it'll be all right. Yeah, the combination's laying pretty well there now. You can shoot the three in. I think follow this into about half of the ball. Half of that stripe should push it near the... Oh, he was straight enough to draw back. Good little shot there. So now does he power draw all the way back? Onto the four, the eight. God. Oh, he stuns over onto the four. He came up a little short of what he wanted, but he's okay. Nothing wrong with this. Just needs to avoid crashing into his break ball. Which he does quite easily. Now he can play this combination. Ah, he was only 180 miles from St. Louis, so he would know who Tim Horton was. Ah. These guys don't follow hockey very right. much, so it wouldn't have surprised me if he didn't. All right. Yeah, you guys are seeing, I'm sure, you know, consistencies. You, you're going to say, well, it seems like John's trying to always shoot the balls easy and soft and with insurance. The main one is insurance. Whenever I run into the balls, I'm trying to have – uh, an idea of what I'm going to shoot next because if you just run into them haphazard you will not do well at this game and another thing that you have to do in straight pull that's overlooked is you have to shoot laser straight I and mean, you have to be a straight shooter people people think you know I run 300s and stuff because I sh because of the patterns I you got to shoot pretty straight to do that there's no way around it you're going to have to make good shots frozen off the rail and big backward cut break shots and all that good stuff Let's see how so much. So shooting straight goes a long way in this game. And then if you can play position to shoot them in soft, that's two racks, Ben. Let's see how much these open up after he hand racked them. I do need a lesson on how to use a magic rack, though. I mean, what is going on much. here? He's on the 11. Oh, boy. I mean, I was under the impression the template helps. It looks like it's <laughs> it's making it, like, worse or something. Now, if I could get on the 7 to the 10 right here, shoot the mm -hmm. 10, open them up, I have insurance with the 2 ball. Correct. So that wouldn't be too bad. Absolutely. What I was thinking as well. It's I can barely hell a cab left-handed. So, I mean, I hate shooting left-handed shots unless I have to. But something like that, I can usually dink them in okay. He says that, but he's yet to miss a lefty shot. <laughs> Obviously, we haven't seen him power up with any draw or anything crazy, but I'm a little treetop there. Tree I guess I could shoot this. I'm angle. not really in love with it, but yeah, I think 13's the ball. Obviously, way tougher at 280 than it is at 28. Those shots, as John would say, looks like uh, shooting a basketball into a Cheerio. <laughs> yeah, Kenneth. I'm a firm believer that everybody should learn to play opposite-handed. I think there's certain balls that you absolutely cannot now, this shoot is, with a rest. I mean, this is not the, the shot, but I have to shoot it here. I'm going to try to stun the cue ball into the rack. Into the pack, yeah. Here we go. Okay, oh that worked out that nice. time. Nice. See that little extra draw once it, the cue ball hit the stack, it kind of kept drawing. Really well done. Yeah, I can. It just like I started noticing that there's some shots where you just can't get the rest out of the way in time, which makes like thinning the ball way tougher, sometimes impossible. And, and then I was like, well, I'm playing safe on this shot when I should be cutting it in. You know, if I, if I was opposite hand, I would just cut it in. So I thought, well, you know, might as well practice oh. it a little, see what happens. And. What do you know? Got better over time, and, and now I'm starting to thin them in with uh, a little bit of consistency and even load up with some spin here and there. Yeah, it's tough to practice much with the bridge, too. You know, it just it doesn't come up enough. But I know all the great snooker players, they, they practice lots with it. 
Boy, these pockets make a nice sound. Real good out there. Flap. It was that like was a, something I noticed with this table. I really I'm telling you sound. guys, these Predator tables play great from what I'm seeing. And straight pool, um, you know, is really going to bring out if a table rolls bad because you have to shoot so many little slow shots. So from what I see, it's super level. I know it's well made. Cloth plays great. So this whole rumor that the Predator tables don't play good, I think, is unfair to the table. I would have to. They agree. actually play fantastic, from what I see. Yeah. I you couldn't some. run 100 if they didn't. <clears throat> I hit some balls over there, and, and it plays so nice. And, and I like that he brought sound to the pocket. I, I like it. It's more of an old school sound. I think that's one of the appeals to this game is is it's very visually appealing, but it's also very well, audio. Based. I think there's quite the appeal to the sounds of this game too. The clicking, clacking of the balls and the sound of the balls going in the pocket and you know, the sound the, the tip makes when it hits the ball. And Now this shot here is a little dangerous. All those different things. I, that's something I love about this game as well as visual audio. See if he gets rolling here. We only got about another six minutes in this session before we take a little mid-session break. Although I did mention if he if he gets on a big run here and I, and I have to run out for about 45 minutes, then I may Damn, just I leave. That ball. I may just leave the audio running and get um, Jeff to update the scores. And Jeff can even sit in and do some commentary if he likes. But you guys can. Oh, well, I'd like to get on this 11 where I could just open them balls a little bit. Nope. Nope, not today. So we'll see if he gets on a run here. If he does, I'll leave it going. If so I got to go 11, 13, 2, 4, 8, 10. 11, 13, 2, 4, 8, 10. Okay. Well, inside. I don't know that I can here. get around those balls. Oh, boy. There's not enough traction with the new cloth. To get the proper amount of inside spin, I believe, is what he's referring to there. Yeah, so he just. He just didn't even try to do it. He knew it wasn't really possible. Now he's going to play this with like kind of the bottom inside. Drag the cue ball up near that top side pocket. Ho, ho. Needs it to hold Got up, and it's not Stop. going to. And this is not easy now. Well, I'm going to have to either. If I shoot the eight, I mean, I can miss the eight. I got to shoot the eight. I mean, I got to shoot the four. He's got to go into like half of the eight. There we go. Oh, he hit that so good. What a shot. And yeah, Bo, the sound of pool players crying too. That's another great sound in this game. <laughs> another great out from John there. Yeah. If I could control my diet like I control my cue ball, Ben, tables and I'd be in good shape, buddy. Yeah, I think I think he's controlling it real well. I think he's playing fantastic. The table's real tough. I still think we're gonna see like a 200 ball run here on this table. I mean, those look tight. If those don't open, I don't know. See, I've been playing like two hours with this town chalk. The balls are pretty spotless. Mm -hmm. There's no chalk on the cloth of the balls. That's that's nice. Not one skid. I'm really a huge fan of that town chalk. I just started playing with it a few yep, days ago. Yeah, ball right to the end rail. That's adorable. Oh, you hit it with some draw. I think if you're going to draw it, you got to power draw it. You got to, like, just give her if you're going to hit it with that. That kind of draw. I think he was more just trying to kind of stun it out to middle table, though. I don't think he was trying to draw it that far. Tough shot, this three ball. Well, he didn't make it look tough. I'm as shocked as you are. <laughs> Always in shock. 
Hey, sorry, John. I don't think I answered your question last time you asked, you asked that, Mr. Andrick. He plays with uh, Victory Soft. 12.4 Revo. It's the Stop. John Schmidt 626 <sighs> edition. P3. Beautiful cue. Beautiful, beautiful cue. I hit some balls with it. It hits super great. Well, this is the break shot. I don't have any way to open them except. What's he doing here? What's he doing here? Can't have enough angle on the 11 to punch into the balls. And he's not sure he has an insurance ball when he does that. So he might be drawn back to try to get more angle next time around. Oh, okay. I, I actually really like this. Because now he's pushing balls towards corners, you know? And, and staying nearby as well. You're not letting God, the two ball go on, fly in man. there, right? That's not bad. He's got he's got the 11 here. And he's developed a break ball. The 12 is in a break ball position now. Yeah, soft tip, Johnny. Victory soft. I really, I'm a firm believer that uh, Carbon really calls for the soft tip. I think the shaft just has so much power already. Ooh. Let me see how level that rolled. You know, if that ball rolls off, I miss it. Those are never fun. That was a good sign that the table is rolling indeed. Very true. Because he needed to spin that ball in and hold it. And it was not easy. That's a really good shot as well. Good control there. So I think at the end of this rack, I'm going to have to jump off, guys. I'm going to have to leave you with Jeff. He'll update the scores. Maybe fill in a little commentary, but you guys can listen to John as well. Hear the clack of the balls. But I'll be back right around... Three o'clock, so about 45 minutes. And hopefully, John will still be running balls. So it looks like there will be no mid session interval. It looks like this is just going to keep running. But I do have to have to run away for a moment. Uh, the brand of chalk, Taum Chalk, Kenneth Taum. I like what he did there. He's sacrificing the distance. He's taking the ball in hand. He left the cue ball in the rack area. So if you leave the cue ball in the rack area and straight pool, you are allowed to take ball in that hand behind the head. Good out there. All right. I shall be back shortly. Well, I got to make a long, tough shot. That's all there is to it. No trick here. There's no trick here. In the four months, Ben, that I tried this, the four months, from what I remember, I never once missed a behind-the-line the break shot on the big pockets. I mean, I must have shot 100 of them, but this thing, <laughs> this thing is like, it's just a big difference. I don't know. I think I'm supposed to make this, though. All right. Made a good stroke there. And of course got, man, what is going on with these balls? Wow. One on the side, hopefully. Boy, I'd like to shoot this off that 14, but I don't have the courage. Wow, that's got to be the worst shot I've ever seen. Oh, God. 
Well, that was horrific. That's all there is to it. God, how ugly was that? I flinched on it. I flinched. Oh, I flinched so bad. What an idiot. God, I have nothing to. All I can do is make the two barely. If I shoot the five, I'm going to miss it most of the time. Oh, my God. Man, you got to be kidding. What a dummy. I swear to God, jack myself up right there. Oh, terrible. Terrible. All right, Donald Trump up in the corner. Don Donald Trump up in the corner. <laughs> no, I don't like it. No, I don't like it. I'm screwed here. I got to hit it with inside English to catch the 10. That's a pretty good shot. That's got to be the worst roll I've ever seen. What the hell? Well, Trump didn't let me down, but now I'm in trouble. You know what? I think I can make this, Jeff. I just hope I don't miss Q. Oh, that was cool. Don't do that, though. Look at this. All that, and I should leave this. What a numb nuts. Too much sauce. God, man. And this goes right in the side. You know what? I'm going to shoot a shot because the viewers will dig this. This is the wrong shot, but I'm shooting it. The three people that are... I'm going to fly the 10 over these balls in the corner. I know that sounds easy. I'm going to try it anyway. Oh, I, I did it against him in a big match. I ran like... I did this exact shot like 20... Yeah. 10 in the corner. How about that strike? Now what? Now, yeah, I know, right? Now I got to bank the four and off the side of the three. That was a pretty good strike, though. Shit. Couldn't the cue ball got a little easier than this? Cross side. Oh, I could have made it off the three. Ah, oh, if I could have stiffed that in. Wow. This table's too hard for this game. That's good, though. I got a nice built-in excuse. Nobody expects me to run any balls. <laughs> I just keep running 70, 80, 70, 80. I don't know. That's about right. I'm going to call the 13 ball here where I'm standing. <laughs> That's the shot you shoot when you're playing a match, you know. You just want to, like, have fun with somebody. Well, got nothing again.
Let's try the two. All right. Gotta aim them, John. Come on. Trying to hurt. Yeah, I'm trying to hurry too much there. I'm trying to do the one stroke John Shaw move. Ugh. Yeah, you gotta show more respect for these pockets than the one stroke. <sighs> well, folks, if you're watching at home, I gotta tell you, I know I'm old, but I'm getting really tired. So, my level of play, I don't know. I might throw in the odd kind of easy miss, but I'm trying to – I feel good, but I'm, I'm a little worn out too. Yeah, I feel good. I mean, I, I don't feel like really tired, but I'm a, I'm a little beat up. It's the mental of like trying to bear down and focus on the patterns, not so much the shot making. It's the looking at these patterns like I'm trying to figure out a chess piece. Like other games, you can just shoot, bang, bang, bang. This game, you got to think your way through, and it can it can be a little, little daunting sometimes. Yeah, to bear down on every ball for days, it's tough, but it's fun. I signed up for it. I'm gonna do it. That's what we signed up for. Be nice if I can push this 10 over just a little bit. I almost missed that one. I remember Darren Appleton, you know, in a tournament once, he ran like 200 now. It was amazing, right? And then they had him play another match an hour later, and after, and he played really, you know, rough the next match. And he goes, dude, it is brutal. Well, that, that was a three-hour game, and then another three-hour game. That's sick. This is <laughs> – so to run a big run doing this is what I need to do, and it's what usually happens is I'll catch it on the first or second inning – so I'm not worn out, you know what I mean? I did have some giant runs at, after six hours, but I was so tore up. But if I can get lucky and get hot the first inning or two, then, you know, you still have all your energy. But I'm having a blast. This is fun. I, last couple of weeks, all I did was uh, the clinics. I didn't get to shoot any, so this is fun. I'm not going to complain. If the worst thing in my life is I got to play a bunch of pool, that's all right. Don't scratch in the side. Don't get up against the four. 
Oh, yeah. That's adorable. Yuck. I mean, super yuck. Look at this. <sighs> yeah. Oh. Boy. Got to make shots like this. It's... That's a pretty missable ball when you jack up like that. Well, it's a rough rack here. I mean, it's just like trouble everywhere. 15 in the side is the best break shot. Sad to say, but. All right, let's see if we can get reorganized here. All right. That's all. Sometimes that's all you can do. That's the break shot you got to shoot. Oh. All right. See, we get lucky here. I'd like to catch the three, three six right in the mouth. What is, I never seen nothing like this. I mean, them balls as frozen as they are should be flying, but that happens. God dang, <laughs> could play the billiard on the five. I'm going to try the uh, eight ball. I don't think it has a chance in hell, but. Oh, it was dead as door now. You can't believe how much throw there was there. Wow. Huh. Go figure. <laughs> that was pretty moronic right there. Oh, 
Ach, komm. I did it again. I'm trying to aim for too much rail. Pocket, I mean, you got to be able to aim there. Tight, 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 tight. I mean, I can't make a one-footer straight in. Yeah. Oh, that's brutal. Take me there. Yeah, if you're ever, uh, I'm sure most of the people listening to this is, I mean, have all been here. But if you're anywhere in Alberta, you got to come see this pool room. The equipment's awesome. They polish the sets of balls after every customer turns them in. The tables are clean daily, and it's it's ridiculous. It's it's a real pool hall with action and great players and tournaments and break pots and uh, pro shop and food and, I mean, this is a heck of a spot. I'm honored to be here. Oh, cue ball. Hit the nine. Oh, thanks, Jeff. No, thank you. Yeah, Jeff Wanless, a buddy of mine, is the is the manager. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm sure you can get a hold of him. He organizes events, and they probably do corporate parties and, yeah, all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, this is the real deal here. This is the real deal. Let's take a little chip at these balls here. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. My wife's Canadian. I mean, real Canadian, like lived there her whole life. And, and she's always she's always joking with me saying, oh, you think we live in igloos up there and stuff. I'm just like, no, I don't. I think Canada's cool. But I learned a bunch of new sayings since I've been here. Like, uh, if you're in trouble, you're you're hooped. If you're uh, sad or mad, I guess you're choked. I like the sayings. I was so choked when I missed that four ball. <laughs> now, here's a chance to shoot the 10-12 combo and push the 11 up to here. It's kind of free because I should have the one next. Yeah, I hit it a little too easy. Now I've made my life <laughs> a disaster. Well, no, it's all right still. Ever do. See, this shot on the bigger pockets would be no problem. I was scared to death on this thing. Woo! Sailor man. Did Ben give up on me, Jeff? He's smoking. Easy cue ball. Where are you going? Yeah, I think the I've said this before, but I think Canada is is just an amazing country. It's like the last of the unspoiled places that haven't been, uh, you know, just completely ruined by, you know, like America is really in trouble, I think. Not to talk politics, but I hope you guys will take me in when America falls apart. <laughs> There's only one adjustment that needs to be made, though. I told Ben, I think hockey needs to have no goalies. And he's like, no, we kind of do the goalie thing up here. Because <laughs> I was watching the game going, well, instead of 0-0 after three periods, wouldn't it be cool to see 21-20? And, you know, he goes, John, just drink your Tim Hortons and shut your mouth, please. 12 ball.
Uh, well, treetop there. Can't shoot that. Now, this is a shot. I mean, this is just totally a last resort. Try to cut the two on the side and hit the 13. Oh, no, I hit the wrong ball first. Well, that's why you don't want to do that. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Well, if I was ever going to make a bank, it's now with this 11 here. All right. Well, the three in the side might be the break shot here. I'm going to try to push these down behind the stack, though. Yeah, I'm going to have to shoot the three. I mean, ah, this is ugly. Now I got to get position on the eight to get it into the rack, obviously. Oh, chunky. Wow. Man. Damn. Well, I got on it. Tight pockets. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. If it's okay with Grant, I mean, I'm going to qu quit the straight pull. It's just torturing me. I'm going to try that one pocket ghost again. If that's all right with the viewers, do they want to see straight pull? Or do they they cool if that if I play some one pocket ghost? Oh, we'll mix it up. Maybe I'll go back to straight pull. But I need a little break. It's beating me up. Now today, I'm going to try something different. Yesterday, I did the break with no ball in hand. I'm going to take ball in hand so that I might get the occasional 15 extra so we don't waste so much time just racking. Yeah, one pocket go, so I'm going to try to shoot them all into one pocket, take break and ball in hand. If I scratch on the break, it's behind the line with the cue ball. This is a really fun drill. It's similar to straight pull as far as uh, – cue ball control. Wow. This is no good. I can't, I can't even do nothing with ball of hand. That's right. Grant's going to be like, I thought you came up here to play straight bull. <laughs> God, I'd like to power draw into those balls.
Well, I got to hit. Yeah, I got that window, but I got to hit. Problem is, if I shoot the seven from here, I'm just knocking all the balls the wrong way. I need to go two rails to get underneath the four just right. Oh, this might do it. Oh, this is a good shot here. Thanks, Jeffrey. All right, now we hit the six and move the 12 a little and see what happens. All right. Wow, this would be nice. I did it on the first try when I came in today, but, I, you know, with the ball in hand. So that would be two out of three tries. Yeah, the ball in hand changes the game. It's still hard as can be, as you can imagine. you got to hitch. I'm not out yet either. I'm over here licking myself. I'm not out yet. No, that, that, saying, that saying, lick myself, I was playing Kim Davenport about 15 years ago in a big tournament. You know, and he's real, like, and I made an out or something. He just looks at me and goes, you really like to lick yourself, don't you? And it always stuck at me because it's funny. Easy. Well, go then. Oh, that was a good shot there. Do what I can. One pocket's my new game. Screw this straight pull. Wow, that was a great out there. All right, so that's two out of three. And they didn't have the camera on. Ben saw me do one early. All right, that's good. Good start. That's funny because those were laying freaking terrible. I don't even know what's the right way to break them doing this, really, with ball in hand. Oh, this this ain't no good. <sighs> I know. I know, right? Ugh, look at these balls. I mean, come on, man. Well, I'll tell you what. Ugh, about broke a rib shooting that one.
Man, that was almost a hell of a shot right there. I almost got on the window. Oh, almost. I think I got to break them a little harder, Jeff, because I'm getting ball in hand. You know, yesterday I was trying to corral them, but I think, I think I'm going to try a little harder break maybe. I'm learning. I'm learning as I go here with this. I've never really played it with ball in hand much. Now that nine spots up at the end. So remember that because I owe, I owe that ball. Baby. Oh, come on, man. God. Fucking ball. That's disgusting. Yeah, get in. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I, I did something stupid there. I think with ball in hand, I'm thinking like one out of every six or seven racks would be probably reasonable to expect, maybe. I don't know. We'll sh huh? 50 birds? Well, the way they're breaking, it doesn't look like I have a chance in hell, but I'm going to try. keep trying. This game really entertains me. I like practicing this more than any game. Well, if they're going to rack like this, I mean, what in the world? Man, that's unbelievable. I don't understand it. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? Oh, I know, right? <laughs> I could play the the two off the four. and Yeah, really. Well, I'm going to have to bank the five next here. To have any chance. It gets right on the rail, of course.
Make me believe. Thank you. Do what I can. Be here all week, literally. See, I, on my diamond, I'm so used to the rails, I could bank balls good. I'm scared to bank this. I feel like I'm going to miss it too often. I need to have the 13 kick back over to this side. Like that. Just like that. Ah, uh, ah, uh. yeah, I just, I tried to twirl it in with left. Ah, dang it. That would have been nice. We got to get the break going better, though. I mean, this is disgusting. I mean, those are all so frozen. Brilliant.
Yeah, it was. I mean. God. I mean. Golly, that was a close. <laughs> oh, he should have. Wow. I couldn't take no more Benji of the straight pull. I mean, I just keep getting 80s, and so I'm going to mix it up here for a minute. First rack, I did 15 out, so I went. 15 and then four and then 15 and then I almost got it there well well, I, well no but I'm taking ball in hand that helps a little bit a lot of bit obviously Hi guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, Ask for silence. I'm sure we got to hear some genius from John, though. You know, during that time. Yeah, so he's playing a little one pocket ghost now. Of course, just playing straight pool all day gets a little wearing. So if you guys aren't familiar with one pocket ghost, he's just gonna shoot all the balls and. One of those bottom corners. He's going to take ball in hand on the opening shot. I would say most times. Unless he has like some kind of super wired combo, he might just shoot it. But yesterday he was attempting not taking ball in hand. Which he says he's ran four in a row. All 15 balls into one of those bottom corners without ball in hand. And so far, he's got a couple of nice runs. I'm sure you guys are enjoying this too. Little one pocket ghost action. We'll see if he paces himself a little more today than he did yesterday. Yesterday, he went a little crazy. I think he was excited to just get to play. Look at that shot. We're gonna see some shots. <laughs> This will be fun to watch. Super fun. Yeah, I'll see you on Friday, Peter. I'll be here as well. I'll be here right up until Friday. Until the end of day Friday. And then, and then I won't be here on Saturday, unfortunately. So hopefully... Everybody out there is having a good day, enjoying a little pool on the side. Super fun to watch John go through some of these racks and hear some of his thoughts along the way. We got him mic'd up there. Super tough table, this Predator table is playing really nice right now. This is exactly the conditions you want to see. And let's see if he can start stringing together some of these 15 ball outs. They're fun to watch. I think his best in five racks, he said, is 73 points. That's counting. 15 balls a game, of course. So he said he ran two and then ran 13 and then ran two more. That's unbelievable in five innings. And it is a game they tend to bet on a little here and there oh, prop can't bets bank on this table seems like i miss every bank on this damn thing still trying to get well, used to banking balls enough. here for sure <laughs> let's see if i can fit this in the scoreboard oh look at that almost like i know what i'm doing Yeah, that 
that's kind of what I thought he might do. Even yesterday, I thought he might just start table banks just banging in some, some banks and get used to the slide of the rail. Yeah, look at this. This is a real treat. Even just watching him practice, this is this is nice. You know, it's not every day you get to watch this. I know Shane does those practice sessions. Perfect, and, and they're yeah, incredible. Right? They're perfect. Who else loves watching? You know, good players practice. Anybody else out there ever watch some of those Shane practice sessions? SBB? Personally, I love those, you know. He's just setting up the same shot, banging it Maybe in, I can do like in. a... I don't know. I, 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 think, I think the way to do this break is like this. Four rail the cue ball. <laughs> That's the break I've seen oh. people use when they get ball in hand. Back into it. Never thought of that. That's a crafty little break. That kept everything away from that opposite corner, too. That's what you want to see. Oh, I knew Barry would be loving this, of course, right? You get to see the mind of John Schmidt going to work. What a treat. What an absolute treat. Such a genius of the game. Uh, what am I? Uh, sorry, I'm just seeing the. Excuse me, there. I had my volume turned up. I'm just seeing the comments on the YouTube now. My apologies, there, Jeff. He wants a rundown of the Q and Q tip. So John's playing with the Predator Six Two Six P Three Edition. Beautiful Q. And he's shooting with the 12.4 Revo shaft with a Victory Soft tip. And also, he said a big thing for running lots of balls in straight pool is the town chalk. So I think that's a big one so that he's not getting skids. I tried it a couple days ago. I love it already. And I don't think you have to chalk as much because it does hold quite well on the on the Q-tip. Oh, he was probably trying to run into the cluster there. He didn't get it. Can he cut the eight? No, he cannot. So he's going to bank the six. And if he makes it, he's got a real chance. Oh, you overcut it by a lot. A lot. I just can't get him to break right. I'm trying to get that cue like ball it. nice. He ran. He just clump up on me. He ran like two of the first three doing They're this. They're clumping up. All right. Um, Let's try one inning of straight pull, Benji. I'll mix it up. Back to some straight pull. I like it. I like it. And then I'll go like. back to my the game I like to torture myself with. One pocket goes. <laughs> uh, I will say hi to him for you, Barry. Actually, I already did. I already did. I told him uh, that you were here for a bit, and and he said to say hi back. He remembers you, of course. Nope, he's not missing lefty shots. <laughs> uh, Lawrence says, I missed the sickest shot about 30 minutes ago. John hops a cue into the 10 and jumps the 10 half table over two balls. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and watch it, Lawrence. Uh, Steph, I'd love to get Grant to call you, but he's not here. But I will get him to call you when I see him. Yeah, not messy, Jeff. That chalk. God, his pockets are tight. That's what it seemed for me. Just trying it for a little bit. I wouldn't play with it at all if it was even a little bit messy. I hate messy chalk. It's one thing I was never a big fan of that Kamui chalk. It was a little too messy, and it, and it really stuck on the cue ball. He's 
he's motoring now. He's not missing many balls. I would expect him to put up some good numbers, you know. The eight leads to 14, so easy here. He's just got to play one good positional shot. Well, yeah, and the 13 leads to it as well, so. Or the 13 is his break ball. Easy. <sighs> okay. This one's spinning lots, though. He did not want this much angle. Now he's got to finesse this one. Finessed to perfection. Nice little out. Landed nice and low on that break ball, so he's going to get lots of movement. He'll get plenty of action going on this break shot. I'm sure these guys definitely don't prefer to come from underneath, but... But they make it work, right? Slight amount of feedback. Now this is a tough break like. shot. This is a high inside ball, but it's so backwards cut. I think I'm going to hit it high left and hope for the best. I can scratch right where I'm standing pretty easy with this one. Oh, yeah. He yep. almost called it perfect. See how that and left now, reverse is like that? Blocked. Golly, I hate straight pull. Mm. Oh, Ben, you should have seen the shot I whacked in earlier. I was at like 84, and I jumped a ball over another ball and made it, and then I got hooked or did something stupid. <laughs> it was pretty cool, though. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to go back and All right, watch I'm going to play it. the three here. I'm sure I'm going to regret it. Yeah, Raymond, I'm super pumped for it, too. Tomorrow's starting... Anybody else just tuning in? This is just the warm-up. Well, I'll tell you what. Look I was playing Peg a Lion back in 03, a $6,000 straight pool match. What shot yeah, was well, he Yeah, don't worry. There? This is the year I shot his nuts off playing straight pool. So I got this shot, and I'm about 70, and he's sitting right here. We're betting 6000 and I shoot a five, and he jumps out of his chair and looks at it, and I airmail this sucker in. And run 120 from there. It was just like, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. <laughs> oh, oh he knew goodness. the shot, I'm sure. I mean, there ain't nothing I'm going to teach him. Unbelievable. But, but I think he just looked at me like, are you really going to shoot that for that kind of money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. Well, that's a good, yeah. good story. Well, I'll tell you what. You want to you wanna talk about a wild match, Ben? Listen to this. So this is 03. You want to finish the story or no? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. No. Um. So anyway, we decide to play a, a thousand point game, 200 points, on a diamond, and I win 200 like 80. Okay. So now we bet 3,000, 200 points, and I win. This isn't the story where I win. Most people only tell the stories where they win, but this is a doozy. So now we bet 3,000, and I win 200 to like 110. Now we bet 4,000 and we go to 300 points and I'll never forget it how I blow this game. I'm ahead 273 to 173 and it comes down to where I need two. I'm up 8,000 if I get two and I get stuck in the stack like this and I try to cut this ball in and it hangs. He jumps out of his chair and twists his ankle when he lands. So he's like hobbling and he's got to run like 28 to win this money. I kid you not, this is what happens. He gets up and shows a ton of heart like he always does. And he runs all the way out and he gets down to the very end. I'll, I'll tell you, like 500 people watch this. If they ever tell you the story, it, it'll match what I'm saying to you. He needs two. And he goes like this. He cuts it. Well, it was thicker than that. He cuts this in. And when he shot it, the cue ball hit this ball. And it comes over here and goes like this. And he goes, oh, my God. And he falls on the ground because he thought he scratched. And everybody, so he gets up, and he's almost cornered. He needs one, and I need two for 4,000. And he's got this. And he can just see the ball and, and makes the ball. 
Unbelievable. I'll tell you, it, it was the damnedest thing I've ever been involved in. I didn't sleep right or eat right for like two days. It was so <laughs> sickening. I, I, instead of being 8,000 winner, you know, I'm even. Yeah, that's uh, a good one. Yeah, he's a heck of a player. I'll tell you that. Uh, yeah, he's a he's our favorite. If I make those two balls, though, whoo, he'd have been hating life. That's great. Oh, man. Man, this table's too tough for the straight pull. It's just mm -hmm. too tough. I'm doing the best I can. But an 80-ball run on this is like, I feel like I'm running 300 or something. Yeah, it's very, very tough table for a straight pull, this one. It's playing tight. So if you guys are just tuning in, this is day two of six days. And so yesterday and today spent on the predator table here three and a quarter inch pockets just warming up this is the practice days and tomorrow he'll be taking a run on the five inch pocket gold crown he'll have four days to try to beat that record 714 he wants to retake it of course we'd love to have him do it and i'm sweating like i'm playing football Whew. <laughs> god John's got the the meat sweats from being yeah, overfed. Yeah, about it. <laughs> He's been eating good at Grant Steffs, that's for sure. Oh, let's see. He's still playing straight pool. Let's, let's reset this. Let's reset this score. This is his first rack. I wasn't sure if he might switch back to the one pocket. So just uh just him practicing. Yeah, Brent, gotta love the gotta love the stories, man. The road stories are the best. These guys, they got stories for days. That's my favorite part about hanging out with these guys. Wow. <laughs> John's got many, many stories. From all the greats, you know, he's been around them all, he's beat them all. I believe the year he wins the Derby City one pocket. I believe he played Efren in the final. That's a good story. Anytime you got to play Efren some one pocket and you came out on top for a title, that's a fun one. Forty one professional titles throughout his career. Oh, not low enough on this break ball. I think he wanted to be quite a bit lower. So we'll see what he can do with it. He might just be chipping the corner here. Can't be in love with that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that was one heck of a match. He's working hard out there, too. That cannot be underrated. This is you know, pretty much four hours because he was in here an hour before. Hitting a few balls, just getting his eyes right. Probably had a little bite to eat. This oh. is the one I scratched on yesterday. Scratched in the side yesterday. Now he pounded through it last time and went one rail in the in the opposite top corner. It was gross. Super unlucky. He's a great player. What's up, Dale Smith? Thanks for tuning in. Everybody else tuning in. If you guys can share that stream for us, that'd be fantastic. Appreciate it. John's still got some 
great pool left in him today. I can guarantee you all that. That 126 that he ran yesterday wasn't until about hour four. And he's into hour four now, so. Let's see what he's got left in the tank. He put in six and a half hours straight yesterday. Just hit balls the entire time. I don't even think he took a sip of his water. I did see him take one sip of water today. <laughs> but it's like, no washroom break, no sit down. When this guy's hitting balls, he's hitting balls. It's a robot. Thank you, Dale, for sharing. Share that stream up, guys. Go to spin on that ball. I love these Predator balls. They spin super nice. They play exactly the way these balls are supposed to play. Super slippery cloth. And I hear this cloth wears very slow, so that's a good sign. I think once people give it some time, they're going to they're gonna love it. That's the full Predator setup here that John's playing on after another well worked out there. Perfect shape on the break ball. Yeah, we got the Predator table, the Predator cloth, Predator balls, and the Predator arena light. Beautiful little setup here. We got another setup just like this one coming. No, I'm okay. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Almost identical. The service here is great, too. The girls, they come around and ask you if you need something all the time. and It's really, uh, really a well-run pool room. But not too often. She was careful to sneak in there in between racks and quietly ask from the side. All right. 28. Oh, there's a snack happening. Unbelievable, this guy. He does need fuel for the machine. <laughs> What's he got here? Wow. A window. He had the window. That was the wow. He's playing good. He's starting to pick it up a little. I think this is going to be the, the high Almost run Almost got today. lazy there and just shot the First eight. big He's high run. Outside the table. Yeah, see, he wanted to shoot that ball to, to clear some lanes. For later on, clear the path for other balls. Plenty of break ball options here, so he's not going to be shy about shooting that and moving some balls. He's got other break balls. Even this, I think, would be a little low. He's still got to develop a couple more, so he's going to take the opportunity now. Jesse, these are four and a quarter inch pockets. So if you're just tuning in, John's doing two days of warm up yesterday and today on the four and a quarter inch predator table. And tomorrow he'll be moving over to the five inch gold crown set up for the world record attempt. He'll have four days at the world record attempt. From what I hear, he's gonna play Wednesday through Saturday. Is he coming too far here? A touch, touch too far. I think he can pinch this one and hold it. Ah, he just comes around, good shot. Get a siding on that ball. Nice little shot. Yeah, that's correct, Felicity. The, the Predator pockets on the table we're watching here, they're, they are four and a quarter. They're quite tight too, they're tight four and a quarter. Ooh, I'm getting hungry. I'm getting tired. This, I'm going to have to really bear down here. Getting hungry, getting tired. Got to bear down. All right. That's like, this is why you practice like this sometimes too, is so you get used to those situations when they come up in a tournament, you know? 42. So now you're feeling a little bit of pressure, and you're feeling a little hungry, a little tired, and you need to train yourself to overcome it. And that's why this kind of practice is such good training. I hope you guys are 
really enjoying this. Uh, yes, James, the, the gold crown has the same cloth. It's super slick, brand new. That's exactly how John wants it for these high runs. Okay. So the balls are going to be super clean. We're going to have somebody racking for them for the majority of it. And we're going to give them every chance we can to help them out. I'd love to see them do it here. That would absolutely make my pool playing days so far <laughs> to see them do it here in my home room. Might be shooting a long shot here. It's two ball straight up to the long corner. Plenty of balls nearby to be on, so no panic in that stroke. A couple of break balls there, so pick off this three because he's got the 12 nearby. I like it, getting in a rhythm here. It's gonna shoot the 14 to clear the lane for the 12. You don't wanna be saving that 14 to last, that's for sure. Shoots it, comes back and forth. Needs it to slow down a touch. He's perfect. He'd love to be shooting the eight as his key ball. That's such a good key ball to get on the break ball. Yeah, and that's just about perfect. He'd love it rolled in another ball width so he could just roll this in, but this is fine. This is absolutely fine. A little bit more angle would have been great, but he's okay. He can chip this in, get a few out, continue the run. Nice little four rack run there, 56. Yeah, for sure, Clark, I'm always down for some games. Absolutely. Uh, the record Kurt Smith on the Predator table is 126. <laughs> as far as we know, nobody else has really tried it. The record on four and a quarter inch pockets, John holds the record at 309 balls. And I believe the record was 294 or 296 for a, quite a long time before that, which he also held. So four and a quarter inch diamond table, 309 is the high run. I think he's got a 200 in him today still, as long as he keeps playing it and doesn't get you know too worn out, obviously. I don't know how much he's got left in him after the session he put in yesterday, but, but I do think he's got a 200 ball run in him on this table. And as you can see, he's starting to feel it a little. He's spearing those break balls in. He's getting good spread. Like, look at the size of the spread on that break. God, That's I hate what those you shots. Want to see. <laughs> it looks so damn missable. Nobody likes that shot. James wants to know how often are the balls going well, to they be are missable. Cleaned, you know? I think he said, they like, are so damn around missable. 100 balls kind of thing. Just change out the balls. So we'll, we'll mark the cue ball. Mark the cue ball good. And then we'll change out all the balls for a clean set. As John was saying, uh, super clean pool room here. This is this is something that a lot of the players like. A lot of the players come here and practice because they love how clean the conditions are. Nice little shot there, chip the six. So now he's got another break ball option. I think this 13 ball, the stripe that's closest to us on the camera, I think that'll be his break ball. But these camera angles are hard to tell how low that ball is. But uh, as a reference from a diamond, you get a general idea of how low that ball is. It's not too low, I think it's very usable. And the one is a nice key ball. So I 
think that would be the plan here. The 15 is also a nice key ball to get to the 6, so... Interested to see what he does here. Lawrence, no problem, no problem. These numbers are hard to remember. A guy like Johnny's obviously very good at remembering these numbers. I believe he has four runs over, no, eight runs over 400. I believe. But he's, you know, got to be all about the stats. When you're you're playing this game, you're trying to remember numbers and and stuff like that for the high runs. Beautiful out there, really well controlled, perfect angle on the break ball, nice and close. A clean 70 ball run if I ever saw one. If he can keep doing that. Then there's no reason he can't run 200 today because that was a really clean 70 balls Never really seemed to be in trouble All right, Felicity. Yes, I'm getting better at this. Thank you for confirming that. Hey, Pat. How you doing, bud? <laughs> I've always been a big John Schmidt fan, so But even for me, it's tough to remember all the numbers because I'm out here trying to remember my own numbers, too. <laughs> But I do know a lot of a lot of John's big accomplishments, of course. I did mention a few. US Open nine ball, of course, was one that we all followed when we were kids growing up watching pool. So recognize John right away, but it kinda has that style, it's easy to watch. You know, it's not slow at all. It's very quick. Which is to me, much easier to watch than a, than a slower player. And it's like he has all the shots. He does all the stuff, you know. And super nice guy. You, you could tell even on TV and stuff, right? Uh, easy to be a fan of. But uh, some of the other good accomplishments. Uh, super Billiard Expo 10 ball. Two-time Moscone Cup. Derby City one pocket. 41 professional titles. That's a lot. You could list them for a while. We could be here for the rest of the night. <laughs> uh, James wants to know, are there any other good books on straight pool besides straight pool Bible? that John has recommended. Uh, I, I haven't asked him if he's recommended any straight pool books yet. But there are some, some great pool books out there for sure. I'm still reading some. A friend of mine actually gave me three pool books the other day. I couldn't quote them off, off heart. I'm sure I could after I read them. But uh, I'm looking forward to reading some of those long drive to Vegas. So. Yeah, well, and thank you, Gord, for tuning in, of course, to all the viewers tuning in. That's part of, part of why we had John come out. Of course, if you guys didn't tune in and watch something like this, then we would never bring John in, and, and it would never be a thing, so... You guys are to thank as well, but we appreciate it, Gord. Uh, Joshua, yeah, for sure, I would say. I would. He wouldn't even be here. He, he made a good point, too, actually. He said to me, because he knows I'm an aspiring player, too. He said, it's important to play good, but it's important to be a good person, too. So if you're out there being that that guy that nobody likes, then then it's not going to be, you're not going to get invited to stuff like this. You know what I mean? 
so and you're not going to be treated well like Grant and Steph have them staying at, well, at their house because Grant took a liking to him in Vegas because John right is a this really seven. nice guy that's that's a genuine <sighs> statement so think God. how many balls did he have left there he had four balls left so it was an 81 ball run 81 you know what, Ben, what's going to happen? It reminds me of a, a quick little thing a guy told me. Like, I got to leave on the 22nd. I can't go to that Edmonton event. And you guarantee when you go over there, you're going to hear this. Oh, man, I wish John would have came here. I would have played him some, right? It reminds me of a time this highway patrolman pulls over these two guys. Driver's license, registration, please. The one guy gets an attitude. And the highway patrolman just smokes him right in the jaw. Walks around the other side of the car and smokes that guy in the jaw. And the guy goes, I didn't do nothing. Why'd you hit me? He goes, because I know three miles down the road, you just said, if that punk cop would have hit me, I would have blah, blah, blah. That's what's going to happen at the tournament. I wish John was here. I would have busted him. <laughs> no. Nope. I think they know. You guys don't get a chance to skin me alive. I'll be back in Southern Cal. What are you talking about? I, I would have liked to play in that tournament. I heard... Brian Butler has a really nice place there, and I've known Brian a long time. I think um, it would have been fun to play. Nobody was talking about Earl. Well, Nobody was talking about anybody being yeah. like that. So just yeah, that's right, keep right? it reasonable, Joshua. Nobody's. Let's try the one bucket ghost again. I can't take no more of the straight pull. It's going to make me freak out. Yeah, back to one bucket. Look at this. I mean, come on, man. Back to some one pocket, Ghost, he says. I was really hoping he'd stick with the straight pool. Short stop on straight pool. Brian, I'll have to check that out, too. I love pool books. John's going to go back to trying to run 15 balls into one pocket if you guys are just tuning in. John's just practicing on the four and a quarter inch pockets. Getting warmed up for his world record attempts, which are going to start tomorrow. And run through to Saturday. So this is kind of like uh, look inside John's practice sessions, you know? So he plays this one pocket ghost to keep him self-entertained. He finds this the most challenging, I believe. So 15 balls into one pocket. Yeah. Yeah, I like Brady. I haven't seen him in a long time. He's a great guy. Yeah, Mark Wilson's book. Yeah, of course, Clark. I'm sure John would recommend Mark Wilson's book. He's actually doing some clinics with Mark. He's going on the road. I have a friend that's uh, actually going to one of those clinics, so. And I'm sure he'll tell me all the same things that I told him is he's going to love John. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've heard nothing but great things about what Mark Wilson does, too. But I know John's a good teacher. I got to see it firsthand. He's very good at what he does. Uh, should be noon tomorrow, Mike. This, I think as long as everything this, goes I think to plan. I need it. I, you know what? I brought this template. And it's, I think it's no good. I mean, look at these balls. They're just not, when they're frozen, they're supposed to move better than that. I'm the one that brought it. I'm the one that brought it, he says. <laughs> so I'm not sure if we're going to reuse those or if he has more that we're going to stick on to the gold crown. Hopefully we have more. Those are tough to reuse, I think. Uh, Quentin's reading One Pocket, A Game of Controlled Aggression by Tom Worth. I'll have to check that out, too. I love pool books. One Pocket book was, is right up my alley because 
I feel like I can really learn that game. Probably more than most games. Probably the game I know the least about. It can be a little tough to watch too, like let's be honest. One Pocket Ghost is fantastic to watch. Trying to watch John run 15 balls in there is fantastic, but watching a match can get a little slow, right? Yeah, Gord, of course. We appreciate your support, pal. And we'll always help you out however we can, too. We love Rod. Of course, he's been around since early days of CSL, and he's a super go-getter, man. That guy really loves it. I'm surprised he would even flirt with those balls sitting there, you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't even leave them that close. Look at the juice on that ball. Look at the siding. I love that. And thank you, Eric, for tuning in, pal. I super enjoy watching John play, too. So when Grant said to me, oh, John's going to come spend a few weeks here in Calgary, I was blown away. I'm like, you're messing with me, right? Because <laughs> Grant knows that's like my Man, favorite player, on, one of my favorite on, players, man. right? does he do here? What's his, what's his shot? A super thin one rail bank. That's what he's doing. Oh, get in there. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Just ninja cuts the one rail bank. Cue ball goes eight rails. Object ball goes that one rail. That was pretty sick there. <laughs> that was interesting. Two, three, four. Let's see like... Five. I know. <laughs> the cue ball went six rails, I think. That's how hard he had to hit that and miss the double kiss. Like there was there was a couple of double kisses possible there. <laughs> yeah, Quinn, I love the game too. It, it it can get a little dull for me. Maybe I just gotta stick with it more, watch a little more. Maybe as I get a little better at it too, but Yeah, what well, a show off, yeah. <laughs> Quite the shot. That was another 15 and out. I think that's his third one of the day. See how many he can stack up. He said his best is four in a row. His best score out of five games is 73 balls. 73 balls out of five games. That's some unreal stuff. There ain't nobody in the world that's getting that. John's always been that kind of player, you know, with the with the straight pool high runs. It's like there's very select few people that can do what he does and do it consistently. And it's obviously taken a lot of very dedicated practice as we've seen over the course of the last day and a half is this guy when he gets going he is hitting a lot of balls this is super impressive to see how many balls he's hitting definitely really good uh, physical stamina as well as mental stamina because it can get a little boring to try to practice. It definitely can. Sometimes you just want to have an opponent, you know, so you can sit down in between shots. He's doing real well out there. Just drilling balls in. Can he get a two in a row here, or is this going to slow down for him? I think he needs it to slow down. He wanted that combo, right? This one. 12-10 well, combo. If he makes this, he's got a real chance again. No. No. 
Still pretty good, though. If you look, there's only five balls up, so that means he's got 25 balls in two innings. 25 of a possible 30 is unreal. Yeah, it's nice to listen to him explain it for sure, too, right? I'll have to look into that too, Brian. Yeah, he's got a string on that cue ball. That's absolutely right. Hey, Donna. Or possibly TJ. Just watching John. If you guys are just tuning in, we're watching him try to run 15 balls into one corner. He's running into that bottom right corner as we're looking on the screen. Playing the one pocket ghost. This is just his warm up for his high run attempts. We'll be starting tomorrow, his straight pool high runs. And he does have a stack of pretty good runs over 50 in the last two days but this table is very hard to run more than 100 balls on good shot there another good chance Mike wants to know, have I had the privilege of playing any quick sets eight, nine, or ten ball yet? I played John some one pocket, we played a race to three. And he, he played unreal. Put a whooping on me. I held my own a little bit at the start. I did manage to win one game. I got spanked the other three games. <laughs> Board says, don't forget about Chan Dalton, Dennis Orko, Scott Frost, Roberto Gomez, Alex Pegaline. They're all one world one class. World class one pocket players, sorry. Yeah, of course, uh, there's lots more. There's Tony Chohan, uh, Francisco Bustamante, obviously Efren. And Eric, no, I haven't read Stan Shuffett's CTE, but I heard it was really good. Really, really good. God, I hit it too. I had to hit that ball. He did chip uh. that ball nicely. You see how he got that ball out in the open, then he had a real chance he was gonna shoot the eight and probably float over onto that ball. And he's got three 15 ball runs today. Playing this one pocket ghost. The last one was real good. couple minutes ago there keep stretching it out probably getting a little tight they've been playing a lot the last two days Danny Smith, too. Yeah, I had the pleasure of playing Danny once years ago. Fantastic player. So many talented one-pocket players out there, of course. Chip Compton. Like, the list just goes on and on. Oh, yeah, for sure, Mike. I was pretty happy. I, I kind of got lucky. I broke and a ball went over my hole. He chipped it in a couple of safeties later around seven. But I've played this game a little bit, this little one pocket ghost game so I do know how to run some balls once I get in them once I get in the balls although I've never ran 15 on the diamond nine foot John makes it sound and look easy <laughs> he said once I know the strategy a little then I'll be able to figure it out but I don't know it's tough it's real tough I've ran 15 on a seven foot a handful of times couple of times should say not a handful less than a handful 
<laughs> would be a better way to put it. <laughs> uh, Eric says he gets lessons from Mark once a year, and he's endorsed to teach the CTE. A combination of both styles makes crazy good bull player. Well, yeah, interesting for sure. I know I've heard of lots of players taking and using that CTE, and of course, Stan Shuffett, one of the geniuses of it. Yeah, the, and sorry guys if you're just tuning in again. The title, it says 14-1. John is just practicing. So it's a little of 14-1, a little of one pocket ghost. And so he got a little tired of the 14-1, so now he's moved on to the, to the one pocket ghost. We might see a little mix of both still today. He'll switch back and forth, so we'll change the title up top on our scoreboard according to what he's doing. And we got Grant back. I am back. All right. Back in action. High run on a nine foot is only a 42 bar table, 68. Yeah, it, it's Ben, I'm going to put hard. you on the spot here in a minute. He's going to put me you, on the spot. You might have to come out here and play me a set of one hole here in a minute. I'll play him a set of one <laughs> That's hole. That's a game I can play when I'm a little worn out. <laughs> Joe Spence is probably licking his chops thinking, right. I'll jump in. <laughs> But How's I imagine going today? while he, he's had a couple of runs, nothing over 100. He's had a couple that were, I like think 86 was the high run. He's had a couple like 70s. It's been tough today, but to be expected after he played for six and a half hours without taking a sip of water yesterday. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so he's been switching back and forth, but I... He's playing really good. He's potting well. He's had three uh, 15 ball outs playing the ghost, and he's only played maybe 10 racks of it. Holy. So he's hitting the ball really good. Just, you know, balls aren't really rolling his way for the high runs and straight <laughs> pull on a tough table today, right? But it's still early. Well, it can, uh, it can happen. Sometimes you just don't get, uh, get the rolls in your favor, and especially with this table. That's right. Right? This is... Uh, this is meant to be a tough table. Mm -hmm. But if you uh, if you do appreciate what John's attempting to do, uh, I just pinned up his uh, his GoFundMe account. Show him a little love. Yeah, he'll be taking a hundred percent of that. Just a little uh, little extra so he can cover some expenses, and you know he's got a eat and drink coconut water and stuff while he's here so there are expenses involved in doing this you can't be eating tomahawk steaks at grant's every night you know sometimes you gotta, you gotta buy a little food <laughs> gotta feed him a little bit but we're hoping it's very successful and that he makes a few bucks so that he comes back we'd love to see him back yeah and that's uh that's certainly part of uh, what we have talked about tomorrow he moves on to the gold crown table and uh, that's where he does his attempt for the world record. And uh, we've talked about it. And if he doesn't accomplish that on this trip, we may have him back just before the Canada Open. In August. Mm -hmm. So every little bit helps, guys. Even if you can only donate, you know, five bucks or something, every little bit helps. And hopefully we'll see him back soon, you know. If it's successful, you know, and the table good. conditions are nice, they are which really they nice. are, yep. then he will come back. Absolutely. He's already said he'll come back. Nice shot there to make that other ball, but he's still in big trouble. Can the 11 bank pass that 8 ball, do you think? It can, but then, yeah, like the 8's a nightmare too, right? So he's it in is. big trouble. He'd almost rather, like, find a shot on the 8, because then you can bank the 11 pretty easy, right? Ah. He's made... No room. There but was no room. The last time he got out, he's like banking a ball that's here. And the cue ball, I counted the rails after. Cue ball went six rails side to side and just missed the double kiss. And he made the long rail bank on the last ball for the 15 and out. Yep. But they were telling me when I had to go get Ryder from school, they said that he jumped a ball over a ball. Holy. 
and he's like slammed it like he had to hit it hard the cue ball went high and like <laughs> it's quite interesting i gotta i gotta i gotta take a two-minute break and tell you guys some something just make up story here before you do that um gord the link to that gofundme is just above q sports live made a comment i thought i pinned it but yeah it says it's pinned <sighs> yeah but it doesn't uh, appear to be pinned so just above I guess I could probably uh, paste it again, maybe. If you missed it, here it is. Oh. Boy, this this has got me so tuned in, so dialed in. That's good. I mean, I'm worn out, but I'm really tuned in. Like, you can't fake that. You have to play for a couple of days to get it. Have you guys, you guys have played a lot of pool. Have you guys ever played a match against somebody where you never hit a single ball and won money? That's a tough one to talk. <laughs> Can't I, say. I would, you, no, I was up. How, in, does, how does that happen? Let's, Felicity let's might be it. listening. She was with me on this. And I'll, I'll shorten this down. But basically, I'm in Tri-Cities, Washington, playing a bar table tournament with about 30 people. And things are going my way. And I'm in the finals. Well, this guy, and, you know, it, was, you know, it wasn't like a champions there. But it was good players. So I'm in the finals. And this guy walks up. Can you see me on camera here? Can they see Not me? Not to that oh, one. You have to go to the Predator one. So I'm, I'm shooting on this bar table, and this guy comes up and stands right here like this. And he's staring at me, and there's like 30 people watching. And he looks at me, and he goes, I'm not impressed. <laughs> I said, why don't you bet 1,000? I'll try to impress you, right? He, he says this to me. So now I, I win the tournament. He sees that I won the tournament. And he goes, he goes I want to play you one game for 80, playing an eight ball on a bar table, one game for 80 bucks. And I'm trying to play like a race to three because I know one game a plumber could beat me, right? So I said, I said, well, okay. So he goes and gets the money. He comes up. We go to flip the coin. And I said, and, and he won the break. And I said, if you scratch on the break, do I win? He goes, yeah. He flies it off the <laughs> table, hands me 80. He goes over, gets another 80, comes back. We flip, and I win the break. Now I'm getting ready to break. And my wife is probably listening to this. She was there with me. It was funny. He, and I go, do you want do you want the break? And he goes, yeah. So now he takes the break, and I said, if you scratch on the break, I win, right? So this son of a bitch scratches right in the side and hands me another eighty, and goes, believe me, dude, you can't beat me. He says this to me, and there's like thirty people in the room, right, that he could have asked to play. I don't know. I, I've played a million money matches in my life, but the one I remember the most, right there, like I never hit a single shot, and to this day. He has no idea, like, how stupid he looked. It was great. <laughs> that was up at Players, Players oh Sports God. Bar in Tri-Cities, Washington. That, That's awesome. Oh, it was great. I never hit a single shot. That's great. I got to tell people that story. That's super funny. Oh, you know what? Oh I got the God. story wrong. It was an 80 a game. Now I think about it. It was 160 a game. He played me two games. It was 320. <laughs> I, but anyway, I never hit a shot. Believe me, you can't beat me. I'm that's, getting old. My memory's hilarious. going. Never hit a ball and won the cheese. For 320, you gotta <laughs> love it. Nobody walks up to me and gives me 320 bucks. Oh, you hear this one. Schmidt jumps a ball. Jumped the cue ball over LJ's ball, hitting the lip of the pocket on diamond and kicked the ball out. He did it twice in that set. Holy. Schmidt, I wonder if he remembers that. Yeah, right? 20 years ago. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Holy cow. Man, can I, tell, can I tell a quick C.J. Wiley story? You can tell okay. as many stories as you want. Break, so let me just run my mouth. I can't make any balls. We anyway. love stories. So I, uh, I, I get lucky and I win the U.S. Open in 06. And as you know, if you win a big tournament, it's a dream to get a Q sponsor. So OBQs calls me, says, drive out to Dallas, and, and we want to talk business. We might put you on the team, right? That was a big deal for me. So I drive 700 miles looking into the sun, and I climb out of the car, and I walk in the pool room there in Dallas, and I'm talking to OB, the OB guys. And this bald-headed dude walks up to me, big guy, sleeveless shirt, and it's kind of dark. Now, I've just won the U.S. Open. I'm playing pretty good pool, right? I'm not used to just strangers barking at me. This guy walks up to me, and he goes, he goes, hey, man, you want to play some? I go, well, I'm kind of in a meeting here. And he goes, well, if you're scared, you know, just say you're scared. <laughs> and I was like, I could get unscared real quick to play you. And I looked, and I went, CJ? Because he'd shaved his head. 
he didn't look like me and I play CJ back in the day. So now he's, he's woofing to me, right? I probably shouldn't say who did this, but a guy in the pool room pulls me off to the side and he goes, are you in stroke? I go, well, not really. I mean, I've been, you know, celebrating my win and working on the house. And he goes, he goes, well, I don't think CJ can beat you. Here's 5,000. So he gives me 5,000. Now, you know, the trick to these, these Eagle maniac pros and CJ is an Eagle maniac. Okay. And I hope he's listening. CJ says, well, if you're scared, say you're scared. And that pissed me off. So now I walk back out there and I go, hey, uh, CJ, what do you want to do? And I make sure to ask him from like 30 feet away so he can't like quietly go, oh, no, I, you know. I said, what do you want to do? He goes, I, he goes, I want to play 10 ahead for 2,000. Now, there's about 100 people sweating this conversation. And I go, no, nah, no, nah, you're, you're way too good a player to play that cheap. I'll play a set for 10,000. You could have heard a pin drop, right? So he agrees. So we're going to play the next day. And he walks in the next day all Patrick swayze out with the leopard skin, silk, sleeveless, and boots and stuff. And, I mean, all of Dallas is there to watch this match. So he starts in on me. As you can tell, I'm not a giant CJ fan. He threatened to kill me because I said the world's round. Okay, so anyway, that's a whole nother rabbit hole. But he, uh, <laughs> so he starts in front of everybody. He goes, he goes we have to play at least 13 hours. We got to play 13 hours. That's a long time to play. I mean, I've been playing five hours here. I'm about to drop dead. So I say, okay, we'll play 10 ahead nine ball for 10,000, 13 hours. I can't quit until it's 13 hours. So we flip the coin and I beat him 10 ahead in about 48 minutes. And he, oh yeah, a live stream, the whole nine yards. Beat him 10 ahead in 48 minutes. He doesn't say a word, just shakes my hand. And now the guy staking me says, man, I'm so glad you beat him, obviously, because he's staking me. He goes, when you left yesterday, CJ turns to the crowd and goes, after I beat this moron even, I'm going to give him the eight and stick it up his ass. I've just won the U.S. Open, you know. Like, I don't think I'm quite a moron wow. on a pool table. So that, that's, so I heard that. I was just like, oh, man. So anyway, that's one of my CJ moments I'll, like, never forget. <laughs> Ten ahead in 48 minutes. How you like that there, Patrick Swayze? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, those stories are great. Yeah, good, Road stories. Yeah, we got Alex one earlier, too. Really oh, here's Alex the one. part of it. I forgot. I see him in Mobile, Alabama at a tournament about two months later, and I walk up to him, and he gives me, like, he goes, get away from me before you get hurt. I'm thinking, he goes, I know what you did to me in Dallas. I'm thinking, yeah, I beat you 10 ahead in an hour. He goes, he goes you siliconed up the balls. <laughs> I never touched the balls. The house man cleaned them, so they went from dirty to clean, and he thought I pulled some move. And So, yeah, he's <laughs> – he says straight pull 626 was easy because I didn't have an opponent. I think his high run's like 42 or something. <laughs> C.J. Wiley. He's got a lot of great road stories, though. C.J.'s got some good road stories, too, yeah. Yeah. Lots of, lots of ones that Poole doesn't need to hear about yeah, either. I'm, right? sure, I'm sure. <laughs> I am sure. No. They could make a movie about these guys. It wouldn't all be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to go three rails and into the three ball. Good luck with this. Oh, man, I got to make the bank. I want it slid. Huge off the second round. I should have anyway. kept telling stories. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna grab a drink. Yeah, by all means. I could. I should have brought one over for you. Yeah, Eric, I would jump forty. Proud of my forty-two. Believe me, if I could run forty-two, I'd be a happy man as well. Although I, I, I don't think that I've ever tried a single. Hey, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give the gamblers out there a little uh, sage advice here. I'm gonna tell you the, the pool story that seriously made me quit gambling, betting my own money. Because people say I'm a nit and I have no heart, no gamble. They're right. <laughs> okay, and this is the one that cured me. I was in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, in oh, I think it was oh four or oh five. And I had my life savings with me. I had 14000 with me. I was in my motorhome with my ex-wife, and we're traveling around, and, I'm, and I was doing good. 
I played a set for 40000 with Tony Watson and won and got my cut. and all. So I've got some money. And this is my life savings I got. So I'm playing a guy named Little John, John Macias. He's the best player in Mississippi. He'll love this story because he'll, he'll remember it. They brought it up on here where you hit the back of the pocket twice to bring his ball up. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, it was an he epic match. Yeah, but check this match out. So I, I'm in Mississippi, which can be rough if you think you're a tough guy. It's rough, right? And I'm at a pool room. Uh, I think it was called Snake's Palace. Sounds real friendly, right? <laughs> and so, uh, anyway, I'm playing him 11-7, 12-7, 500 a game. And we play for like eight hours, and I'm maybe one game ahead. We bump it to 800 a game. Maybe I'm even. I can't remember on that part. I just remember it being like a battle. So now we go to 1,000 a game, and we're about even. I'm betting my own. This is like the most money I've bet on my own at that time in my life. And my wife, my ex-wife, whenever she'd get nervous, she'd just turn, like, splotchy red. So she's just sitting there, like, freaking out. And I got 14 dimes on me, right? I'm betting, like, pretty high here. So now we go to 2,000 a game, and I instantly start panicking. And I'm giving this guy a giant spot on a wet diamond. It's a tough table. He can't run the balls. So long story short, I am freaking out and dogging my brains out, and I get down 8,000. I get down 8,000. And so now... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose the next game. He needs one ball, and I need, like, 13, and I'm already down 8,000. And he has a shot like this into his pocket, and I'm over here like this counting my, my last 2,000. And my wife's going, are you just going to lose all our money? Like, we got to eat. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, like, I'm trying. Okay. No, but <laughs> so, like, I'm like, no, I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit after this game. And it's so sick to blow 10 grand betting your own. You know, Ben. And so – I watch him shoot this out ball. He misses it. So I put the 2,000 back in my pocket, and I battle for like an hour, and I somehow win the game. Now, I don't know how long it was, but it was like daylight. Now, about eight or nine hours later, I got all the way back to even and up 4,000 on him, and I'm in the bathroom counting the money. He wants to play one game for 1,200, and I won't do it, and it gets kind of hostile. It's like me against 20 of them. So I tell my wife to go get the motor home with my Mossberg 12-gauge in it because I'm, I'm going to get beat up and robbed for all this money, obviously. And, she, and so she swings the motor home around, and I dash for the motor home, talk on my way out the door, and go to bed with 18000 I was 4000 winner, and I have not gambled since then because I was going to blow, like, probably all our money. You know, wow. I mean, it's, I'm telling you, when people say you have no gamble, I'm like, oh, I used to. <laughs> I used to, and it's too stressful, man. It'll, it'll freak you out. He's a good player, too, that little John. Giving him 11-7, 12-7 was tough game. I bet you I was only two games winner after, like, 20 hours. Jackson give that man a creamsicle. Could you imagine the stories that you could uh, you could get out of him if we were to feed him a couple of those creamsicles? Well, well, Grant, I mean, you know, there, there's people that like to bring up losses, and I'll be the first to talk about the losses. Like, I lost a set to Richie Richardson one time, six ahead, right? It's really bothered me because people are like, well, you can't beat Richie. But they don't know that I played Richie another time and beat him 32 games ahead playing even one pocket. I'm absolutely stealing playing that guy. In his prime, he had no chance. But because I got up on live stream and lost a short little set, I'm a donkey. And they like to bring that up. You know, they don't mention the 8,000 wins. It's yeah, like, right. Oh, pull something. You're only as good as your last uh, loss, you know. Whew, what kind of time is it? Uh, what is it, about 4 o'clock? 4 o'clock. All right, let me, uh, let me shut up and bear down for one more hour. Maybe I can get on a run here. Okay. And, uh get lucky are you close. doing uh straight I'll, pull do, or? I'll do straight pull and try to close out with a decent run here i like it let's do it i got all fired up talking the old day i sound like al bundy talking about the old days <laughs> the high school glory days
confused now that he's done all the talking. I'm not sure what oh, to say. God, right? how, what do I, uh, shot. <laughs> how do I follow up any any kind of story with what he just uh, treated us to? Nice little bump. That gets rid of one of the problems. Nice shot there. That rubs that, breaks that out. Pool stories are awesome, especially on the road. The road yeah, stories, like a good shot. as much as uh, as much as John and and CJ obviously uh, have some past and history. I I certainly like his stories. What is the best advice you could give all the viewers? Keep tuning in. And not just on Q Sports Live, right? Any uh, any stream that's out there, they're doing good things for pool. Uh, it's a great way to learn the game. Uh, it's, you know, straight pool, one pocket, they're a little bit harder to commentate on um, as opposed to uh, eight ball, nine ball, 10 ball, ah, any of those. Overran um, my mark. But, um, you know, keep watching. You'll uh, eventually you'll pick up, you know, some good pattern play, some breakout ideas, different shot attempts, all those types of things. Um, that would be my best advice, not just with Q Sports Live, but really any live Golly. stream that's out there. We got to do that to run a rack. That's not good. Yeah, ain't that the truth, eh, Mike? I don't know that he ever did go back. And I gotta force this a little bit. He's gonna have to put uh, put a little something, something. <laughs> uh, he's got that into the side, I believe. Gonna have to have a lot of chips on that pack. Not in love with it. Those uh, those side pockets look real skinny from there. to him off this five ball just doesn't want to get stuck because that 15 is away from the pack oh he hit a great what a good shot he's got a 7 15 combination he may have the 12 6 i believe it's the 12 6 anyway things are looking good on this rack And you know what? I forgot to mark up his score. This is uh, his second rack. A really nice shot there, too. Sure does pinch that ball really well off that rail. Little John still plays real well, gets into crease often. I've never met him to be honest.
a little straight there. Ah, yeah, I was going to say. I was going to say that looked a little bit straight. Well, that's got a scratch scratch angle if I've ever seen one. <laughs> yeah, let's see if we can get you a look down that rail so you have an idea of what what he's talking about. Pound into that seven and off that pack. Send that cue ball right direct into that right-hand side corner. Or potential of it anyway. Well, he gets one of them out of there. That's not half bad. I'm gonna have to do some work. Try and get out of get out on this rack. This one's a it's not half bad, but it's not half good. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's about it. Look how he just chipped those just. out. I would have hammered that. Right? <laughs> I'm trying to get like four balls in the open there. He's trying to get one. I can't tell if the 13 goes past. Mm. No, I don't know if it does. So. There's maybe a combination there, a couple of different combinations, 13-1 or the 9-1. He looked to see if something was wired in the stack, though, and nothing mm. is. 9-1 it is. Well, he's been hitting the ball pretty good today, so I'd expect him to make this. He's hitting him straight. Oh, oh yeah. my yes. gosh. Wow. It's funny how that shot can be easier at that speed. You wow. Know? It's like you find the line and you just fire it and yeah. it stays straight. You know? Just murder that ball. <laughs> good shot. Does he got a big one in him today? I think so. Here, let's be sure. The, nice to see it. Let's change the heading again. He's been making me change the slots today. Has he? <laughs> kind of doing a myriad of things. <laughs> yeah, a little back and forth. I've loved the stories, though. <laughs> oh, the stories have been great. <laughs> I'm sure the fans have loved the stories, too. Oh, I didn't look at it. I thought it passed. Oh, Man, I'm playing sloppy. I'm getting too tired. Passed. Or something, I don't know. Well, Maybe hopefully he doesn't uh, doesn't gas himself. He's got the big run starting tomorrow. Well, he did say that at the beginning of today, mm -hmm. that he was going to try to pace it a little better. I don't know if that means like having two sips of water. I have no idea how that went in. <laughs> none. I swear he shot a ball earlier that he was like, as he was hitting it, like he hadn't even left, like the tip didn't even leave the cue ball yet. And he was like, I don't know how that went in. Like it hadn't even gone by. <laughs> The window, the tight window. <laughs> wow. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know how it went in? It was, like, not even going in yet. <laughs> he anticipated. That must be one of his little jokes, you know? Yeah, right. It's like a subtle little joke, though, right? Yeah. I don't know how that went in. <laughs> Excuse me. But he's made a whole bunch of shots today where he said, I'm as surprised as you. <laughs> Because they've been tough, right? Really? Real tough, long. God, I wish I would have stayed. Well, he's still got lots left in him, I think. It's only 20 minutes after four. Well, and the, the worst part of it is I didn't even get to do what I wanted to do. You got rained on, didn't you? No. <laughs> oh. Uh, I waited for the guy that I arranged stuff with. And... Uh, no. An hour and a half or hour 45 minutes waiting. Oh, God. To find out there was an oh lord have mercy oh geez yeah well you would have got rained on anyway i, I, I feel like <laughs> but rained I, pretty I probably hard for would have gone up and done it anyway but look at that to get him perfect on brutal. that ball this game is brutal <laughs> this table's too brutal <laughs> brutal for me but yeah i think he's gonna be Shooting high off the ball tomorrow after oh aiming into goodness. these small pockets. No doubt. But yeah, let's see if he can get in the zone here and put up a century for us today. Oh, that's a little thinner than I wanted here. Well, we'll see if he gives this a crack or whether he just concentrates on making the, uh, the six ball. I think he's just going to make it because it's kind of a tricky little shot. Oh, he's proved me wrong every single time today, though, <laughs> including that one. He has a habit of doing that, doesn't he? <laughs> Just when I thought I had him figured out. 
<laughs> he's still got energy, though, because he's singing. Oh, yeah, he's having a grand old time out there. He is. It's refreshing to see, you know. This is how uh, a true professional practices, you know. He finds something that challenges him, and then he just goes. He's hitting a couple thousand balls a day, you know. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hit a couple hundred. I need to sit down for a bit, right? <laughs> and by a bit, I mean like 15 minutes. Like I'm not. He goes and sits for like one. He's like, I need to sit down for a minute. He tells a two-minute story, and then he gets up and hits another hundred balls. Yeah, like I would have already used the eight and gone into the back of the pack there. So this has been nice oh, to see God. for me. I'm definitely learning. Like yeah, stuck there. He might have the eight. Yeah, he's definitely got the be eight. Thin on the eight, but I think he's got it. Super thin. Shoot it lefty and miss it. Come on, John. <laughs> he hasn't missed the left hand. Just shot kidding. Yet. He's not missing this one either. Oh my God, he's human. Man. Left handed. I it's can't believe it. Stuck against the side of that ball. Super unlucky to get stuck there because he he went into that with some speed, and it just kind of. Stuck on that three, you know. So what's up there? Three, eight balls up. So it's a 49 ball That's run. That's a shit roll. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely got so it's kind of, lucky kind there. Kind of the one thing that I've, I've noticed, and it's probably applicable to all the players, but uh, how impassioned they are, even in kind of a practice session. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he, he maintains that. This is me out here in a nutshell. Yeah, this right. Me. I'm like throwing, like I want to throw my cue across the room. Earlier. Nobody's around. Like, why am I so frustrated? <laughs> you know, <laughs> why do I care so much? Oh, well, he's going back to uh, to one pocket, is he? Doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> He didn't know what side to break from. Just keeping us guessing today. <laughs> yep, I jinxed him. Getting the commentary curse there. I tried to curse him lots of times. It never worked. <laughs> I don't think it works with good players, that commentary curse. I've been known to... Uh a few good players oh yeah you've had the, the strong curse if there is such a thing it's if been strong is, with you uh, <laughs> if there is such a thing i have it in spades <laughs> yeah it's tough with these guys because they don't miss much oh that's a good shot isn't it i thought it was it's not that bad is it <laughs> That's a good shot. Real good shot. See, that one, that was not so good, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think he wanted to be on the five ball, I think. Yeah, five there. You can see the seven. Just got to turn it a little, a little left spin. Oh, he's just banking it. Ah, it's a hanger for him. Right. It was quite funny earlier, too. He's like, oh, I'm struggling with these bank shots. So he, like, lines up some balls, and he fired, like, eight of them in a row or something. Mm -hmm. Just pow. Well, that was kind of fun to watch in itself, you know, right? <laughs> just this little bank warm up and it was just bang, 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 <laughs> right in the back of the pocket. It's been nice to see the kind of practice routine, you know, Look at that shot nudges a break ball. Oh, yeah, he's playing one pocket. <laughs> he nudged a good break ball open there if he was playing 14-1. <laughs> Wanted to get in behind that ball. I think he's got a relatively good bank on the two. Yeah, this is pretty straight. I wouldn't expect him to miss this. <laughs> Jeff, who was talking crap about anybody? I missed that part. Oh, I think he's when John was telling his stories. Oh. I don't know if that's necessarily talking. No. Talking crap. He's just telling a story. Well, nice thing about John is, you know, even 
he's not shy to oh. admit he doesn't really like CJ, you know, but he but he never says anything bad about him, right? He's very select with his words, right? Yep. He's not out there. That's a nice break. Trying to say anything bad That's about him. That's a anyone. nice break there. True professional. What an idiot. <laughs> That's a funny comment. It'd be funny for John to beat Bobby, World Pro Chamberlain's super official highest run in the history of pool. <laughs> Or running on a diamond table. Yeah, that would be I funny. can't even make a ball with ball in hand. <laughs> That's always funny when you... You can't break hard at this or you'll knock all the balls the other end, other side. you got to keep them kind of corralled down there. Yeah, there's there's no like chance that. of... Uh, of I, I won't say no chance, but... There's a very high unlikelihood that on the four and a quarter inch pockets that anybody is going to threaten the record that uh, that Jason put up. Oh, but it's that's, okay. You can say no chance. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I think that would be a fair statement. But uh, tomorrow the game and the cha the, the table change will... Uh, I think everybody's... Will add to the potential of, uh, of him reclaiming that title. I think everybody's pretty excited to see... Oh, the yeah. numbers that are going to be putting up tomorrow. And it'll be, I'm interested to see how the viewers change. Yeah. Right? So he'll probably have about 200, you know, steady 200 kind of thing. And then yep. once the run gets over 100, we're going to see it double. Yep. Once the run gets over 200, <laughs> it's going to yeah, be. it just keeps growing. Because people like, viewers. And, and I know with my friends, I have a couple of straight pool friends. And when Shaw was like doing those runs and SVB was doing those runs. Mm-hmm they're messaging me they're like he's he's up over 100 now or he's up over 200 ball run and so i would tune in when i wasn't tuned in right god that's a nice shot right there did he ever bend that really well i'm gonna have to come up with something else now <sighs> fatigue setting in slightly And Look yeah. at this. Look at this. Puts the bank into the pocket. Now, uh, <laughs> no, for his now next might be a little bit tricky. Because even no, really, no matter what you do here, you're still uh, still in it a little tough. Oh man, he was trying to go two rails and cut the ball in. <laughs> yeah. Lord have mercy. Yeah, only uh, about 40 on YouTube, 90 on Facebook right now. This we were up around totally 250 me. or so earlier today. Might have to put on another one. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, guys. Now, you know what, Ben? Sweat this. I'm going to go ahead of the template. Well, those look frozen too, though. That's weird. Let's see if it's the template here. All I know is I uh, I just appreciate him being here. That's eh, a little improvement. Willing to, uh, you know, kind of get in front of the camera, get back in the saddle. Give us uh, a couple of days where they're being mic'd up. Give us some insight into, uh, you know, the mind of somebody playing either one pocket or straight pool. I just really appreciate it. Absolutely. This is like Christmas came early for me. <laughs> I was telling them earlier how you're like, John's coming for a few weeks. I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, why you got to fire me up like that, right? <laughs> it's been a real treat. See, now I, I would have played down for the 15 right there. I feel like this Jeff Young and Joshua James are the same people. <laughs> But take it easy. If you don't like the stories, you didn't have to listen to them. Right? <laughs> That's always part of it. There is a little volume control thing. Whoa. Fatigue setting in. Yep. Needs more poutine, I think. Oh, I think so, too. More poutine. Oh. More tomahawk steak. <laughs> he needs something. 
A little something, something, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly, too, like Bill says. They just are not open it good. A couple of skill More level threes good. playing at the APA championship and the viewership goes up as the match gets tighter, right? Yeah. People love to sweat anything. I think so, too. Yeah. I've got interested in many different sports. If the prize money is big enough and they're I mean, out there under the pressure, hell? then I'll watch it, right? It's like the, what do they call that? Uh, ESPN 8, the Ocho, mm -hmm. right? Where they got all the weird sports <laughs> that you never <laughs> see anywhere else. It's like, like skydiving championship or something yeah. or like Tetris. What was it? Golden, oh golden T was one. <laughs> Some of the old arcade games, right? Pac-Man. Yeah. <laughs> but the prize money is, like, bigger than pool. So it's entertaining to watch. You see them just sweat playing a video game or something, right? Well, I think uh, I think tomorrow we'll have uh, one of the viewer advantages up mm -hmm. for uh, a 626 Q. Absolutely. You guys got to get in on that. That's close. <laughs> Closer. This damn template is amazing. And this thing is like. So you try the other end. Yeah, see, I was waiting for this. Somebody brought this up earlier, too. Why doesn't you just try the other end? You know? So let's see if this makes a difference. There's what? no way that's staying there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. If he was going to shoot all the balls and not move that, that would have been impressive in itself. That's not a whole lot better, is it? Did that change anything? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't think so, right? He's still got sure. six balls in a cluster. Well, I mean, and I don't know mm. if playing one pocket on brand new slick cloth is going to break the same as you know a table that you kind of want to have though that extra yeah of course salt on the on the on the balls on and the, the cloth balls yeah and the cloth and everything else right yeah. yeah this is like as clean as it gets yeah clean as a whistle god damn it john schmidt <laughs> He wanted to hit the top half of that too and be yeah. on the uh, the 13. 13, yeah, 13 or the 11. What's he got now? This is what makes this so much fun to watch, right? Yeah. Because we're gonna see some of these like super creative little shots. Oh my God! Like <laughs> that. Like that. <laughs> so apparently wow. that combo was wired. As long as you kick it. <laughs> So long as you kick perfect, that right. combo's wired. It might not have been wired like if you shot straight at it. I think you had to kick it for it to be wired. <laughs> that was a really good shot right there. Kick combo. So let's go two rails inside underneath the 11. Yeah, look at the slide off the second rail, and it gets perfect. Well, <laughs> perfect will work. I think he's okay. He's got just enough angle. Forces forward, two rails. Probably on the 13 next. Don't hit the 13. Golly. Unless. Can he play the two off the five? Yeah, that's what he's going to be doing, I think. Or he's just ninja cutting it. Shoot. <laughs> he's playing the in off. Good call. Good call. Two ball off the five ball. Uh, he's on stuff, at least, if that went, right? Yep. He's got a real chance. He does, or would have. <laughs> I'll see if he's got a few more 15s in him, maybe from the other end of the table now. <laughs> Which is good. He can wear in these pockets, too, That's right? right? That's right. That's <laughs> right. Wear in the whole table. Yeah. Don't just wear in the break end. Yeah, that's certainly not opening up any better for him, right? Sounds like those mics are cutting out a little bit. I or think his it's mic is. his. Yeah, he's just getting some feedback. 
I wonder if the batteries are starting to, to wear out. No, it's or if oh it yeah. needs a charge because there is no batteries. Did we charge it overnight? I you know? did. Yeah. Well, not overnight. I just plugged them in this morning. Okay. Yeah. No, I think because it's been kind of doing that all day. Oh, there's a nice creative little so, shot to start with. So I don't know if it's if it's uh, dying. I think it's maybe maybe just some static or something. You know, maybe just a little more static today off his shirt or something like that. It seems to be only at certain times too, right? When mm -hmm. he's like moving in a certain way. Or... Yeah, I'll check that connections again. Uh, where will we go to view the world record attempt? It'll be right here. Same bat channel, starting at twelve o'clock tomorrow. Yeah. We'll just switch over the cameras, move a few things around, and uh, point everything at the gold crown as opposed to the uh, to the predator table. That's right. Headsets need about four hours. Oh, yeah, that's a oh, nice shot. Oh, wow. That's maybe one of the worst shots he's hit all day. <laughs> There's no way he's letting that slide. He's shooting that again. <laughs> Definitely, as a pool player, you know that feeling, right? Oh. It's like, no, I'm not going to bed thinking Man, about I'll that shot. I'll tell you what, I've done that more times in the mm, mm, time that mm. I've played pool. At inside I've English, when you're on the rail, it uh, there's no deflection. The cue ball swerves in so quick. Mm -hmm. You really got to aim to the uh, upper side of the pocket, but sometimes I just can't make myself aim enough up there. And I really don't want to miss any of that. So I know it's supposed to rain here for Wednesday, Thursday. So the next time I can go do what I was supposed to do today. Uh, will be Friday, but I'll be uh, I'll make sure that I arrange that properly. I can just go in the morning and get it all done because I don't want to miss none of the next three to four days. Yeah, of course. I'm disappointed I'm going to have to miss Saturday if he's still making attempts at it on Saturday. <sighs> yes, I forgot about that. I'm going to be like sanding a floor with a phone in front of me trying not to <laughs> trip over the cord. Trying to watch the high run attempts. Well, just, just make sure you don't send more than what you're supposed to. I might just need you to message me, like when he gets right. over 300. I'm just going to take a couple hour break or something, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. It lines them all up oh, on yeah. the rail. Mm -hmm. That four is just off enough that it doesn't go. Yeah. So he's going to need to bump those again if he wants to clean up all 15 That's of these. That's adorable. <laughs> adorable. That's the word of the week. Right? Mm. The kick and the scratch. And that is also a trick I have in my repertoire. Mm -hmm. I do that. Yeah, a minute often. ago when I missed this shot, here's something that might help you guys at home. I know it's kind of the, my little cheat code on this shot. You use inside English on a shot like this. It's you just aren't going to get the deflection, so you got to aim. I at least that's how I do it. I aim this ball here in my head because then the swerve takes and the gear effect when it gets there. But you swear to yourself when you're aiming it like this, you're going to overcut it. But the cue ball swerves in, it climbs in on the shot. See, like that right there, that just looked like I'd overcut it. It goes right in. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to do that under pressure to commit to that much, to aim a ball, like, way up here. Good little <clears throat> insight there. No doubt. Priceless having him mic'd up. Yeah, I'm glad we, uh, I'm glad we decided to, uh, to kind of get it done mm -hmm. this way. Got to give st uh, credit to Steph. She got the mics and made it all happen. I'll tell you what, this table's tough and all, but, like, I think it's this, this template that's getting me. I mean, these balls are just not breaking up. See, there's movement in every one of these. I just didn't put them on good. I got to maybe redo them. I don't know if it's so easy to slap well, them those on there with the triangle, tight. you know? <laughs> yeah. You almost got to hand place them in there, but it does take too long. It's, I think after I hit him a few times, Jeff, like it, it, it dents, like my tip is hitting the, you know, when I do a draw shot, I'm like tearing them up and then they don't maybe hold the balls the same, maybe. 
but I think they're tight this time. Tip does drag on the cloth. That can be a factor. Are all run attempts official? That's the what break. Right? I just got to hit harder. Um, yes, all of them will be official because they'll all be on camera. Mm -hmm. The other things that make it official is uh, every ball has to be called. I mean, not obvious balls, but when he's playing a combination or something like that, that's not obvious. It will need to be called. And it's all ball fouls. And all ball fouls be the other one that makes it official. We'll also have somebody racking for him, too, once he's getting into those high runs. And as someone's saying on the Facebook here, yeah, there won't be any runs added right. together from the You know what? I didn't think about day. that. That's right. If he yeah, gets on a high right. run, he's going to finish it, no matter if it's 4 in the morning. Yeah, yeah. There'd be no in the middle of a table. Well, I just can't tomorrow. believe how many just total slugs I'm getting with this template. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't take much, does it? I was going to say when we do that one, I'll have you do that one because obviously I'm moving to that one. Well, if I can bump this 12 out of the way ever so slightly, I got a chance here. See what he's got here. I think he's got another chance. Balls lay pretty good. Chipping this 10 to stay on the two, I believe. Yeah, he didn't get the proper chip. He wanted to hit the the high side of it and he got it pretty full. So he ended up too low to cut the two, so he's gonna bank this 10. God, that's a tough bank. Not for unless this guy. You're, unless you're John. <laughs> for me, I duff that every single time. Yeah. Shit. I might shoot that right into the corner. I'm not. I might just miss it that bad and just shoot that right into that corner. <laughs> I have that. Believe me, I have that skill. I know how to get that done. I'm definitely not making that bank very much either. He he hit that like a dream. And now look at how easy the, the rest of the out is. Well, I shouldn't say easy because he's playing one pocket ghost. But <laughs> right? <laughs> he's easy gonna, for he's what he shot at. Get onto this six ball. I think the two. Pop into the six and take the two next. Yeah, get on that two. Gee, how good was that? Got to get past it. Otherwise, he can't cue to get on the next ball. How does he How does he play the next ball? Yeah, he can't, like. I think he's got to go up for the three. Can he even, though? Like, it wants to. <laughs> it doesn't want to go that far and not jacked up over a ball. That's Yeah, this is the only option, I think. Ah, I miss it. Ah. He, he almost got up there. He almost climbed it up there. That would have been pretty good. Ah, I, just, I suck. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way. I mean, the cue ball's got to land right on top of it, really. Anywhere but there, as they say. Anywhere but there. All right. Last few attempts here. I'm just going to break them a little harder. The scratch doesn't hurt me because I get ball in hand. Yeah, that's one thing he's been doing today, too. I saw that. Taking ball in hand. So he did have, like, he ran two of the first three. When you have got to be kidding really? me. Yeah. Quite a bit easier from ball in hand, I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. Just because he can develop some problems right away. But this is the kind of rack, yeah, you're not really developing nothing right away, right? You'd love to be well, going into that cluster, too. There's but. one of the issues solved. Yeah. Got a little much of that. Going to be shooting lefty over a ball. That's coming up short. Unless the stripe on the bottom of that stack goes. Four eight combo. Oh, he's got the window. The gap, as they say. Oh, and Pounds just, it. Just drills it. What's he got now? Can't Three cut that. Three-way combo. Yeah, Nine, good. five, fourteen. It's got to be just off. I think maybe that that second of the two stripes is in the way of cutting the ball enough into the five kind of thing. You know? That's into the rail. Oh, baby. It's kind of close, considering <sighs> difficulty that. level of the Man, shot. Driving me nuts this game. I've never played on a, on a table that's so hard at this game. 
Yeah, like you mentioned, this is the hardest table for this game. This will not break. You know what? I got an idea. This, if this don't work, I'm screwed. <laughs> I'm just going to ramp up the speed. I just button breaking ain't working. Four rails with the cue ball. He got out once doing that yesterday. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Without taking ball in hand, he went four rails. See, this is the problem with that break. Too many balls up You get table. all these, but you can't. You're going to end up losing a couple. Yeah, that ain't no good either. Forget that break. <laughs> yeah, like you said, he can he can get all the balls around the rack. With I still don't think it's it's terrible, but I mean, I've never, like I say, I've never played either one of the games. I don't, uh, I haven't played one pocket, haven't played straight pool. I'm sure going to start. Now it's got me really interested, Absolutely. really curious. Well, in this one pocket ghost, yeah, it's it's super good training. Really good. Like your cue ball control has to be absolutely unreal. So when you're executing the shots and controlling the cue ball nice, it's a pretty good feeling too. As John knows well, because he can drop that cue ball on a dime a lot of times in a row. <laughs> And he, he just pinches that ball so well. Yeah, he's very good at that shot. He's very good at those small little shots. Very little cue ball movement. Two rails here for the five or the nine. Got to think the nine would be the better ball. Unless he's on the nine now. Go and clean out some of the mess up on this end of the table. He's potting these balls really clean, so that's a good sign he's playing real good. I love the sound. You and I kind of talked about that. Was it yesterday or the day before? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. About the sound difference mm -hmm. between potting a ball on the Predator table and almost any other table that I've heard. Mm -hmm. It's such a unique sound. John mentioned it earlier today too, so I was telling the the viewers as well i love that it's more of an old school sound yeah. like how the tables used to sound you know yeah and i loved it like oh. that it was super appealing to me right away but yeah. john mentioned it today too he's like man it just sounds nice yeah the audio of of how that sounds is really really good Got another good chance here. Good angle on the 14. So are you drawing back up all the way for the 11? Yeah, I think he's got to get on that sooner than later. He might save it for last, though. He might be on the 13 here. Yeah, 13. Sorry, isn't that the th 11? That's the 13. The oh, 11's right. up table a little more. My bad. That's yeah, hard to see from this angle. A good Floats shot. that in pretty nicely. So now he's got a chance. Like he's he's got to pot one ball and, and play shape. That's it. I think it's pretty much auto shape too. I think it's like a high ball. Three rails, yeah. Maybe a little bit of left just to straighten it out. You don't want it getting away towards the four too much. Yeah, he hit it like a dream. Yeah, that was perfect. Good shot. Fucker. Good shot. <laughs> I think he said sucker there, He right? sure did. Yeah. That's what I heard. That's what I heard, too. All right. <laughs> All right. He's pumped. Finally. <laughs> yes. That's about four or Let's five go. today. Yeah. I think But I think four. the speed, I, I think I'm going to start hitting him a little harder and trying to get a double kiss in the corner right here. You guys don't mind if I play a couple more racks? Okay. We'll quit here pretty soon. We I'm tired mind. as can be. <laughs> He's been going out of But this is good hours, conditioning so. for me when I go over there because I, I got to be... You know, I get on a big run, I can't just be flopping around and missing balls. That's right. I touched on that earlier, too. It's good training for, like, big tournaments and I'd be dangerous matches. on the senior tour, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> um, what kind of headset does uh, John have? Line up have them 49-year-olds. I got a few I'll try. <laughs> um, you know what? I'm not sure how to pronounce it, to be honest. Kimafun. K 
Kima fun? Kima, Kima? That's it. I Kima think that's fun? it right there. Probably that's Kima the break. Fun. Yeah, Spell that's the K. break. New toys. Yeah. K I M A F U N. Yeah, see, I like this break better. This yeah, this is, is, is a better. nice break. He only lost one ball up table and he's shooting it right away. This goes like playing, no, he's some playing it in a combo. The 10 oh, the dead combo. combo. See how he played it rail first so that mm -hmm. it would stick there? Smart shot. He kind of lost 10 a little bit, I feel like. Yeah, I would agree. Ooh. But it's not the end of the world. He can develop that. Well, now he's lost 13. Balls went from totally wide open to well, two clusters. see what ball he plays onto here I think yeah through the gap onto the 12 good shot possibly the 11 first yeah if he's got the angle maybe then off the end rail back up yeah like no. if he's got the 11 he could change his mind two. I think yeah yeah he wanted the 11 now so he can nudge into like those two tied up balls and still that be on the two be ball dangerous Oh, at the top of it. God, I yeah, I like it. that. The top of it. He's right. He, he just had to make it. I think he was really, he really wanted two in a row there, you know? Yeah. I think that's what he's going to push you for here near well, the I end sure of the day. Well, I sure appreciate every, everybody's support today. I know you guys are doing a help Schmitty page. You know, I came a long ways, and I really appreciate that, you guys. The expenses to travel are kind of brutal, so... Not to bring up the obvious, but thank you very much for any donations to me. I, uh... I greatly appreciate it. Come on, balls. Open up a little bit. No, not this again. Uh, any 10-foot tables? No 10-foot tables here. Just sevens and nines. And as uh, as John alluded to, we do have uh, a GoFundMe page uh, set up for him. I did have it pinned. I don't know why it's not allowing us to pin that, but... Uh, I will see if I can repin that here. Whatever you guys can afford is more than enough. Every little bit counts, of course, even yeah, five absolutely. bucks here and there. Yeah. Well, listen, if everybody that was tuned in right now donated five bucks, he'd be doing all right. Yeah, of course. And, and we're really hoping he has, ex you know, a good successful trip here so he comes back. And uh, that GoFundMe will be part of that. As well as how spoiled he's been at Grant's house. <laughs> <laughs> there is the link to uh, the GoFundMe. I'm actually going to put that in the comments on YouTube here as well. Of course, shout out to everybody who made this possible. Lou Cerule, the pool table doctor was in the house getting everything set up helping grant and jeff of course big shout out to leather pocket jeff wineless lens bitney for being the host fantastic host serge bartrand for supplying the table making sure it got out here in time so john had this nice predator table to warm up on and then of course john sponsors predator and town chalk jam up apparel and a big shout out to Grant and and Steph of course for being hosts so John doesn't have to stay in a hotel he's spoiled rotten staying at their house he gets been, steaks every you know day. what it's uh, it's been great having them well they won't let me uh, they won't let me post the GoFundMe on the chat in uh, YouTube Ah. But you can just search for it. It's John Schmidt. You'll be able to see it. Long bank and a ball here for another shot. Out of 15 and out. If he makes it, he's got a chance. That looks... looks. See how much it slid. Yeah. It slid lots. Tough to judge the slide off the rail, of course, on yeah, totally new cloths. Yeah. Very tricky. 
Very tricky. So I think John's got a couple more attempts in him. Then he said he's going to call it a day. He doesn't want to wear himself out. It's a big day tomorrow. First yeah. day of the actual attempts. Yeah. You don't want to miss tomorrow. That's for sure. I don't want to miss tomorrow. <laughs> Gotta love those sound effects. Eh? Right? Yeah, I could see him stretching out the arm there too. You gotta be careful when you're you're going for things like these. You don't want to be injuring yourself. That'll write it off. Right. So, and it doesn't take much. You know, a little twist of the shoulder, or the forearm, Same. the wrist. I don't know. He's pretty good left-handed, so he'd probably be fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't for the life of me figure out a good break. Just when he thought not he had it, he me. does not have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they figured that one out. James, for sure. I was kind of hoping he'd take one more run at the straight pool today. Well, he took took one just as... Uh, God, as many mistakes as I make, thank goodness I'm not an eye surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be some blind people walking around. <laughs> Duly noted. What is the deal with this template? Getting like eight balls that just won't move. I in just the middle. don't understand it. I truly don't. But be a big difference once he moves over to the gold crown tomorrow. Yeah, it sure will. Then the rest of us can have our fun on the predator table. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Take that. Take that. <laughs> yeah. Been a, a bit of a tougher day, too, of course. I think he did wear himself no out a idea. little bit yesterday. Yep. I don't know if they're loose or what the deal is. He is human, and he's not a spring chicken anymore. It is true. <laughs> I know that feeling. Spring I know the, chicken. I know the age group in which he is uh, claiming to be from. Oh, he's got incredible stamina for his age. Oh. Not that he's old Man, and couldn't. shouldn't have good stamina, but I'm telling you, I, cu I couldn't do it. Yeah, not not a lot of people can. I would not be feeling too good after playing as much as he did yesterday. It's one thing to play when you have an opponent and you're sitting down in between shots. Sure, we've all put in ten hour sure, sessions, right? Sure. Way but different. To keep on rack and go, rack and go, rack and go, rack it. Just rack after rack, I'd be dead. Yeah, ball after ball. Like, it is, it's way different when you're playing by yourself for this amount of time than playing with an opponent. Well, and I don't, I don't want him to feel like he's got to perform here either. I mean, he's playing no, of on, course not. on uh, a predator table. We do have a few of those uh, that we can sell if you are interested uh, just get a hold of us at uh, sales at qsportslive.com. We'll let you know how you can uh, get your hands on one of those bad boys because I'll tell you what, these tables are some of the most well-built tables that I've laid eyes on. And I know it firsthand because, uh, well, we put this one together. That's right, and we got to hit some balls on it too, and it's playing fantastic. Yeah. I really love how flush the pockets are. And I remember when Diamond Table came out and I thought, oh, this is great. There's none of this big rubber lip to try to bridge over mm -hmm. and you know, or like a leather thing, right? Yeah, the flush mount pocket on this table is amazing. Yeah, they went a step further. Yeah. A step further than Diamond, and these are real flush. All right, let's
Let's see if he's got another one of these 15 ball runs in him before he calls it a day. He's got, I believe, four of them today. I believe it's four. And I hate doing this. So I'm just going to kind of jump in, jump out. Oh, you can you can mute. You're good. I got it. Just because uh, this was breakfast when I walked in. That's right. <laughs> a while ago. And James, yeah, he has thought about racking from the other side. He did for a little bit. He did for a little bit, and then he switched back to this end. So I don't think that was it. And I think as I referred to yesterday, I'm sure it's more about how slippery the cloth is with the balls not opening up like that. Oh, come on, He would man. know more than I do, of course. When it comes to table conditions, this guy is plenty of experience. James doesn't have room for a table, but he's curious how much for a Predator 9-footer. They're 8,900 US. US dollars. These are loose. I didn't put them in the template. <laughs> See? Wow. I didn't rack those I didn't rack those in the donuts and I put like big old gaps. They fly apart. <laughs> this template's goofy. Uh, I don't get it. Well the plus side of that is He's not trying to shoot on it too much longer. <laughs> so we can alter the template here if there is an issue with it. Fix it up for future. And we'll be moving on over to the other table, so. He's just gonna shoot a few more racks here today, I think, and then he's gonna call it a day. Should be plenty warmed up for that high run attempt. 714. I firmly believe he can do it. Firmly believe. But also, if he puts up a couple of runs of, you know, 300, that's going to be spectacular as well. Johnny Andrick. Yeah, this table is staying at LP. The table and the arena light. And we have another one coming as well. Another Predator 9 foot with another arena light. Staying at LP. Could get some action going, some ring games maybe, you know. From what I heard about this Predator table and the cloth is, once it wears in a little, it plays perfect and that's what everybody wants to play on. And the, the cloth is, is long lasting, so that's what you want to see. Look at that nice little shot. Chip those balls out pretty good. He's looking good. I gotta say one other thing about what you were touching on with uh, with the table mm -hmm. is uh, have a look at that cloth. No marks on it at all. He's hit, and I know it's only a couple of days old, mm -hmm. but you consider the number of balls that he's hit today, yesterday, and even practicing the the day before. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of balls hit on that table and. That cloth is wearing perfect. Yeah, no lines, no chalk marks, oh. no tip marks. You yeah. know, I've noticed that too. Yeah. I just had to jump on and see it. <laughs> hey, Laura, everything's good. Yeah, template racks can definitely uh, stretch and become a little wonky, right? I think they bank super similar to a diamond, Johnny. We're not really going to get to see too much until the oh boy the slide that wears one off ball a bit. There. But they do bank real straight like a diamond. I can see why people want to bet against me doing this. It's like tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why you get these prop bets. Betting if John can run all 15 balls. Had a chance balls. there, but I don't clip that stinking ball. Yeah, and Skip, we got a table real close to that one. It's We're recreating the conditions as much as we can for him. So we're really hoping he can he can put up some monster runs and obviously we're gonna get a great show either way. The guy's already made some unbelievable shots. Really great runs. 
Uh, one pocket and this uh, 15 ball ghost here. One pocket ghost and the, and the 14 and one, I should say. Let's see how much he's got left Spina. in the tank. He ain't looking at quitting yet, this boy. You know what? I think I need to try this just for practice sakes. This is an interesting proposition, Ben. They, they were offering Alex Peg Lion. I did it too. It, it's beatable, but you got to play good. You take all 15 balls, numerical order. You can move one ball after the break and bet even money. It's tough action. You can move one ball after the break and bet even money. But you got to play it. I can move one ball anywhere I want. I can move it anywhere you want. Well, that really changes things, though, right? Like, what if you there's one ball tied up, but you put it over a hole where it develops another ball? That's really that's really interesting. That's a really interesting little bet. Like the cue ball includes the one ball, right? No. No. Okay. So you you get ball in hand and you get to move one ball. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that is interesting. I like that. Let me change the scoreboard again if he's going to do this. <laughs> okay, my toes can wait. Now it's rotation. Yeah, master leaves chalk lines. Yeah. I recently switched to town. I'm blown away. Oh, he hooked himself on the two. That was quick. <laughs> it's always the same. That was quick. This is an interesting little game he's playing here. I can I can get down with this. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm gonna try this next oh, time me too. I'm at the table. Jeez, too. I run one there. How's good shooting? You can move one ball and get ball in hand. This is so interesting. I had to stop eating. Well, I love it. Like anything where I gotta actually think, right? <laughs> Man, it's nice. We get to see some of that break too. You know, he's popping that real nice. Oh, it's uh, pretty obvious what ball he's moving yeah, there. Yeah, I would think the nine ball. Yeah. Nine or the 14. Yeah, so I guess it's not that obvious, right? Because you could move either one. I like moving the 14 up here by the 15, I think. Yep. <laughs> I would agree with you. Or where's the 10? Ten? 10's up here on the rail. Yeah, okay. So once the 2 and the 4 and everything's gone, the 9 to the ten's easy, right? Although the yeah. eight, 8 to the nine's not bad. Yeah. Because all that stuff's kind of cleared out, too. Oh, oh look at this. How about this for crafty, though? See, that's why it, it's never obvious. Like, I realized wow. as I was saying it, it's not obvious at all what you would do. It never will be. Now, there's a shot I would not have thought of. I feel like you got a little straighter on this ball than you wanted to be. I would think. He's okay. Does he squeeze out of there? Power draw, two rails, spin it around. Yeah, you got lots of juice on it. Holy. Oh, How do you did get he all the way there from where he was? Draw over to where the 12 is, maybe? Yeah. yeah. He'd rather not be going between the 9 7 <laughs> with the cue ball here, but he's going to have to. The problem is the inside spin really doesn't grab enough to yeah, avoid I almost the 7 hit on this the way to, out. To go between the 7 13. Yeah, he had to because the the inside juice won't uh, oh, it won't grab enough. Tough game that is. I, I guess, like it. I guess he's probably got to shoot it now until he runs it out a couple times, right? <laughs> well, at least till he's done it once. That's I right. would think. That's I would right. think that if he's uh, if he's going to try to show us, he's not quitting until it's done. We didn't rack the one in the front, so. See you, Jeff. Okay, buddy. Well, he didn't rack the one in the front, but he's doing it anyway. Maybe he just didn't like where the one kept going. <laughs> well, the one ain't any better here. Well, the eight nine is all right. This is 
very interesting though. Move one ball and cue ball in hand. I think I'm moving the seven. I think I see it now. Well, I think you move the one and play the the one fifteen combo. <laughs> Right, and leave the one right oh, there, and then yeah, then yeah, you clear yeah, the path, yeah. right? That's a good shot. It's just something I would have never thought of if he hadn't done it last round. Well, he does get ball in hand, too. Wasn't a six ball in no pad spot as well? The five to the six is a weird transition. But I guess he doesn't mind that because the four is right there, so he can have whatever he wants on the five. But why yeah. not? Why not just put the seven where where the five is and just make it a five seven combo? Just dead wire it. Yeah, the six to the eight transition is easy. He's trying to figure out the six. Like, I, I, to be honest, I don't know why he moved seven. <laughs> Only he knows. Yeah, this requires a lot more spin for sure. And Lawrence, I think you're absolutely correct. I think this is way more torturous than 14-1. Trying to run rotation on a tight table is... Interesting little prop bet, though. It is such a great little prop bet. So he put the 7, like, in a weird seven spot. 15 wired up to the corner. Yeah, he wired it. Or option to 7 in the side pocket. In the bit. side, if he likes it in the side, yeah. <laughs> How do you get on the two from there? <laughs> How small are all these windows? Oh, he's gonna show us something. He's playing Off a little rail, rail first. first, yeah. Rail oh, and it just spins right through up. that window so easy. Look at that, it's so natural. He's so smart to see that, you know? And just lets the ball roll over itself. Doesn't have to do anything crazy, right? Does he ever have a nice nice hit on that ball, man? Well, and I like that uh, Laura brought that up, that there's a lot more spin in this game, you know, so we get to see a little something different here. Yeah, I, I, I really like this. I'm glad he's doing this too, yeah. Because even the, the one pocket is very minimal cue ball movements too. And he swears by playing. I wonder if this could be done on a seven foot. A lot more cluster. Oh, for sure. Seven foot. For sure it can, yeah. Yeah, it be can. Interesting you little... Just, uh, you just really have to think about that opening yeah. move, right? I bet he's glad he wired up that 715. Yeah, that's why he did it, because he knew the 6 was tight if he was going to get on it. But even the opening shot, he played the 1-9 combo to open that mm -hmm. hole for the 6. That was a smart shot. And that... 715 move looks to be a genius. Looks genius level right now for sure. Look how the last six balls lay. Shooting fish in a barrel for him. Eight to the ten is the transition. Ten's up near the top side pocket, I think. Floats in there, one rail, nice and easy. still is a key shot because you want to get the right angle on the 11 to get the 12. And that's not an easy shot. Like, mm -hmm. he made it look easy, but it's like he said, that looks like shooting a basketball into a cheer heel, too. <laughs> it's one of those shots. Well, I'm going to go out go out on a limb and say he's, uh, he's outski. Oh, yeah, for sure. He's outsville. I love that he showed us this game. We got our money's worth today. Let yeah, me tell just ya. for this. This little tidbit right at the end. Sometimes that's a lot of taking lessons from a pro as they teach you how to practice properly, you know? It's not about learning the shots. It's, sometimes it's about learning how to practice. And you're out there just banging away at eight ball racks over and over again. It's like hitting your head against the wall, right? Right. It's like you're not getting anywhere. Oh, oh pinched its way in there. Well, that would have been fairly sad. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a hard drill. I mean, it's, one day, I know this sounds like BS, but I think I did like five in a row. 
and then I didn't, and I struggled the rest of the day at it. But it's doable. But you gotta half the battle is figuring out where to move your one ball to to help you. Let's see if I can get lucky and do a couple in a row here. Oh yeah, this is a this is a great game. I yeah, find that was this, a good out. I had to hit some marks there. I find this more intriguing than both of the other games. Straight pull and one pocket. This is a different little prop bet for sure. You can get some action on this game. Okay, let's look at this. One to the two. Yeah, it's a six fourteen eight. There's something over there. It's got to be. Well, I think you got to move the six ball. So you just wire up like this. Six something combo. Oh, he moved the two. Oh, I guess he doesn't mind the six fourteen combo. I don't know. I think I probably would have moved the six. Yeah, I feel like I would have moved the six too. Or maybe what he's doing here is when he shoots the two eight combo, he's gonna move it. Right, and the two's gonna stay there. Yeah, he'll move the two. Ten, two's gonna I stay think. right there. Yeah. Just lay on that bottom rail. Close to it. Come on. Tries to move the 14, but it didn't move. Well, that's all right. 614 is still there. And it's still super wired. That was the first time we saw him shoot it behind the backer. Yeah, why not? It's a pretty easy one. Under hit that. Yeah, he holds this ball so well, though. Does he go around the angles, or does he hold this? Well, he holds the ball well, but he ain't going around it. Yeah. Yeah, he had a good line there to go four rails. Came up quite short again, though. Yep. And thank you, Laura. We appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow, as with everybody, hopefully. Tomorrow is the day. Oh, yeah, great little shot. Yeah, and I think he's leaving a nice little angle on this five so he can get closer to the six. Slide underneath that ten ball. Definitely wants to get close to straight in on the six, too. These combos are always easier when you're close to straight. That way you can hold the cue ball to stay on the first Jeez. ball. How about perfect? Does perfect work? Yeah, he's absolutely dead straight in. Well, this would be for like two in a row, so you know what that tells me? Mm. I ain't betting. <laughs> <laughs> he yep. look, if he's looking for a bet, he came to the wrong place. Right? <laughs> It's going to be you get ball in hand, and that's it. That's it. Yep. <laughs> no moving the one, one yeah. ball. No moving balls. Yes, Steph, we do still have our interview tonight. You guys have a Molina Mike interview? We do. Nice. What time is that at? As soon as we're done here, I'll message uh, Molina Mike. Sweet. Yeah. More John Schmidt stories. I love more, it. More John Schmidt <laughs> stories for sure. Yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be fun. Molina Mike's a great guy. If uh, if you guys don't know uh, who Molina Mike is, check him out on Facebook under Windows Open. Windows Open, yeah. Awesome stuff on there. Lots of archived videos, pool player podcasts where yep. he's got all kinds of different folks on there. Uh, the in, pool player industry podcast, leaders. I, uh, I believe, is Joey Ryan and yeah. Melina Mike. And the, then, the two of them, yeah. Yeah, and then Melina has his own windows open. Yeah, and it's great. There's, like, influent, pool influencers. There's oh, industry uh, leaders. Yeah. There's players. Sure. There's, you know. They do a great job. Yeah, company representatives, just everything. Stake horses, you name it, right? They yep. get everybody involved in pool. Very true. The reason I like like this if I'm going to hit balls is because, you know, you got to shoot some long spinners. I've been doing the straight pull in one pocket, which is I'm kind of removing a lot of swerve out of the shots. But this has got kind of some swerve and deflection in there. Some siding. Some side spin. Man, he's smashing that break. 
He so sure is. Apparently, the 626 Q breaks pretty good, too. Right? <laughs> With a soft tip. Yeah, we'll have that poster up tomorrow. We'll have one of those up for the viewer advantage. It'll it'll go hard and quick, though, because those uh, those Mr. Six Q, uh, 626 Qs, there's only 300 of them. Only 300. So make sure you guys get in on that. Give yourself a chance to win one. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm hoping he doesn't go too much longer. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Have you not eaten yet? No, I ate today. Oh. I ate a uh, big old greasy McDonald's breakfast sandwich oh, with a hash brown nice. this morning. Nice. <laughs> nice. After I went and got our Michael Jackson gloves. I love it. Have you tried one of those on yet? No, I'm scared they might fit my hands. Right? <laughs> That's why I'm <laughs> telling you to try it on. <laughs> oh. They don't fit. <laughs> We're going to have to, hopefully they fit John Morelato. He's going to come back oh, tomorrow nice. for a little bit, he said. Very nice. Around two or three, yeah, I think Yeah, those fit. I'd drop a ball all over the place with these things on. Yeah, they're maybe a little too slick. Those are, those are slick, like gre grease lightning just don't. I just didn't want those big, thick, oh, yeah, white cotton sure. ones, but I might keep looking. Because these were only like eight bucks. Found them at the costume shop. I didn't uh -huh. know where else to look. That's... Very smart. Yeah. Only if they work. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Only if they do the job. And so far, I don't know, they might be too slick. Right. Well, I'm going to uh, just jump off here for about five minutes. And mm -hmm. we'll be right back. 5.20 here in Calgary, James. Mountain Standard Time. Standard time. Let's see if John can put a three pack together of this little game he's got. I like this one. So you break, playing rotation. You get ball in hand on the opener, and you also get to move one ball. Any ball, move it anywhere. He's kicking at this. I don't think you can see it. He's super horn hooked. We'll see what he comes up with. Is there a little window between the 6-9? Spin out of this, or is it between the 6-7? Yeah, there was not much of a window there. I mean, how does the cue there. ball get there? How does he end up horn hooked, he says. Wow. Well, uh, I'll tell you, I can I love the passion. find a way to mess up anything. He wanted the three in a row, you know? <laughs> brutal. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Balabushka chalk is good. I don't know. I can't say I've ever oh, tried Balabushka chalk. I think I could have got out there if I could have snuck that one in. Yeah, definitely. He was probably getting out there again. Let me just flash up this poster. Thank everybody who helped put this on. And, of course, Grant Zemp. Not on there. Stephanie Toy not on there. But they put a lot of work into this too, so hosting Grant at or uh, hosting John at their house. So let's see, he hasn't made his opening move yet here. He broke. So he gets ball in hand on the cue ball, and he gets to move one ball, any ball. I would have to think it's maybe the 12 here, because that's blocking the 7. So does he wire up a 2-12 combination, just in case he doesn't get perfect on the 2? He's wired up an 8-12 combination. Twelve combination. So he doesn't mind getting from the one to the two. It's more about the seven to the eight is what he's thinking. Be the 
first thing anyway. Spinning down, yeah. Cue ball, middle table. He's good on this four. It's nice close to the hole. Which is in your car, right? Probably have a little less angle, but this is okay. I got to take this table apart. He held it nice. See how he navigates the six to the seven and the seven to the eight. Doesn't want to land straight in on the seven. He's not going to. He's got a nice angle here. One rail float across. If you guys are just tuning in, John's playing a little prop game here. Little ghost rotation. So you break, you get ball in hand on the opening shot as well as you get to move one ball, any ball, anywhere, but you, you have to run out. That is going to be tough. Tough action from there. He landed a little funny on that ball, oh, but he wow. played a genius shot. That was a little god shot there. Sure was. He's straight in on this eight. He can just roll this in. Still to a pretty tight pocket down there, so it was missable, but not for him. So he didn't complete the third one in a row. Let's see if he can get three out of four anyway. He's still pretty sporty in my books. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. He thought he missed it by a foot, but it went right in the heart of the pocket. <laughs> I like how he said, oh, shoot. Right? Yeah, that was very good. Right. And he's out. He gives himself the last ball. Right? <laughs> I'd have made you shoot that last ball, John. What's that? I'd have made you shoot that last ball. <laughs> that was three out of four. That's pretty juicy for a senior citizen. For a senior. Oh. He's smashing that break. Popping the cue ball nice, like dead center, man. This guy could be putting on a 10 ball clinic right now, too. Oh, wow. Out. This rack here, I hardly need them. All they're going to do is move the 13 out of the way, maybe. Yeah, that was my thought. Just like put it over a hole. I guess the three goes easy. Interesting to see how his brain is working here. Yeah. I think I'd have just moved the 13 out of the way. Yeah, or put the three, like, over the side pocket or something, you know? If he lands straight, he's dead. Oh, he's got a little force. Yeah, he's perfect. He can yeah. go like straight towards the eight here with middle ball. That was crazy. Lots of angle is good here. Not that it matters. He put the four over a hole. <laughs> and so the eight becomes the ball. Eight, ten combo. Yeah, just the seven to get there, you know, is not super easy. I think well, he, especially when you're going from the six to the seven, although you could take the six into that side and go down where he is now and have that seven into that left side pocket. Well, I think he even looked at, like, the three rail angle if he, if he didn't get there, but, yeah, he's okay. Yeah, I think he's just going to go down where he was just down to the left or onto that left side if he can yeah just like that now he's got a nice draw pick his spot right about there this is funny Jay Ferguson says he'll play John even any game he wants for 5k if he agrees to arm wrestle him after for 5100 <laughs> <laughs> Clever. Very clever. There's a really good uh, 
10 pin bowler in the house here and and he always uses that one on me i'll play anything you want but we double it up in bowling after <laughs> nice I'm like no we're at the pool hall right i know you're good at bowling <laughs> you'd whoop me like i whoop you at pool <laughs> Couple of 300 games under his belt. He's a pretty good bowler. I ain't bowling no 300 anytime in my no. life. You and me both. That would take uh, some kind of weird turn of my career to right. start practicing bowling. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he comes with a little exhibition shot there. I don't think he needed to do that. I think he could have just drawn back. He could have, because he had plenty of angle, right? Yeah, he totally could have just cinched it back. He just wanted to open up his stroke. That's why he's playing this game, too. Look at that slide off the second rail. It's so hard to, to judge it, you know? Does he put on another exhibition or just take the win? He's taking, just the, taking win. the win. He's taking the win, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, because I said that he's going to shoot this 15 ball. Oh, look at that. comes with the juicy four juice. Four out of five, he says. <laughs> a guy asked me online the other day, can I play nine ball? A little. A little. <laughs> <laughs> a little. Can you believe people have the nerve to ask that, right? The guy can run 600 balls in straight pool, but no. No. Yeah, nine ball is uh, you know. too hard to only play shape on one ball, right? I'm glad this was on live stream. I nobody would believe this. Four out of five. We don't know how hard this game is. Maybe this game is really, Maybe really it's hard. hard. Yeah. John's making it look easy, so we're over here like four out of five. Is that a big deal? <laughs> I think a lot of it is he is absolutely smashing the break. I right, think so, so, too, so he's yeah. he's not really had balls tied up yeah. or anything funny where it was really questionable the first shot. Like they've they've all been obvious moves because he's only had one ball in trouble, you know. Yeah. I feel like if you and I played this game, we'd have more balls in trouble, and the the opening move would be much tougher, right? Yeah. Well, and I'm curious to play this on a seven foot table. Definitely going to be way harder. Definitely way harder. Congestion would be the killer there. Yeah, that's. I'm I'm itching to try this. Because like I said, now you you wouldn't have one ball tied up, right? You wouldn't yeah. have one problem. You're gonna have like four problems. Yeah. Even sometimes when you absolutely pure the break, you get like four clusters. You know. Yeah. I'm curious. And two clusters could be a killer in this. Two clusters might do you right in. Yeah. See how many he can string together here. It's another two in a row. Four out of five. I feel like he's got this one in the bag. Doesn't real, want to touch this seven ball, though. Real issue. I think he's probably going into, like, the 11 almost. Yeah, he he throws those balls over there pretty easy. Oh, look at that. Lots of siding and just cheat the hole a little, pinch it. <laughs> Peter says easy on the seven foot if you make six on the break. Ah, that's true. Yeah, I guess if you're, like, it's way tougher to make a ball on the nine foot on the break. Playing 15 ball, so. But even making six balls on a on a standard break, that's that's asking a lot. But if you make like three or four, which is pretty common, sure, right? Yeah. Then it's probably not too bad because now uh, you're playing depends. 11 ball I rotation. I think it all depends on the cluster. If you want, yeah, my of opinion. course. But I think you'll have less clusters too, like if you're making three or four. Mm-hmm. I was kind of thinking this game with only making one ball on the break because that's all I ever make. <laughs> <laughs> but some of these guys, they smash it good. They make like three every time, you know. I've been known to make a few on the eight ball break. That's right. When your second ball is dialed in for sure, you're making three all the time. Lots of fours, right? Yeah. Five out of six. He's like, does anybody know how hard this game is? Oh. Did it? Did it hit the back of the hole or did it rattle? No, he just rattled it out. Kind of took that one for granted, I guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that was exactly correct. I thought it hit the I back of the hole. I think he just opened one stroked it. Oh, yeah, he rattled it. But see where the ball landed? See how the ball landed, like, out in the middle of the end rail? Yep. 
even though he hit it pretty hard, it landed like out here in the middle of the end rail. Yep. That's, That's what exactly we were talking about. It rattles and doesn't pockets. stay right in the hole. It rattles yep. and spits out over there, you know? Yep. That is the cut of those predator pockets. This is why it makes it a challenge, right? Well, and good to see you as a pool player. That's what you want to see. You want it to be challenging. You don't want it to be easy. Unless you're trying to run 700 balls in straight pool, then you need big holes. But as far as, like, you know playing a game of one pocket or playing some 10 ball, nine ball tournaments, whatnot, you want a tight table. Did he just switch back to one pocket? Yeah, he did. He's seen if I'm paying attention, right? <laughs> but it's okay, we are paying attention. We are paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real nice to see him going through the motions of this practice sessions. It's a real treat for us here. It's not every day we get a, a player of his level come to town. It's another thing to have a player of his level just hitting some balls and letting us watch, you know? Yep. That's been, been a real treat. I think we got to shut her down pretty quick. I got to take this table apart and. Got to do a Molina Mike interview. I got to do a Molina Mike interview. Hey. Yeah. John will be on the interview too? Yep. Yeah, that's correct, Skip. He is a uh, one pocket champ. He actually played Efren in the final. So if that was the only flag I ever had at Derby City, I'd be pretty happy to. Right, that's still <laughs> a pretty decent flag to have in the cap. Any flag at Derby. I think another big factor with that is like when John goes to Derby, is he really playing the tournament? Or is John at Derby for other reasons, you know? Yeah. John's going to Derby to be in the action room. John ain't going to Derby to win the yeah. nine ball. Yeah. He'll make five times as much in the side room, you know? And he's putting it on display because he's got all these little prop games, too, that people can bet on, oh, right? Oh, for sure. He doesn't even need an opponent. <laughs> yeah, Earls, wait till we play on three and a half inch pockets. Just wait. Then he'll show them. <laughs> Might as well just play on three inch pockets then, right? Why three and a half? Right. This was a pretty clean 15 ball run, hey? Sure was. Nothing to it but to do it. Yeah. Why does he have to make it look so easy? <laughs> pack a lunch is all I can tell you. <laughs> now he's back to pack a lunch mode. Yep. He's in that dead stroke. One time I was playing Keith McCready. You guys know Keith McCready, Color of Money? We got a hit like this where, like, we're trying to figure out if the balls are frozen. It was like this with the cue ball. And he comes up. You know how he is. He comes swaggering up. And he goes, well, they ain't married, but they're living together. Like, <laughs> that was the funniest. <laughs> oh, no, but the funniest thing I've ever seen him say, like, 500 people literally spit out their drink. It was so funny. He was playing bank pool. We're in Boston in, like, 02 or 03 at one of those Joss Tour events. And he was playing Evgeny Stalov, a great Russian player. They're playing banks 500 a game. And Keith's standing there like this, and Evgeny's shooting. And Keith goes like this. He looks at him, and he goes, and Evgeny can't speak English, really. And Keith goes, God damn if me and you ain't the two ugliest MFers I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and Evgeny just looks up at him, you know. Oh, you'd have had to have been there, man. Keith could make the whole place laugh so hard. He was the best. He was the best. He had all kind of funny lines. He'd be making, like, the case nine ball, and he'd be like, it's time to get the troops out of the hot sun and, like, the war. You know, it's just all this goofy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> make the side pockets bigger yeah yeah Jay this is being streamed in Calgary Alberta Canada at the leather pocket <laughs> he was he was so funny Keith McCready if you guys ever saw the movie Color of Money he was Grady Seasons in that 
I mean, played the part perfect. Ooh, we got a <laughs> chance here. Can he do back-to-back 15ers? Pretty tough, right? I don't think he's done a back-to-back -back yet. Not back-to-back, -back, not on the on, not on the predator table. No, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, he was telling me his best was four in a row, like on another table, like on a diamond. And well, this this predator table is a challenge, and uh, I can't wait. I get to uh, be lucky enough to have one in my basement, and I can't wait. Well, on his best out of five racks, 73 balls. How unreal is that? That's crazy. Five racks, one pocket, 73 balls. <laughs> Too much side spin on it. <laughs> he left two balls. <laughs> God, what a terrible shot. His terrible shot and my terrible shot are much different things. <laughs> Right. Yeah, who doesn't like to watch this guy play James? It's a real treat. Oh boy. I think Grant's gonna have to tell him he's gotta pack it in soon. <laughs> yeah, as soon as uh, as soon as Jeff gets here, there's really not a lot I can do up until that point. So. Yeah, the Molina Mike interview will be interesting. I'm, I'm super looking forward to that. Yeah, I gotta kind of get this table apart oh, yeah? and then. Uh, Wait for Lou to come in and wait for him to start uh, redoing and taking apart those side rails so that I can oh. do what I need to do. And then uh, while he's reclothing those, then I'll uh, jump on with Melina Mike. <laughs> yeah, Cole. Ha no, Cole's Henri. He, yeah, he could be Henri. I used to play him. Carrie's got all the stories too. <laughs> yeah. Carrie Campbell's got some good road stories. That boy's been around the block. Come on. I wonder if he can play that off the 12. Or just put it in the heart. Yeah. That works too. That was a good shot. That was a real good shot. I can't wait to try that. I'm gonna try them all. Why not? Definitely straight pool. Gotta be trying. Gotta be. Gotta be playing the straight pool. Little nudge on that three would help his cause. Kind of, sort of like that. Oh, it oh mm. my gosh! Dropped at the last second. Feet wiper, right? You know what's sick, and I mentioned it before, like, how good is that town chalk? This dude's been playing all day the balls and skidded once. Yeah. That's unheard of. Like, I could play for an hour and the ball skid five times. No doubt. If I'm not cleaning it often and, like, mm -hmm. like he hasn't even cleaned the cue ball. Yeah. I happen to have a few pieces. Yeah. Should sell out instantly. Right. Should sell out instantly. Well, I do have some of the uh, the town pyro. All right. Got I think we got to wrap it up here pretty soon. It's almost six. Yeah, Alice. Six straight out. Last rack. See if I can get lucky and get out here. I have just under a couple hundred of that uh, town pyro. Speaking of a couple hundred, Eric couldn't wait till today. He's like. Pulled me over in the parking lot yesterday. Oh. <laughs> I have some money for Grant. I sold some chalk. I was like, well, he'll be here tomorrow. No, no. You give it to him first. You'll see him first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Maybe he was worried it would end up in the casino. Well, who knows, right? <laughs> it might end up on the poker table if he's not careful. Oh, look at that timing. That was pretty well timed. Jeff just walked in. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Muchos gracias. 
ever dedicated, Mr. Wanless. Thanks, Jeff. And what's happening there then? We'll wait. Oh, the, the skidding is like from, from bad chalk. And I think that town chalk is so great, it just it reduces that skidding by so much. How about this for a story from Brent Babcock? He says, oh. Frenchie bit Cole Can't Dixon's no nose once, gambling <laughs> in Portland. Wow. All right. Well, I've got to uh, jump off. i got to start dismantling Well, thank you, everybody, if you're still tuning in. Um, thank you for letting me kind of just do what I want, play a little straight pull, little one-pocket ghost, little whatever, just so I can mix it up. Because I really – it's hard for me to get into this high run thing on a table like this. I, I just not conducive to a big, big run. So I just kind of went through the motions and did the best I could to run 100 for you. And I don't think I ran 100 today. Wow. 89. Well, anyway um, – yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys, and for all the support and uh, treating me uh, like family. I really appreciate it. See you guys tomorrow. All right, guys. So as you heard, we will uh, be back tomorrow, noon o'clock on Wednesday. That will start Mr. Schmidt and his world run attempt. That will be on the gold crown. So on, uh, on to some thank yous. We have uh, a lot of people to thank. The pool doctor, that's Lou Sorrell, the leather pocket, the winning stroke, of course, uh, from Quebec. They're the ones that made us getting this table possible. Uh, obviously, Predator, Team John Schmidt, uh, Predator and Taum, Brunswick, provided by Martin Kaeli, and then uh, obviously Len and Jeff. With that being said, guys, if you do appreciate what John was uh, putting on for you today and the reason that he's here, do hit up his GoFundMe page. Um, help him out with the, with some of his expenses and coming up and doing this, as well as uh, providing a, a free live stream for you and some entertainment. Uh, we will be back again tomorrow. On behalf of myself, Ben Francis, John Schmidt, and the rest of the Q Sports Live team, have a great night. We appreciate you tuning in. We will be back tomorrow, noon o'clock. Good night, all.